And it's ahead, which means that you've won uh, the toss. Tell me what you're gonna do here first, and why? We're gonna bat first. Um, looks a pretty dry surface. You know, the wickets around it is pretty dry as well. So um, expecting to play very similar to the last game. Yeah, and now that last game, you guys got a win in that one. What was the conversation with your team after that? Yeah, just about staying consistent. You know, we want to focus on scoring runs as, as a batting unit, putting up big scores, and you know, obviously that that goes a long way to um, winning games. Yeah, and then finally, any changes to your team for this one? No, same team. All right. Well, all the best in this one. Thank you. All right. Come a little closer there, Alex. So you've lost the toss here, having a ball first. How do you feel about that one? I, I would have batted first. Um, like you said, the wicket looks a bit dry. And normally, you you get the best out of the wicket in your first hit. Yeah, so same question I posed to Tevin in terms of the conversation with your side after the last one. Coming off of a loss, what was that conversation with your team? Uh, I think it's just... Trying to stay confident, um, you know, it's a good bunch and we have been playing good cricket, you know, and sometimes you need a loss here and there, you know, to keep you grounded. So I think that loss will do as well. It's just about bouncing back. Yeah, and then finally, any changes to your side for this one? Yes, um, we have three changes. Um, unfortunately, Demba is out due to injury. So Larry comes in, Darius Martin comes in for Sherman Lewis and Johan Jeremiah is out and Kimani Melias is back in. No problem. Well, all the best in this one. Thank you. No problem at all. Well, news from the toss here at Coolidge. Ghana Harpy Eagles, they've won the toss and they're going to have a bat first. Good morning, Antigua and Barbuda, and good morning to the entire universe. Welcome to the Cricket West Indies YouTube channel. It's a lovely day here at the Coolidge Curry Ground, home of Cricket West Indies. It's the start of round five, and we just heard from our colleague at the toss, Joel Manning, who was speaking to the captains. The good news is that Tevin Imla from the Ghana Harp Eagles has won the toss. And they've decided that they will bat first this morning. It means that Alex Athens and the Windward Island Volcanoes will take the field. It is a lovely day and we are set for an exciting round of competition. Leading into the competition, the Windward Island Volcanoes with 67.4 points. The Leeward Islands Hurricanes with 64.2 points. Jamaica Scorpions with 50.2 points. Barbados Pride. 48.2, Trinidad and Tobago Red Force, 47.2, Guyana Harp Eagles, 46.2, West Indies Academy, 30.8, and the combined campuses and colleges, 19.8. This morning, I'm joined by Sean Devers, the ambassador from Ghana, and Sean will give us and share his insights as to what is going to be happening on this morning's session. Well, as you said, um, Tevin Inlak um, won the toss and he decided to bat Ghana, leaving out again the same team that beat Barbados by 33 runs last week. And they left out um, Ashkir Pasad and uh, Raymond Perez. Leewards, on the other hand, um, making two changes. They've left out Joan <laughs> Jeremiah yeah, and start. Sherman Lewis. Um, so Chandra Paul and Nandu will face, they'll open for Guyana. And this is a good contest. They, they pitch again with a tinge of grass, but no, they've learned from last week. Well, and Ghana winning the toss and batting. But this is a new track, Sean. Um, yeah, so, but yeah. this same other pitch has a tinge of grass too. Well, the, the, I could tell you that the f tracks here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground will certainly play completely different as compared to around most of the other venues. So don't get fooled by the grass. Sherman John... Starting for uh, the Windward Island Volcanoes. They're starting with two slips, a gully, backward point, a cover, mid-wicket, mid-on, mid-off. Shamar Springer at mid-wicket. And we're ready to go. Leslie Reefer Jr. Just indicating to Tej Shander Paul. Asking him if he's ready. Machu Nando is on the non-striker's end. Hope that they will have better communication today. First ball. Sort of just touched down. Sort of just ballooned. Really didn't go through with much pace. Uh, but it was good leave by Tay Chanderpaul. And so the action is off and running here. Ryan John, first delivery. Well, good afternoon. Good morning to you, wherever you are. Especially in Guyana. 
and across the Windward Islands, St. Lucia, Grenada, Dominica, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Hope the morning is as pleasant as this one here in the beautiful island of Antigua. On the money, straight away, link delivery and Sean de Paul more or less just defending, squaring up in the process. Ryan John just completing his second delivery of the morning. Early days yet here. It's a lovely day in Antigua and Barbuda and the sun has been belting out. Lovely blue skies, nice cotton wool clouds floating lazily over Coleridge Sword. So ideal conditions here for cricket. As compared to most teams, Alex Athenes would have done his homework here. And he's gone for a more conservative start with two slips in a gully. Pitched up by John and Chanda Paul coming forward. Just like to see Chanda Paul lead more with his head and his shoulders. That was a delivery. You know, stay, stay in the moment. Stay in the moment and punch it down the ground. It find sometimes he just comes back up just too quickly. He's got to get into the move to stay low to the ball, as low as possible. Very solid left-hander, the son of Shiv Narayan Chandra Paul. But I want him to find the gaps more, rotate the strike more. Early stages in his innings. So far for this season, Tay Chandra Paul has scored 143 runs, a high score of 40. And... He's played some 10 test matches for the West Indies. 560 runs with a high score of 207. Average of 32.94. One century and one half century. But in terms of the Ghana Harp Eagles, he will be the senior batsman playing his 76th first class game. Down the onside by Ryan John. Keeper coming across nicely in Walcott and taking it. Ted Chander Paul. 75, this will be 76 first class game for the Guyana Happy Eagles, or in fact first class cricket. 4,216 runs with 7 centuries and 18 half centuries. So in this Guyana inexperienced batting lineup, you'll have to consider him to be the most senior batsman in this lineup. Full toss. And not put away nicely, just punching it down to mid on. So the end of the first over, a maiden to start this morning's play. Ghana Happy Eagles winning the toss. They are not without loss. Well, the last time these two sides played each other, last year, February in Grenada, the match ended in a draw. Windward Islands 294, Antones 144, Ryan John 51, Pomal had 4 for 20, Sinclair 2 for 66 and beaten 2 for 50. Gan in reply 169, Pomal 51, Justin Greaves 5 for 24 and John 2 for 52. The Windward Islands um, in their second innings 168 with Greaves. 27, Shamar Joseph, 5 for 41, beaten 3 for 35. And Guyana, in their second innings, um, batted to 250 for 9. Sinclair got 77 not out, Nandu got 60. And Leon Johnson, who is no longer here, the former Guyana captain. This is the first time Guyana has been playing without his leadership. He got 40. Preston McSween, 3 for 58 for the Windward Island. So that game ended in a draw. This is a new year, a new tournament. And the Windwards are on top, despite their loss in the last round to Trinidad and Tobago. Darius Martin starts from the CIU Road in. Martin replacing Sherman Lewis, who before this game, Sherman Lewis would have bowled 33 over six maidens, 122 runs with two wickets. And so Alex Athenes and the backroom staff, they've gone for the tall Darius Martin. Looking like a more or less of a Cameron Coffey style. Maybe not the upper body, but just to walk him back. We'll wait and see how we look. His first delivery was a good short delivery. Let's see. He's been talked about in the Windward Islands, Martin. 
Well, this looks good. A lot of motivation coming out of the slip cordon area. In fact, it's it's got to be. He's been touted as one of the promising young fast bowlers coming out of the Windward Islands. They, you can see that they've strengthened their slip cordon because Ryan John has gone to third slip. So there are three slips now on a gully and a backward point. Good morning to Cameron Coffey, who now lives in the U.S. of A, originally from St. Vincent. Shares my birthday with me. Same day. Same age. Ten minutes apart. Good morning to you, Cameron Coffey. To a delivery by Martin being pushed down the leg side. No trouble at all for Machu Nando. Both batsmen are not. If in case you're just tuned into the West Indies YouTube channel, or you've got your YouTube on and you're listening via the radio, or whichever way, which one is more comfortable for you, we're just letting you know the Ghana Happy Eagles, they've won the toss and they're batting first. And Darius Martin, it's about 6'4". Lovely rhythm. Worked. Into the leg side and Nando is off the mark. He's very comfortable. Anything around middle and leg Nando. Want to see Martin getting him to drive uh, up to spring at mid-off. So Ghana off the mark. Nando's looked good throughout this tournament. Yet to get a half century though. And most of the the Guyanese top order they've gotten fifties, but they've not had hundreds. They haven't carried on. Pumal nineteen are out in the last game. Jay Chandapal, he comes in to strike. North 47 14, 22, 40, 20, 143 runs. Gets his first delivery from Martin and squares him up, but he defends it nicely. We're in the number five for Macho Nando. It's been a lean season by his standards, and he sets very high standards, this young man. 19, 2, 28, 19, 28, and 1. A total of 87 runs. And I hope that he is not beating up on himself. But we'll understand that a big score is somewhere around the corner. And the fans in Guyana will be expecting him to get a big score. So good morning to my good friend, Captain Leon Johnson. Back and across, defending nicely. So Darius Martin starts well. Nando is on one, and the Ghana Happy Eagles, they are away. One without loss. Yeah, both of these batters are from the Everest Cricket Club. In fact, um, Nando was born in Canada to former Ghana leg spinner, Arjun Nando. Right we played, I think, a couple of games at the first class level for Guyana. But both batsmen here are from Everest and they have a little bit of problem running between the wickets. Last time Nandu got to 28, he looked very good and then was unfortunately sent back too late, albeit by Chandra Paul, who was ball watching. Ball was hit towards mid on behind him. And Nandu was almost in his crease and then had to run back. So they've got to work on their running between the wicket, these two. So good up. morning to Trevor Schillingford, Thomas Kentish, and all of the guys in the Windward Islands. Before this game, Ryan John would have bowled 86 overs, 10 maidens, 307 runs, 10 wickets. So in the context, he's joined by a Shamar Springer, 79, 13, 245, 12. John around the wicket. <coughs> To Nando works this down to the final leg area. Coming around is da Darius Martin. And one has to understand that both Nando and Shanda Paul are comfortable. Anything pitch, middle and leg. They're going to work those balls. John has to be on the money. He's got to bowl a different length to both of them. Get them to drive you to cover. He's got to be patient as well. Don't try to overcompensate anything. Bowl a hard length. Just a more fuller length. On these tracks here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground, especially early with the new ball, you, you've got to be on the money. You've got to bowl a, a fuller length and get them to drive, get them to come forward. Shama Springer, I think, will be excellent at that because he's that sort of bowler. John, working away. 
Kin trying to square up Shanda Paul. No, I'm a little frustrated here and puzzled, Sean. They don't have a short leg, but they have more or less like a, 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 leg, a leg gully. gully. Uh, very far. And I don't know if John has got that pace that he can get that ball to go wrong to that leg gully. And the leg gully, um, interestingly, has on a helmet. Don't know if it is an artificial position, but John would know better than <laughs> Vernon Springer. Squeeze him up again completely. Athens for a moment thought that had gone through. I just saw him looked at his first slip to say, hey, how did that not go through? Sort of kept low, but the most important is that Tate and the Paul, his eyes was on the ball. Yeah, sometimes he can look ugly, but um, he's effective. Once he gets going, got a test double century. His first century in test cricket. It hasn't been among the runs since then. He met the regional level last year. Defends a nice ball. In fact, he's been having a torrid time when you, you look into the context, Sean, of his own form. He would have, in the two test innings in Australia, he would have scored um, 31 runs with a high score of 21. In the warm-up game, he scored 17 um, on the tour to South Africa, he, was, he represented the West Indies A team. 150 runs um, from two games, high score of 78. So, Tate Chandra Paul will be searching for some form. Again, he comes quietly forward. Relax. One of the things which I want to, maybe in observation looking at Tate Chandra Paul and both Machu Nando, is an idea of the rotation of strike. I think that is going to be important. I think that can help. Chanda Paul, if he gets off strike, sometimes I think he just occupies and he just faces balls, faces balls. You've got to look to be able to rotate the strike and so you can get onto the non-strikers and then get your blood going and you could witness and understand what is happening around you. And very few people in the world would have the concentration level like his father, Shiv Narayan Chandra Paul. That's short and pulled away. Um, that's the first positive shot down to the boundary for four. First boundary. And Guyana now on to six without loss. Well, that was a nothing delivery by Ryan John. Um, banged it halfway, didn't get up. And Tate Chandra Paul, the sort of class player that he is, he was able to just get on top of that, roll his wrist over, didn't try to overhit it, just used the pace. And it raced away into the vacant deep backward square leg boundary for four. Darius Martin had a long run. In the meantime, Machu Nando um, just having a conversation. With, with him. The only thing that I like to see Nacho Nando is that he had his bat in his right hand rather than in his left hand. So he's got to be able to work on those things very quickly. Six without loss. Nando is two. Shanda Paul is four. I'll give him some confidence. But that brings us to the point of how efficient is the coaching in the West Indies. If you're going to wait till you get to first class level to know which hand to turn with your bat. That's a beautiful ball. Yeah, that's what a kicked on a match in Nando. And Sean, it, it's really, the coaches try their best. Um, it is all down to the attitude of the players. Um, the coach can only do so much. It's, it's sometimes the, the leniency and the bad habits that creep in from some of the cricketers. And I think as much as I'm very technical sounding in some areas, I feel that the players themselves uh, they have to work on their own individual game. They've got all of the material they've got video analysts they've got everything fitness freaks they have to sit down and they have to want this game they have to look to develop martin to nando back and across squaring him up on the left foot like to see nando just stay side on to a, to a darius martin that ball that delivery turned him right around teach and the ball is now calling him because he would have seen something Nando's left foot. He normally stays side onto the ball. That one caught him and he sort of turned him right around. But he was playing it with nice soft hands. And Tay Chandapal must have observed what I observed and called him down very quickly to say, Be careful. Martin is getting the ball to go across you. Two slips a gully. Backward point. Mid off and mid off very close. Leg slip. And a short leg very far. 
back and just turning it down. Coming around nicely there is the captain Alex Athanes. So it's more or less a body line attack to Shanda Paul and Nando. Well, I remember when um, Phil Simmons was the West Indies coach, he lamented that players are coming in to test level, first class level. Um, you have to teach them the basic things. His job is not to do that. That should have been done at on the 17 level, on the 15 level, even on the 19 level. Pitch up, driven up to Springer. One thing I will say to you, Sean, is the West Indies is not short of talent. No, not to, at to, all. To every year, we Cricket West Indies put together under 15, under 17, under 19 tournaments is how we harness the talent, is how we begin to understand our coaches have to start having conversations with our players and really helping them, teaching them about the game. Beauty of a delivery. Good leave by Machunandu. Top of off stump there. That's a peach of a delivery. Let's look at the replay there, Sean. That one touchdown. He did complete his action there. Followed through. Nice tall young man. Bowling from over the wicket, which um, exaggerates the ball leaving the left hander. They're looking for success, the Windward Island Volcanoes. 67.4 points. Leaders after four rounds. Clipped away. And that went. That would have been a great catch if he could have been able to stick. It didn't. And it raced away into the square leg boundary. And Pyle Leslie Reefer Jr. had to scamper himself away. He maybe needed a helmet himself for boundary to match Nando. He goes to six. And the score at the end of four. Ghana Happy Eagles batting first. They're 10 without loss. Tate and the ball is on four. So both batters now with boundaries. 10 without loss. Total going into double figures. Early stages yet. Sweltering heat here at the Coolidge ground. Today is an off day for the female cricketers in St. Kitts and Nevis. Barbados return back to winning ways. So too was Trinidad and Tobago over the Leeward Islands. And Jamaica looking like a, a real dominant team that could take the double this year in the Women's Championship taking place in St. Kitts and Nevis. And the regional on the 15 comes right here to Antigua starting on the 26th. Young aspiring future West Indian talent will be on show. And as we speak, there's a series of matches being played between the Windward Islands and Leeward Islands under 15 in the preparation for that championship at game one yesterday, game two today, the rest tomorrow and come back on Friday. And this is a collaboration with the Leeward Islands Cricket Board and the Windward Islands Cricket Board. Started last year at the under 15 level. This year you also had the Women, the Windward Islands women's team got to St. Kitts and Nevis and played a, a series of games against the Leeward Islands counterpart. So, good movement of activity taking place. Another leave here by Shanda Paul. This time, John coming around the wicket. So, I'm still trying to work out why John would go around that early rather than over. Um, and completely contrasting styles. Gotta be patient, gotta be patient. Yes, you might feel that you can get and the ball around about the body line but you gotta land the ball in the right areas and you gotta remember it's a, a slowish pitch so the short balls wouldn't be as effective as usually it would be on a quicker pitch Ken he's going wide and wider all the time That's right too there wide. yeah because he's trying to lure him into driving the ball to the offside but that length won't work 10.21 in Antigua and Barbuda, 9.21 in Jamaica. As we say good morning to the folks in Jamaica, Guyana, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Vincent and Grenadines, the Commonwealth of Dominica, St. Lucia. We move around to Anguilla, Stacia, St. Martin, French and Dutch, St. Martin as well. 
Here is Stage on the ball just coming halfway forward. And just he would say he just turned the wrist there. To the folks who are listening to us in Bermuda in the United Kingdom. I want to say good morning to Ravi Etwar at Sports Zone in the United States of America. He's been very busy. A lot of shipments coming in for him. And also the last couple of days we've seen the Trophy World Tour starting in New York. Chris Gale and Ali Khan lighting up the world. John to Nando. Nando is trying to turn that um, rather than look to punch the ball straight up. For some strange reason, Sean. Uh -uh. For some strange reason, um, I, I just look at Nando this morning who is automatically turning uh, around, more or less. Eleven without loss at the end of this delivery. We'll have a commercial being run for us. Here's Nando driving through cover. He's thinking about it, but had to scurry back into his crease. So the end of five, five overs ball. Ghana Abbey goes batting first. Eleven without loss. Nando is six and Tate Chanderpaul is five. Welcome back to the Coolidge Cricket Ground. Darius Martin starting from the CIU Road End. Yorker length delivery. Almost gone through there, but Tate Chander Paul coming down on a very full pitch delivery, which is angling at his toes. 11 without loss. Remember the biggest T20 World Cup ever. It's the ninth edition. West Indies and the United States of America. Total of 55 matches. We played in the USA and across six territories in the Caribbean. Martin to Shander Paul. Oh, that's a beauty. Good leave, good cricket all around. Again left the left-hander. So a, a nagging line and length there um, from Martin. And also from John to both left-handers. Apart from those two boundaries, it's been a quiet start by the Guyanese. No problems there as yet. Two slips, a gully, a backward point, a leg gully in Alex Athenes. We've got a, a square leg which is very, 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 very short as Martin bongs away. Again, hitting the deck real hard here is Darius Martin. That's what you want to see. You've got a new ball in your hand. That's what I would like to see happening from Ryan John. He's got to hit the deck and hit the deck very hard. Attack the stumps. I don't like this conservative way where you come and you're trying to see if you can amble balls across. You've got a new ball. Ball at the stumps. Well, there's a long leg on the boundary, a leg gully, and the forward short leg. Um, there's also a mid on which gives the assumption that they're going to be bowling short pitch to the bodies inadvertently different deliveries not every ball would be like that this ball is pitched up and soon enough they're looking to have him fend off the body or either to the forward short leg to the leg gully or try to hook and then the long leg will come into play Lovely day here. Uh, we give God thanks for this wonderful weather. We say to the master Jason and the 360 crew here in Antigua and Barbuda and all around the region for providing excellent coverage via the Cricket West Indies YouTube channel. Martin to Shonda Paul. Shonda Paul is defending. 
It's got to find a way to get a run, get a single. Got to look to find the gaps, rotate the strike. Even if you just come forward and make Springer at mid-off come in, you could be able to get a single. Just say to Machu Nandu, come on, let's get on our bikes here. I want to say good morning to Red Sporera and his wife Zandra in the island of St. Lucia. Recently honored for his service. It's a sport from in the OECS from 1984 to 1996. That happened last week, Wednesday. No, no ball. ball delivered here by Darius Martin. I think he's got a size 14 boot, so to go over. There we go. Be a big one. So good morning also to Lockhart Sebastian, his son Leon Sebastian, who also represented the Windward Island Volcanoes, is now the manager of the team. So the Sebastian connection continuing. I see UC Gore and Leon Sebastian having a conversation. So good morning also to MLL, Basil Morgan, all of the Basils in Montserrat, Davon Williams and company. That one. Hit him on the splice there. Touchdown in the right area. Good comeback delivery by Darius Martin after that. No ball. So at the end, let's look at it. Would have just crossed seam delivery. Would have just hit the slice right there. Touchdown into the right area. Total of some 31 dot balls so far in the process. Um, and so 12 overs bowled. And 31 dot balls. So we understand in terms of what's happening. 12 without loss. And we saw on that occasion that ball was not short. It was just back of a length and it jumped. And they had um, the batter. As you said, the ball hit the splice of the bat. John around the wicket to Nando. Nando is back and turning it to Shamar Springer at the short mid wicket area. So good morning to the folks in Barbados. Wherever you're listening to us, we thank you very much for supporting West Indies cricket. We're live from the home of cricket West Indies, Coolidge Cricket Ground, formerly known as the Stanford Ground, just outside of the VC Bird International Airport. Real picturesque view. Who would have thought that you could put a Cricket field next to the airport. Nando back and punching that. Down to backward point. Can't score. There's one in St. Vincent. Right next to the airport. I understand. I was told. I don't know how true it is that Phil Simmons hit the ball into the airport and stopped the plane while it was taxiing. It's possible. <laughs> Big fellow. Yeah. <laughs> 12 without loss. This is going to be an exciting round of matches. And what I liked about the fourth round is that all of the games went right down to the wire. Yeah, very competitive tournament so far. Especially going into four days. Usually we see tournaments um, being uh, lost or won in three days. And the scores, I've been very impressed with the scores. 1,400s already scored. Mikel Louis scoring two by himself in one match. Unfortunately, that was against Guyana. And there have been 60 half centuries so far. So, an exciting round of, of games coming up. Just to remind you that the Windward Island Volcanoes lead with 67.4 points. Leeward Islands Hurricanes, 64.2. Jamaica Scorpions, 50.2. John to Nando. Clipped away. Down to Darius Martin. You'll get one. Score in the meantime goes up to 13. Nando goes to 7. It now brings Tate Chandler Paul and Strike, who's on 5 from 24. Nando 7 from 17. The Ghana Hap Eagles won the toss and opted to bat first. John still continuing to come around the wicket. Want to say good morning to the folks who are operating the manual scoreboard here in sweltering heat here in Antigua Barbuda. Yesterday was just a Hot day and today. Looks like it's even going to be hotter. So we expect to have some hot cricket for round five. Well, if you're wondering if there are any other matches today, 
Yes, they are two in Trinidad and one in Jamaica. Barbados play Trinidad and Tobago at the Queen's Park Oval. And the West Indies Academy play CCC at the University Ground. Um, that's in St. Augustus. And the Leeward Islands play Jamaica at Sabina Park. So those are the other two matches today. Well, of course, the Jamaica match is going to start in about uh, just over half hour's time. Because unlike the Eastern Caribbean, Jamaica is one hour behind the Eastern Caribbean in time. Again, a slight mix-up, but all is well that ends well. Looking to stab the ball into the onside, Chandra Paul, and looking for what would have been a suicidal single. The over has come to an end at the end of it. It's 13 without loss. So Trinidad and Tobago, they're 16 for two. Jason Holder has been on the money. Otley and Mohan back into the pavilion. Django is not out on eight. So 16 for two in that all-important game. And then the combined campuses and colleges game. We see the score there, West Indies Academy. They're 21 without loss. That's going to be a big game. But here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground, the home of Cricket West Indies, at the end of seven, the Ghana Happy Eagles are 13 without loss. And the only loss the inwards would have encountered was the last run when Trinidad and Tobago beat them by six wickets after they won their first three games, beating CCC Barbados and Jamaica. It's a good season here for the Windward Islands. They've never won a title by themselves. The only title they won was shared with the Combine Islands. And so Vivian Richards won the first title. It was Combine Islands in 1981. So a couple of um, visitors have come in on the left side of us. I know Hugo is here. Darius Martin has gone from over to around. We're talking about patience. You've got to be patient. To Nando. Two slips go down. Back of a link. And Nando could do no more but just defend. Has to relax. He has to relax. I think he's under immense pressure, Macho Nando. Just love to see him. Just, just relax. Just take it easy. Take it easy. He got all the talent. He's got the making of a good player. But this despite his low scores, he's looked very well. And he's looked good this season. Played a lot of good shots. But find he's finding a way to somehow get out. Martin around the wicket to Nando. Nando just clipping this down into the same leg slip area. I think I would like to see Nando just turning him. No ball again by Darius Martin. Every now and again, he overstrides. Well, just looking for that extra compensation of pace. That's the second no ball he's bowled this morning. We saw Niall Smith. Had a similar problem in the last match against Barbados, right here. Martin, around the wicket. Two Machinandos tapping away. He's driving down the ground. Didn't get over the ball. He was in a standing up position. Needed to just lean into that. Yeah, he didn't and time punch it as that he would have liked. Down the, down the ground. You heard a cracking song as they led a kiss willow, meaning that. It wasn't timed well. It wasn't off the middle of the bat. When it comes off that sweet song, you know it's off the middle of the bat. And had he timed it better and hit it just to the left or right of that man, I would have been four down the ground. 14 without loss. Ghana Happy Eagles winning the toss. Martin. Wrong the wicket. Down the onside, pushing it. So, offline, really offline here, Darius Martin. And this is what I was talking about. The, the strategy of, you know, you're over and nothing is working and then you, you come around. You just got to be patient. You got to land the ball into the right areas. And be patient. To find, find a lot of the Caribbean teams. You know, folks just keep trying too many things. Got to build pressure. You got to build pressure. 
they've not got off to a, a flyer to say that you know you you could be trying a lot of things just be patient just land the ball in the right areas back and across defending nicely again Nando just a little bit under pressure just turning around a little bit Nando in the, his, his stance so just like to see him just stay side on and just look to punch the ball up the V Minna on in the middle of the pretty close got to look up the V for a very 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 long time anything with wit you'll be looking to pounce on it and he's strong in that area sometimes I think he just tries to hit the ball too hard just use the pace find the gap 14 without loss the end of this over we'll have a double change Joel Manning and the voice of Mali Richards will step into the hot seat. Back and across, defending again. It's almost turning him right around. So at the end of eight overs, the Ghana Up Eagles winning the toss. 14 without us. Machu Nando is seven. Tej Shandapal is five. Joel Manning will come into the hot seat and he'll leave some space for... I can't beat him in tennis. I can't beat him in golf. Uh, maybe I can, you know, in a little win ball game, maybe I can out trick him or maybe I can bet him. Marley Richards. Ryan John to continue. Good morning to all the listeners, watchers, not just in the Caribbean but around the globe. Love to see the engagement on the West Indies YouTube channel. Keep those comments coming. I'll be joined by Joel Manning in just a second. But it's Ryan John from the commentary box end here. He's taken 17 wickets so far in this West Indies four-day championship. He's been one of the standout performers, in my opinion, for the Windward Island so far. Leading the table. This one swung back in quite sharply. Didn't look like Shander Paul knew much about that one, but he survives. Yes, the Windward Islands coming off a loss in their previous match versus the Trinidad and Tobago Red Force still leading the table though after four rounds of West Indies four day cricket. Leeward Islands very close in second after their win versus the CCC 64.2. Jamaica 50 points in third. Barbados in fourth with 48.2. Trinidad 47.2 in fifth. Guyana 6th with 46.2 points. The West Indies Academy 30.8 in 7th. And the CCC bringing up the rear with 19 points, 8 points after 4 rounds. And as Vernon was saying, this partnership of Nandu and Shandapal may be just feeling a bit of pressure now. Four rounds of matches gone. The pair probably wouldn't have scored the runs they would have thought or would have liked it after this stage. But what is it? we still got three rounds of four-day cricket yet to play. Guyana coming off back-to-back -back wins, so a bit of momentum on their side. And if you just seen that, it looks like he's played it miss, but that's a leave in the Tay Chandler Paul book. Just pulls the bat inside of the line. But important, important innings. Uh, every innings is important. But in the grand context of things, Tay Chandler Paul, West Indies opening batter tour of England upcoming in the summer he'd want to find some form going into what can be quite unhelpful conditions in terms of not the most batting friendly conditions in England so he'd want to make sure his game is in 
tip top form going into that series. Big series for him as well. Good morning, Mally. Good morning, Joe. Pleasure to be alongside of you. Yeah, glad glad to have you. Uh, round number five, uh, Volcanoes versus uh, the Eagles here. Ghana and Windward Island. Certainly another fantastic contest shaping up here in round number five. Well, you might consider it to be expected quiet start <laughs> from Guyana, but certainly not said in any um, bad way, no. so to speak. Yeah, certainly looking to build another platform, Guyana Harpy Eagle, similar to what it did in round number four, playing here versus Barbados Pride. Yeah, that partnership went a long way in terms of seeing off that new ball, wearing down the Barbados Pride attack. I think Shander Paul faced 140 deliveries in his first innings. That's a beauty. Absolute beauty. Not sure how, how that's missed, that outside edge. Shape in once again to the left-handed Tate Shander Paul from around the wicket is John. Look at the movement, inward movement. No footwork, caught on the crease. Not sure he took the edge though. Yeah, look to beat the edge there. The end of that over. It's 14 without loss. And Ryan John just has that ability to just get this new ball to dart back in or tail back into the left-hander quite late. Yeah, got that one a lot fuller on that occasion. Just caught in between T. Shannibal. There you see it in terms of neither forward nor back. Should have been back at all to that delivery. But yeah, just caught in that in-between position. And from their hands having to do the work, feeling for it. Taze Noreen Shandapal, not a position that he wants to be in too often. Darius Martin. To continue from the CIU road end. It's actually my first time seeing Darius Martin live. Tall, number 65 on his back. Looks to have a smooth, fluid action. Gone around the wicket here to Matthew Nandu, though. He started over the wicket, but he's changed his line of attack. Nandu tapping that back with intent once again here. I just played in the two games before this. Darius Martin picked up four for 85 in the second innings versus Jamaica, and then a wicket apiece when they played versus Barbados. So six wickets so far for him in the competition. I think Sherman Lewis probably would have been a fast bowler that would have shared that new ball with Ryan John in the first three, four rounds as well. But he's not playing here today. That's a fantastic bit of fielding down on the boundary there to save what looked like a certain four. Yeah, like Edwards in hot pursuit of that one. Another player that's come in. Left arm spinner. Yeah, certainly excited to see how he goes, Larry Edwards. Especially in the longer format. I enjoyed watching him last season, especially in that game they played versus Barbados Pride at uh, Queen's Park Oval. Okay. Yeah, it was very controlled in how mm. you went about things. So just a couple of changes then for the Windward Islands, looking to bounce back, as we said earlier, from a loss in the previous round. Yeah, three changes for them coming in to this one. Kenneth Denver picked up five in the last match, now carrying an injury, and that's why he's not here. A lucky tip for the young man. Johan Jeremiah as well. Uh, to sit on this occasion. Batted at the top of the order with Solazano. It's good to see young Solazano as well. So just coming back to form in the last couple of rounds. Hundred and a half century. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
for intriguing, intriguing context. Contest, as you were saying, Joe. Kind of happy Eagles really bouncing back. Maybe benefiting from the West Indian players coming back into the fold. Back-to-back -back wins, looking for three on the bounce. Yeah, especially after the start that they had, they'll definitely take the results that have come. Mm. And not just the results, but an improvement in the process for them to get back to it after this. That's close. That's close. Ooh, just going down. Big confidence shot. That from Darius Martin. Round the wicket once again. This one's pitched just on middle. And, woo, it's probably just missing leg by a shave if it was, to be fair. That was close from around the wicket in the area. Not too much movement. Not sure how that looked to you, Joe. Yeah, it looked relatively close on that occasion, especially given how full it was. It was. Yes, there was a bit of movement, especially also that angle with the ball naturally going to head down that leg side. But hey, umpire Basrath had a better view than me on that occasion, so I'll give it to him. Yes, he's been good in this in this West Indies Four Day Championship. Ryan John though to continue, number seventy four on his back. The man from Grenada. Not sure what he was appealing for there. Bit of bounce this time. Yeah. Tinge of green on this pitch, Joe. Yeah, on the first glance, he probably told himself that height might be a question on that particular occasion. Just cannoning into what would have been the protective box of Tage and Ryan Shandapal on that occasion. Once again, he's just making himself a big target, Tage Shandapal, especially when he gets square. Tends to square himself up. Yeah, but he's getting caught in that in-between area just a couple times now at the end of the previous over. Now here at the start of this Ryan John over. So into what is now a better period of play for him, Ryan John. Yeah, I think when Shandapal is playing well, he, he judges uh, where his off stump is quite... <laughs> It's quite astute of knowing at knowing where his off stump is. But in the past year or so, he just seems to get dragged into playing a bit too wide outside that off stump. You've seen the international bowlers really, really target that area. And that lack of footwork. It's all about adjusting. Making the improvements, working hard on one's game. Not only working hard, but working hard doing the right things as well. Gets square again, but manages to access the ball. And I can just imagine, you know, being the son of a great West Indian player. You know, uh, he's under the microscope of the world. I've definitely been in his shoes. The mind tends to race. It's just important that one takes a few deep breaths and understands that there's always more time than you think. John again. Good delivery honing in on that off stump. Shandapal wears that one again somewhere on the body. Yeah, just a couple problems for him. And I mentioned the fact that Ryan John here has found what is the, the right line and length to Tejan Arain, especially given that he's not really looking to come out to him as well. So even in the delivery that he played just back in towards what would have been that short mid-wicket area, he didn't really get that straight in as well. So I think Ryan John at the moment is really bowling well to Tejan Arain, Shandipal, especially given he's not really moving his feet in the manner that he should be at this stage. Yeah, and speaking to uh, groundsman Kadim um, in the previous match, he didn't feel like he was that far away from having the perfect wicket here at the CCG. He thought in the match versus the Barbados that maybe that pitch, Guyana and Barbados in the previous round here, he thought maybe that pitch was just a little too fluffy. He could have just shaved that grass a little bit more. It would have aided the fast bowlers, especially with that new ball. And I think they've made the adjustment to this pitch here. 
in this encounter between the Windward Islands and Guyana. It's just a bit more in it for the new ball early here. Can John exploit it? Once again, beautiful delivery, good carry through, good leave. Good judgment shown by Shanda Paul. The end of that over. Windward Islands 18 without loss. I do apologize for the choice words <laughs> coming through the stump mic on that particular cage. A little gassed out there <laughs> at the moment is Ryan John. A very hot day here at Coolidge. But this start here uh, for the Windward Islands Volcanoes, somewhat a picture of what happened to them versus Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, and it's a situation where they were unable to penetrate at the start of things. If you look at the other rounds that they played, they picked up early wickets, got into the middle order very quickly. And that's where the likes of somebody that's coming on to bowl now, like Shamar Springer, has been extremely effective for them. And it's just a case of having to find a way to break that partnership here now. Springer uh, has taken 17 wickets this season so far uh, for the Volcanoes. He's been very effective, Springer. And that's because of the, the wicket-to-wicket style bowler that he is handy contributions with the bat as well from young springer so at one point it looked like maybe young springer wasn't going in the right direction in terms of his development had a few injury issues but to be fair he's found a home in the windward islands hasn't he no, I'm actually very happy for him and he likes mm. of Tevin Walker mm. as well. And uh, this comment has nothing to do with in terms of the Barbados Pride franchise, but there's certain players who just need to leave home, essentially, to kind of, of find, where they're from. Yeah, yes. to find their wings, so to speak. When you look around the setups that they would have been had they been playing with the Barbados Pride, would not have gotten the type of opportunities given the roles 100%. that they played. Tevin Walker would be competing with the likes of Shane Dowrich. Then you had Shamar Springer competing with the likes of Rashawn Primus and others who, you know, both similar, have similar um, options in terms of mm. with the bat as well. So just needed to have left the franchise. And because of that, you're seeing the type of value that they can have to set up. So I'm, I'm actually very happy. Uh, of uh, somebody like Shamar Spring and the opportunities that he's had here with this franchise. And the franchise system just helping to develop players regardless of where they're from. As I think said, that's what's needed. Mm, as you said, you know, it's exactly what's needed. You know, we, we're in this together. West Indies, you know, as we. Yeah, especially at this level and the fact that even though, yes, these are the guys who are one step shy or one and a half step shy of getting to what is the senior level, mm. this is still a very big developmental stage 100%. in West Indies cricket. And hence why I believe that a lot more players need to be moving around the region as well. A lot more franchises need to view it from a very professional perspective and not just a country perspective when it comes to scenarios like these and development of players. Exactly. That's where you have scouting systems being put into place, things like that. Yeah, I just think that too many guys are kind of lost away in various franchise systems holding on one to the possibility of playing for their country. Now, yes, I know that there is a lot of pride associated with playing for your country, but there's also a lot of development associated with leaving home as well. And, and the fact that you are now able to contribute what you bring from your country and others are able to contribute to you what they have then in their countries as well. And that's where I think that we're missing quite a bit in these professional setups. Yeah, and it's also a part of the uniqueness of what makes the West Indies the West Indies. That's a beautiful shot from Nandu. Full face of the bat. Four runs. It was four runs as soon as it left his bat. Timed to perfection. Not quite a half volley. Check the stride on this one. Actually, not that big a stride, but the weight was going forward. Good shot from the young man. Yeah, and he ended, just allowed that ball to come to him. Yes, he was playing it on the move slightly. Nandu. Yes. <clears throat> However, the fact that that angle from uh, around the wicket means that really and truly there's not much in terms of a threat as long as the ball is pitched up as it was on that occasion. Well balanced at the end, played perfectly. Yeah, that shot should give him the world of confidence here. Let's see how Springer responds goes wider almost similar delivery Nandu absolutely perplexed apoplexed with himself apoplectic with himself angry is the word missing out and I think that's a little area in which he can improve you know Joe mentally 
maybe just a little too intense at times at the crease. Maybe wears himself out mentally at the crease. He's got to find the, the areas in which he can just relax. Key in when the deliverer, when the ball is ready to deliver. But still a young man. All these things are things that he will learn as he progresses into his career. Yeah, I'm just happy with the fact that he's been given a stretch, given a run at the top for the Ghana Harpy Eagles last season into this season yeah, as right. well. Lost that one with Ryan John. Yeah, he's been given a run. And it's something we've seen, actually, throughout the franchises. A few young players just being given an opportunity to forge their careers. You think of young uh, Jewel Andrew from the Leewards. Straight from the West Indies, under-19s, right in. Nathan Edward as well, in and around the setup. Matara for the CCC, Jordan Johnson as well, West Indies Academy. So these young players, really young players, be, being given an opportunity to forge careers in the longer format of the game. That's a leave again outside that off stump. Quite a few teenagers as well. In the West Indies four day championship. Yeah, and those young guys are actually carrying their weight as well, and that's what you love to see, to be very honest. Of course you will have the guys that are more experienced. You do expect at some stage that I experience will cause them to dominate. But you're still seeing the young guys you mentioned one especially in Mataro who has really come to the fore, missed out on a chance to go to the World Cup, but Spirit certainly aren't dampened, and he's yeah. really, you know, making a mark for himself, making a name for himself thus far in the championship. Have a look at this one. A bit of bounce again. So every now and again, Ryan John just producing a delivery, just forcing Shandabal, Shandapal into an uncomfortable stroke there, just bouncing from a length. Shandapal comes down a bit, does a bit of gardening. Just really keying in, in on these areas. I think it's just the tinge of green at this stage maybe you can see a few cracks as well they'll widen as the game progresses day three day four you anticipate spinners to come into it yeah that was a part of the conversation that uh, i was definitely going to have with you mali in terms of the fact that round number four we didn't see spin play that big a part in terms of not necessarily the wicket takers but in terms of the ball actually spinning a lot out of the surface and you probably expect that you might get a bit more of that here as we head into the back half of day two into day three and, and it brings now somebody like kevin sinclair into the conversation a bit more because of a couple more left handers in this windward island setup it brings somebody like larry edwards into the conversation l later in today yeah so i think with this pitch not having quite as much grass as the pitch that we played on uh, in the last round, I think this one will just deteriorate a little bit more or maybe even quicker than we saw in round three. Yeah, and because of that also, we're looking at the fact that umpire Leslie Fernandes had to just ask mm. Ryan John a couple times mm. because he's getting a little close onto that protected area. And those footmarks really play a role. We saw the wicket of... Uh, was it Kamar Roach bowled round his legs by Gudikesh Moti out of the footmarks big wicket in the context of things once again not quite played confidently from Shandapal but he survives and umpire Reefer says drinks so that's the first hour in the books Joe 13 overs gone the Harpy Eagles are 22 without loss
Say thanks to Marley Richards and to Joel Manning. Slow start, but the most important thing, they have not lost a wicket in the first hour. 22 without loss. 13 overs bowls, so they're on the money. I just wanted to continue the conversation that Mali was talking in respect to Machu Nandu. And one would have to understand how much cricket Machu Nandu has played so far. He's only 20 years old. And sometimes I think we operate as if Nando is 25, 26. He's just started. He's a young man. Come from, came from the under-19 level. We'll come back to that point. The Shamar spring around the wicket to Nando. Nando is back and just turning this into the square leg area. He'll get two runs quite easily. And straight away after the break, he resumes. He goes up to 16. And I wanted to make the point, Sean, that during the Ireland Emerging Series, in which Matthew Nando played for the West Indies Academy. He scored 184 runs, 63 not out and 59. And every time I, I listen to a lot of folks, even in some chats and on programs, they always, these, because Nando would have scored 100 against Barbados, the expectation seems to be that high. And I think he himself has put himself under immense pressure and just needs to relax and enjoy his cricket. He's 16 here. He gets a beauty. That's a lovely delivery by Shamar Springer. Peach delivery and Walcott thought that he had a moment to maybe run Nando out. Quickly apologize. Welcome back again, Sean Devers. Yeah, welcome to everyone looking at the YouTube on stream. I want to say, uh, Nando has played very well, but he's the only problem with him is not converted starts into big scores but the shots he's played again today he's played two glorious shots but he has to understand that he's got a bat long he's got to convert these um starts into Set. Doesn't mean being reckless. Well, he's done that during his career because, like I said, he's a senior batsman in this team. He's got over 4,000 first class runs with seven centuries. <coughs> it's not like Shanda Paul is not a customer of scoring runs. He's just going through a rut and he just needs to get out of <coughs> excuse me, that rut as we speak. Here comes Martin around the wicket to Macho Nando. He starts, and Nando is just turning this into the square leg area. Very comfortable for Nando. Anything in that area, middle and leg, he's going to work the ball. Got to get him to come forward and drive the ball, Martin. And just like the Barbados Pride Bowlers, the Windward Island Volcanoes, with a tinge of grass here, seem not to be able to understand how to bowl on this track in terms of their lengths. Yeah, but they've got to try and adjust very quickly. Or uh, this partnership could develop into a dangerous one for the Windward Islands. I was listening to the conversation with uh, Mali and Joel. Very interesting conversation when they spoke about the age of the players and uh, the, the franchise, the opportunities. Um, if it wasn't for Guyana, players like Reefer would not have played test cricket because he came to Guyana. And young Ned, he's got 21 wickets so far for the West Indies Academy. If he was trying to get into the Guyana team, there's Pumal, there is Moti, and there's the guy, Anthony Adams, who was in the first two matches. He's been sent home with the replacement of Moti. Um, so there are three left-arm spinners vying for Guyana's spots 
two of them have already played for West Indies, so it would be difficult for him. Ashminet is the son of the coach. I'll also say to you, Sean, that we have a lot of players who are not going to go to the next level. So why would you deprive a young player by just saying, well, we're playing this person just because we want to play this person? We have, we have to understand the system, you, you know. Where Cricket West Indies have invested in these young players and they have to be able to be given an opportunity in the respective franchises. A lot of the franchises, they're concerned about winning. They're not concerned about developing young players and that, that's why we're having the problem that we're having. Round the wicket comes Martin. Shanda Paul is just turning this up to spring at mid on. Can't score. You've got to give players an opportunity. And one of the things which I find in the franchise system over the years, a young player comes in and where's broadcasters say, well, he's not good enough. Um, he's, he's just 20 or 19. He's, he's failing these three, four games, so he should be dropped. And then we bring back somebody who's 35, 36. Uh, how, is, how is a Mally Richards at 20 going to get an experience when you just put him on the bench. He has to play to get that experience. Well, uh, young Zezan Motaro, he's only 17. And he plays for CCC. He's actually got the best bowling figures so far in this tournament. 7 for 108 with his leg spin playing against Jamaica. So that shows you that the youngsters, we've got a lot of talent. And plus he's a leg spinner. We don't have many of those in the Caribbean sees how we handle the talent and what our priorities are. Because you have somebody like a Nathan Edwards who's come back from the World Cup in South Africa. He can't get into a Leeward Island setup. He's got to be able to be part of the West Indies Academy or the Combined Campuses and Colleges squad. Um, that's really no excuse. He has to be playing cricket. Short. Nothing delivery again. Martin seems not to be on the same track with us here, Sean, because he would know that. Over trying to bowl something that the shot is not going to work. End of over number 15, score is 29 without loss. Tate Chandapal is 7 from 52, and Nando is 20 from 40. Yes, and Mikal Louis, um, the petition, he's already got 360 runs. He's the leading run scorer, playing for the Leeward Islands. Both of his centuries, he scored two, were made against Guyana. And he's only 23. So we've got young players. Even Kevin Sinclair is just 24. And he's got the highest score so far. 165, I think. Not out. Want to see him develop his bowling. So he can be able to. He, he's going to have to learn and learn on the job very quickly to become a match winner for the West Indies. Springer. Hitting the deck hard. And again, Shander Paul just walking across the crease. You, you're either forward or you're back. And he was in no man's land there. Just looking again to just jab the ball down to backward points. Got to get more positives. Got to get onto that front foot. It's a good hard length being bowled by Shamar Springer. Coming back to Sinclair, he reminds me a lot about, uh, of Roger Harper. Um, not a big turn of the ball as compared to Clyde Butts. Um, but Harper was just there and thereabouts. Um, and his feeling and his batting and his electric attitude in the field was what made him one of the better all-rounders. No ball again, sorry, Sean. No ball by Shamar Springer. So the don't know if the CIU road in is giving some challenge to the bowlers. Two from Martin and now one from Springer, the third of the day. And we saw in the previous match, um, Nile Smith bowling a lot of no balls from that same end. Around the wicket comes Shamar Springer, looking to hit the deck harder. Clipped away. Again, can't score. Shanda Paul can't find the gap, simply because he's turned right around. The bottom man coming into play, rather than looking to hit the ball down the ground. He's got to look up the V for a longer period of time. He's trying to rehearse, but I think he needs his mechanism in terms of his mechanics. He has to get into the right position. Got to turn his hips, stay over the ball a little longer. He's got to get... A, a more solid base, lead with that head and the shoulder, and punch it down the ground. Shanda Paul, another wide delivery. Seems to have changed his stance over the last season or so. Chandra Paul. There's so many conversations taking place, Sean. 
from broadcasters, maybe coaches are also talking to, to Tate Chanda Paul. One of the things which I feel when you look at him is that his head sometimes goes out of alignment. He moves that head. He needs, with your head, your head weighs about 3.3 pounds. So you've got to be able to keep that as still as possible. Oh, that's, oh, a, that's beauty. a beauty. Yeah. Be lovely delivery. Let's look at that again, Jason. Top of off stump. Just about the fourth stump line there. Touching down into the right area. Just back of a length. Went away from the left hand. He played at it. This time, he certainly was beaten. But at least he covered his off stump. Um, that's the complete difference. And that's what he's going to... He's, that's the challenge that you're going to have bowling to him. You've got to be patient. You've got to get him to come on that front foot. Just pull it back into that four-meter length area. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just clipped that one and just took off very straight away. Good calling, good communication with Nando and Shanda Paul. It's got to look to rotate the strike. Partnership is 31 from some 98 deliveries. The two of them put together a half-century partnership. In fact, that was the first half-century partnership by the openers for Guyana in the last match against Barbados. And then, unfortunately, that ran out. Don't know how many more times we can talk about that. Let's hope that it doesn't happen in this game. Clipped away beautifully. John will have a long run. He won't get there. Four runs. He was just too wide. Offline delivery by Springs. He puts his hand up very quickly and says, I apologize, Skip. A boundary to Nando. And this confidence growing here for this young man. He just needs to relax, relax himself. The partnership is now 35 from 99. And Nando right. is 24 from 41. Tate Chanda Paul, 8 from 58 balls. Nando continues to look very good. Played aggressively, positively. But more importantly, not recklessly. One would have maybe toyed with the idea of bringing in Perez and letting him open the batting with either Nando or Tate Narain because of the his positivity is a free-flowing batter, but the problem would be who to drop. Ali Mohammed. Okay. Uh, is it that, that, that's, that, that's, not, that's a no-brainer. <laughs> but one would say, the selectors or so, <laughs> that he had a five-wicket haul. In fact, he had a half-century also. But he's been a spectator since that. I mean, in fairness, really, to him... Sometimes we have to pick horses for courses. Um, if you look at the tracks mm. right here at the Coolidge Cookie Ground, you want a live wire. You want a Perez in your team. Um, Ali Mohammed, if we check how many overs he would have bowled, and I'll go through that for you in a little while, Sean, so that we can break down the stats. I'll come back to you very quickly. Again, on the money is Darius Martin. So, so far for the season... Ronaldo Ali Mohammed has scored some 76 runs and outside is bowled close to about 40 at overs. Um, first game, 10 3, 22 not. Le game against the Leeward Islands, 19.5, 2 made in 69, 5. 13.4, not 66, 2. 8 not, 20 not. 7 1, 35 1. So, really. You could take a gamble, Sean, um, in, in, in that respect. I'm looking at his bowling figures. He would maybe only have seven, eight wickets. And, my and the, context and the of the game in terms of what Perez brings to the, the feeling, the energy level as to what he brings to the field, is what I'm looking at. And Ali Mohammed is supposed to be a batting all-rounder. There we go. But he's in the team, and so... There might be a role for him to play in this game. We'll look and see in terms of what's going to be happening. But so far, the Ghana leading batsman has been Kevin Sinclair. 338 runs with a high score of 165 not out. Shanda Paul coming forward and getting an easy single. I think that Alex Atenez has to keep Shanda Paul on strike. That single was just too easy. They've got a feel a, a feel of the deep backward square and a long leg. And I... For, I can't get that worked out, Sean, in having that deep backward square on this track. I would like to see that feeler come up 
inside into the square leg area more or less and get Darius Martin to attack the stumps more especially when bowling to a Nando and a Shanda ball and especially to well both of them if you're gonna bowl short to bring those two fielders on the boundary into play this is a track not suited for that type of bowling Tinger Grass on somebody would have been fooled again just like Craig Bratwit and the Barbados Pride we know what we were here. We witnessed that live and in living color. No, I don't think they would have been fooled again. Maybe the windwards. So Ghana won the toss and solved that problem. They decided <laughs> to bat because they were here before. <laughs> 36 without loss. Once again, we want to say good morning to Raviet Warren and his family and his wife, all the folks in Ghana. Make sure that you support the E4 brand. You have to support our own in a very big way. Oh, extravagant leave alone from <laughs> Machu Nando. Almost like he's copying Tej Shandaboy. Yeah. <laughs> I never saw that before from Machu Nando. <laughs> so the end of over number 17, 36 without loss. Shamar Springer not for 13. Darius Martin not for 16 from his 7. And Ryan John didn't bowl well at all. Good morning to... Derek Kalicharan, listening on YouTube in the United States of America, also to Basil Butcher Jr., the son of the illustrious former Ghana and West Indies batter or batsman in the, in the days they wasn't called batter. Only recently the law's been changed. So you want to refer to the older cricketers as batsmen, bas batter. Battle, bats, battle, butcher. I think you also have to call the modern day batsmen um, players as batsmen as well. Uh, sometimes we we are being taken out of our traditional culture zone. I like yeah. to take my time out and say batsmen. You know, in, in, in fairness, and to me, Sean is almost like. Uh, and I'll come back to you to give you my 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 own version. Here is a lovely Shanda shot. Beautiful this shot. To cover. It was pitched up. Half and volley. He leaned into it. And this time hit it through the gap. Well, there's a big gap there. There's acres and acres of real estate between the backward point and the extra cover. Jason, can you, if you could just flip back up. I just wanted to, in that frame, and to be able to just show Sean what I was talking about. Now, this was a half volley, Sean. Yes, he got bad onto it, but just, you, you see, he's, he's playing it, and then he comes right back up, rushing it, rather than Almost leaning into it. Almost the back foot. Yes, because he's looking to go square. Yeah. But Richie Richardson, if you remember, used to hit half volleys off the back foot, back drive them for fours. Forty without loss. Springer just overcompensating. Got to be patient. Got to be patient. You got to bowl in tandems. Got to bowl one side. Attack the stumps. Force Shander Paul to drive the ball up to mid off. Up to mid on. Those lengths. Gotta, that's where you got to be. Down the onside. He's out caught. So A lame special. and soft dismissal there by Sh Tate Shander Paul. He played right around the delivery. Pitched between middle and leg. Turned it. So the bottom man came into play. And a simple catch to the fielder at short mid wicket. Ghana lose their first wicket. And look at it again on 40. Jason is going to one up for us again, Sean. Have a look at it. It turned him right around and the bottom man came into play. There it goes. That's the bad phase right there. Off balance. Just there was no balance at, at all. It. He didn't even try to drive it or stop it. He just pushed at it. And that's what I was saying. He'll bat long, he'll get mentally worn out, and he'll be dismissed for not a big score. <laughs> Even though in the past, but in the past when he used to score a lot of runs, he never had that stance. I don't know why he has that stance, maybe from some logical reason. So Ghana losing their first wicket. Wicket of Tate and Paul. And windward striking right after the br the break. 
after the water break. And Tevin Imla, the Ghana Happy Eagles, with a lot of responsibility on his shoulder. He comes out. He's going to play shots, for sure. I think you'll see a new mindset for Macho Nando because Imla is someone who is going to play shots and he's going to be looking to run the singles early o'clock. So Tay Chanapal goes back very early. Ghana will have to seriously think now. And it'll be interesting to see what the approach will be from Imla. Let's take the middle stump guard. Imla batting with a slightly injured right hand. Um, his finger, that's, that's the reason why he was not keeping. So hopefully during the course of this tournament, he'll return to the keeper's position behind the stumps. But for now in this match, Kevin um, Kimol Savory will also be keeping again. So that's the reason why he's got an injured finger on his right hand. Don't want to take the chance of getting it hit while in the keeper's gloves. 40 for one. Imla just faces first delivery and faces second from Springer. Pitched up again. That's good. That's real good comeback here by Springer. End of over number 18. 40 for one. Guyana. And the pressure continues to mount here. One of four players coming back from West Indies duties in Australia, Imla, taking over the captaincy from Kevlin Anderson. So the Windward Island Volcanoes bowlers have created pressure. The score being 40 for one. And John Springer and Martin, some 90 dot balls in the morning's play. Only 18 overs bowled so far. Macho Nando, 24 from 43. Darius Martin coming around the wicket from the media center in here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground. Again, comfortable for him. Feel that the feeler in the deep backward square leg area is wasted. Single to Nando, he goes to 25 and the score here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground, the home of Cricket West Indies. Ghana Happy Eagles batting first at 41 for one. Yeah, they've lost Chandra Paul. Now they've got to rebuild. Nandu's played very well. He's played very well in every innings he's played so far. Let's hope that he'll convert this good start. Four to four balls, he's been at the crease. Should be well in tune with the pace, the bunks, the lights, the conditions. He's on a quarter of a century. Let's see if he can, can, can convert this one into a century. Here is Imla falling over. Just for a moment, they thought about going up, but a leg by signal, so Imla remains on north. Score goes up to 42. 42 <coughs> for one. Ryan John at mid on, the vice captain, just making a slight adjustment. Captain is Alex Athenes. Good morning once again to Basil Morgan from the island of Montserrat. That's where um, Ronsford Beaton was born, you know, in Montserrat. And then he came to Guyana, settled in the Essequibo area, and then came down and played in Georgetown. Here again, Nando. That's much better, so... At least somebody heard us and they brought up the deep back of Square Lake Fielder very quickly inside that era. Larry Edwards, left arm spinner, picking up that delivery very quickly at Square Lake. So that's a, this is a much better feel. Yeah, I mean, I think Windwards, they're going to have to be patient. Don't try too many things. Just don't put feelers in artificial positions. Gonna yeah, that would have been an easy single there. You release the pressure and now is that... <coughs> Backward square, and it'll be hard to run a single there. Martin 
to Nando, who's 25. He's driving, he's out, appeal for out caught. He's out caught behind. Loose shot by Macho Nando. He's standing and looking at Umpire as a reefer because he can't believe that he has played that. But Umpire gives him out. Nando caught behind off Martin from around the wicket. Let's look at the replay. He doesn't feel that he's touched it. It's a wide delivery. No, I don't think he's touched it. And it, it looks either. as if it might be far away from his bat. But Umpire Leslie Reefer is in the best position. And Nando goes. Caught behind for 25. 42 for 2 here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground. But Nando has been very unfortunate this season. He's got to 25. That ball seemed to have missed the bat by a mile. He was run out unnecessarily in the previous match when he had 28. Uh, so Nandu is really unlucky, but the umpire's decision is final. You well, get it boys. your way one day, then the other days will go against you. We are 150 meters away. I um, think it passed about. Yeah. But we never know. We never know. Umpire is a reefer is in the best position, and so he's been given out. Maybe he didn't feel that he was nicked it. There's no DRS here. Uh, but Jason has done an excellent job to be able to bring that down to us in the frame. And the Windward Islands have struck. 42 for 2 in over number 19. Darius Martin 1 for 17 so far. So both batsmen, Kevin Anderson, the vice captain, and Tevin Imler are uh, not. Anderson is yet to face his delivery. And Anderson so far... In this championship, Kevlin Anderson, 192 runs with a high score of 87. And every time you see Kevlin Anderson, he looks so, such an accomplished player. Really a talent. Has the mannerism of a Dr. Sir Richie Richardson in terms of his batting style, just the way he goes about things. He keeps it as simple as possible. Basically a very young team. <coughs> Guyana. There is caught on the crease there. Yeah. Anderson he really didn't get his feet moving very quickly there. Just just the back just came down. Good thing that he was straight. Coming up next would be Joel Manning and Mally Richards yeah, after this delivery. Yeah, that ball just left him and he was squared up. Winwood Islands, 42 for 2. Just amazing as to what happens after a break. Boat opener's gone. Two slips, a gully, backward point, a cover, mid on, mid off, short, mid wicket. And a long leg. Oh, that's a beauty. That's a Jaffa. He missed that completely. So the end of over number 19, 42 from 2, with the voice of Joel Manning, and then Mally Richards. Good morning again to everyone. West, the Windward Islands have, well, that double strike has just forged them ahead in this context. That partnership between Nandu and Shandapal is just starting to wear down these Windward Islands bowlers. Is that first strike from Shamar Springer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yet another soft dismissal for Tej Shandapal. And Nandu, as Sean was saying, a bit unlucky to be given out there. Seemed to miss that edge by quite a bit. Probably just hit the ground. There was a bit of a sound. Umpire Reefa says Nandu has to go. So 42 for 2 now. Guyana. Skipper Imlak. Walks to the crease. Played his first match of this West Indies four-day championship in the previous round versus the Barbados Pride. Scored 55 from 162 deliveries in the first innings. Just managed 9 of 10 in the second. Oh, 
punting wickets are the windwards once again. Just a bit of shape and bounce there from Shamal Springer. You saw the last delivery from Darius Martin, the final delivery of his over previously. Just touch down outside that off stump, a bit of bounce, a bit of pace, carry through to the wicket keeper. So we're just seeing this new ball have more of an effect on this CCG pitch. But one, two, three, four pitches over from previous match. Actually, three pitches over to the left. I'm joined by Joel Manning now. 1400s so far after four rounds. That's a beauty. Once again, we've seen quite a few plays and misses here this morning. This one just slightly fuller in length, a bit of shape there. Almost drawing Imlac into the stroke. What did you make of this, Joe? Uh, what was says that's fantastic length from Shamar Springer that's what was the ideal there in terms of drawing Imlac into that shot he's had good fortune thus far since being the skipper in terms of the results for the Ghana Harpy Eagles but we want that to also translate into his batting as well Imlac yeah, I had a chance to speak to him at the end of the previous round that's the end of 20 overs it's 42 for two but yeah, just in that conversation, he mentioned the fact that, yeah, he's enjoying being at the top. He's enjoying leading his side, but he also wants to lead his side with the bat as well. And a fantastic opportunity to do that here at 42 for two. First of all, we want to lead them to lunch and still be out there and obviously build on that after that luncheon period. But I want to get to something, Mali. You mm. said, good morning once again, Joel. And then you, you went on to say 1400s. And I thought, you know, that you might have been calling my stats <laughs> there, you know. I was, you know, starting to feel like, oh, Mali, oh, you're, you're really bigging me up here. <laughs> I'd have to do quite a bit of research for that, I'll tell you. Yeah, man, 1400 so far after four rounds, coming into round five here in this West Indies four-day championship, I was saying, in comparison... To after five rounds last season, if you remember, West Indies Four Day Championship was just five rounds last year. You had the same 1400 scored. So I think just a slight improvement being shown by the West Indies, West Indian batters around the region. <coughs> yeah, a bit of shape away on that occasion. As a kept on Anderson. Martin here too. Enter fantastic spell. And once again, it's that length at the moment from these Windward Island bowlers, Windward Islands bowlers, just hitting a fantastic length at the moment. Still a bit of movement around as well. In fact, a bit more movement than we saw on day one when Barbados Pride were bowling here at Coolidge. Yeah, maybe just a bit more in it for the fast bowlers here on this pitch. Yeah, going for that magic delivery on that occasion, a bit straighter from Martin. Probably asked the ball to do a bit too much but yeah just getting back to the point that you've seen those 1400s already and I, I think that has been a lot of the conversation especially in that last round of cricket as well whereby you've seen a lot of the better batting performances thus far when you look at a couple of the scores that we've seen the teams put up across this tournament thus far you realize that hey batters are actually standing out there and yes you know some should have gone on to probably get to that landmark figure as well as you see just a strengthening of that slip cord and now three slips in the gully in place Just overstepping there was Martin. Mm. Yeah, a little naughty as well mm. from Kevlon Anderson. Of course, especially we saw in that last innings that he played um, here at Coolidge versus Barbados Pride. Looked to impose himself upon the opposition. And he was the difference maker in that session after lunch on day one in terms of accelerating that Ghana Harpy Eagle score. But yeah, if we just cast our minds quickly back to round number four, mm. um, there's been a lot of conversation about, you know, whether or not that might have been the best round of cricket that we've seen for some time across all the games Hotly in debated. the first class setup. Mm. <coughs> a 
once again just a bit of bounce just forcing anderson into something a little uncomfortable but he negotiates it just a bit of bouncing shape outside that off stump here for martin as we said tall a 28 year old hailing from the island of saint vincent smooth approach looks qu quite the athletic bowler gets to the crease quite easily almost looks like there's a yard or two in there this is actually what i mentioned if we take ourselves back to our first step whereby this is the phase that the Wimbledon Islands Volcanoes have done very well in when they've gotten into what have been three, four, five, six, you know, into the middle orders, so to speak. Not yet, so yet into the middle order of the Ghana Harpy Eagles, but this is the phase that they've been able to capitalize on. And this is the reason why you're seeing them at the top of the table. And I mentioned the fact, if you think to that one game versus Trinidad and Tobago, you know, they struggled to break that opening partnership. This morning, they slightly struggled, been helped, obviously, by that false shot by Tate and Ryan Shandapal. An edge or no edge, you know, whether or not that discussion is still there with regards to Tejan Ryan Shandapal. Sorry, but with regards to Matthew Nandu, you know, this is the period that they've done well in. When they've seen, you know, the, the, the openers dismissed, they've been able to peg three, four, five, six back. And because of the pressure that they've been able to build, have been able to pick up, you know, I, I guess what you consider to be wickets and clusters across several of the teams. Yeah, they have. I think that's one of the reasons why they're leading this four-day championship so far, chasing what would be a first win in the West Indies four-day championship. Yeah, it came very close last season. In mm. fact, I, I remember drafting up my script, <laughs> which was in line with, you know, the Wimward Islands taking their first title, but it wasn't to be heartbreak for them. Yeah, it was. came also close yeah, to winning yeah. that maiden four-day championship. I remember they were in Trinidad playing and it was a case of on that last day just before what would have been T. I saw a couple heads sink on the field. That's when the news came that the title was out of their grasp. Hot pursuit by Larry Edward, but the ball wins the chase. Fantastic timing there from Anderson. Yeah, classy, classy stroke from Kevlan Anderson. Didn't overhit, uh, as you can see, that stride, big stride into the ball. The ball, his foot was very close to that delivery. Got that positive weight, that weight forward transferred into that delivery. And just blocked that down the ground for four lovely runs. So he's away. His first runs here this morning. He's on to four. But also, just to go back to that point of the hundreds being scored, we've also had, uh, in 2023, we had 20, yeah, 2023, we had 21 five wickets, wicket hauls after five rounds, Joe. And so far, in 2023, 2024, we have 18 five wicket hauls after four rounds. So I think the bowlers have w as well. have been very good and they've been testing the West Indian batters around the region but I think it's a combination of things uh, in terms of the the amount of hundreds being scored I think we're seeing uh, <coughs> first class cricket being played on better wickets now consistently especially this season yeah the wicket certainly was a conversation now we've had across several seasons of this tournament in fact had a couple conversations about the wickets as well last season you know, in, we're not just seeing rank turners on day one anymore. I think it's a concerted effort by the authorities. And the groundsmen around the region must, we must give them kudos for the, the pitches that have been prepared so far this right. season. It's, it's just aided in the exciting cricket that we've seen. Yeah, you certainly want batters to be able to show up and be confident any surfaces that they're playing on of course obviously naturally you know you will get that wear and tear you will get balls keeping low as you head into you know the day threes and the day fours but those are the expected but yeah definitely in terms of what we've seen on day one and day two of the services have looked good yep. mm. look good like that shot as well uh, from tevin imlat he's into a good straight at the moment collects his first boundary now the balance balance was 
the hallmark of that shot there. On the move slightly, but kept his head quite still. Watched it all the way onto that bat, timed quite sweetly. So those last two shots down the ground. One thing we've seen, both batters not tried to hit the ball too hard. Kept their shape quite nicely. Trusted their talent, trusted their eyes. Just punched it down the ground. Good start for both these batters here. And just to go back to the pitches as well, just good all around cricketing wickets. You know, something in it for the fast bowlers as well. If they can fight the find the right lines and lengths here. Seen just a few bounce, a few shape, you know, uh, a bit of shape through the air and a bit of movement off the pitch. Interesting, interesting point coming into the match though for me personally, Joe, is how does Gudekesh Moti go about bowling on this pitch? I've seen him now for two weeks here at the CCG. No! One of the leading spinners here in the West Indies. And he just seemed to have struggled to find the right pace in which to bowl here at the CCG. I'm happy that you mentioned the pace because I remember having a conversation with you and we were talking about, you know, I think he's just bowling a tad too quick on the surface last time around and that would have been in round uh, number four i mean of course he's still effective in terms of his ability to restrict run scoring of him and that in itself builds up pressure allows others to take wickets around him but yeah i don't think he really found the pace because when he started to slow things up you saw it grip a bit more for him he entered what we consider to be that push and pull phase so to speak the end of 22 overs it's 53 for two yeah good Moti. <coughs> I find coming into the to this match, it'll be interesting to see how he adjusts. You know, you expect your international players to adjust and analyze uh, match conditions quickly. And for two weeks now, he's just seemed to be, as you said, more in restrictive mode. He hasn't been the wicket-taking threat that we've grown accustomed to see. Yeah, Grant, he still did pick up a yeah, couple in that game. I think he got five in total across uh, both innings because yeah it's not to say he bowled bad no uh, and certainly not, not at, all. Uh, at all by any stretch of the imagination but yeah certainly could have utilized maybe a, a few more variations in pace uh, go to Kesh Modi, especially in that last round i think when he when he's at his best he gets the ball to really drop out of the sky quite kick quickly he's got that fast arm action as well nothing doesn't change not a lot changes you know, his changes are very subtle. Gudakesh Moti just seems mechanically at times. Just be going through something at the moment. There's a lot more side spin as opposed to the over spin that we've grown accustomed to see from him. He's hasn't really seemed to hone in on the end and in which he, he's most comfortable here as well. Keen on that one was Imlak. And I think, in fact, it should have been too, uh, given the work that Ryan John had to put in to get to that one. Having a conversation now, settling themselves. fair to be said that Darius Martin has come back well in this second spell here. He's been switched from the CIU road end to the commentary box end and he's just honed in quite nicely on a good line and length more often than not just outside that off stump with a bit of movement off the pitch mainly inwards does seem to have the ability to get that ball to just hold outside that off stump as well Ball. 
Yeah, just getting it a little wrong there. But yeah, certainly it has looked a little better here. Mm. And I mentioned, as you know, said a little earlier in terms of that length especially. But it, this is where, especially in this partnership now with Anderson and Imlac, you're starting to see these slight difference. So when the Seamers went a little fuller, to the likes of Nandu and Tej during Shandipal. They weren't necessarily put away. Yes, I remember Nandu getting a drive through the covers. Tej got a boundary as well. But that was one in, let's say, maybe 20 over pitch deliveries that you saw from the Seamers. Then here with this pair in terms of Anderson and Imlac, from the very time, you know, it's just slightly over pitched. You're seeing that intent to get onto the front foot, to press the ball either back down the ground or to press the ball through the covers. And that's kind of what you need to kind of just you know, remind bowlers occasionally because obviously when you just pat it back down the pitch, okay, it's a dot ball and you're able to continue building up that, that, that piece of pressure, especially in the earlier stages. And yeah, you can tell that maybe this pair are probably a bit more confident, more sure about their game. A Tej Chandapal in particular, quite a few full deliveries bowled to him. Maybe if he was in better form, feeling more confident at the time, he'd feel more confident to press onto that front foot, just as you said. Even when you look at the manner in which he was dismissed as well. Yeah, tentative. Yeah, had he been able to just get that stride going out a bit more to the ball, probably been in by far more control of that shot as well. It was reminiscent of probably just something you know, similar to what you know what we were discussing outside in terms of that practice where you're just looking to give short leg a bit of catching. Of course, it carried all the way towards mid and not certainly looking to... Um, I wouldn't, the grade is not the word I'm looking for, but to make a mockery, so to speak, of the type of shot that was played, just to kind of paint the picture of the fact that, yeah, had he really gotten in mm. that straight, it would have made a big difference, and that certainly is a confidence factor as well, I think, at this stage, because he's not really been around the runs thus far, has Tage and Ryan ball that has to be playing on his mind, so he's been occupying the crease, but he's not been getting the runs that go along with the occupation of the crease. Yeah, that's for sure, he's just... Oh, that's timed again sweetly. Didn't really lift the bat up in anger there from Kevlin Anderson. They're going to push for three. Imlak is quick. He'll get there comfortably. Good stroke. And just to go back to that in terms of that dismissal, though, the end of that Martin over. After 23, the Harpy Eagles are 59 for two. Tejan Ranshandapal lost his balance almost on that uh, delivery in which he was dismissed. Fell over to the offside. Struggled to access the ball. Ended up, as you said, giving a tame, tame catch to that short mid-wicket fielder. So just struggling a little bit with his head positioning as well as Tej. All these things you go through. The ups and downs of being an international cricketer. Especially with the added pressure of... You don't want to harp on about it, but... He is the son of Shivnarayan Shandapal. Absolute legend of West Indies cricket. It's just a few technical issues just creeping into the young man's game. And that's hit him. He's worn that one. Not quite sure what to do did Kevin Anderson. In the end, ended up doing nothing. Yeah, it was sharp from Springer. In fact, took him by surprise, to be honest. And that's the deceptive nature of Shamar Springer. He's been pitching up consistently, getting that ball to just shape away quite nicely, inviting the drive on this occasion. Starts with one back of a length. In no position to play that one was Kevlon Anderson. Vernon was showing me the uh, Leeward Island score, but we'll get to the Trinidad and Barbados Pride match in a second. All happening at the Queen's Park Oval in Port of Spain in that contest between Trinidad uh, Red Force and Barbados Pride. At the moment, the Red Force are 56 for 5, Joe. 56 for 5. They won the toss and elected to bat. So the Pride has roared back after what was a pretty heartbreaking defeat in their previous contest got oh so close to what would have been a remarkable win versus Guyana and that 56 for 5 what I've noticed is that Jason Holder has taken three wickets and Jason Holder has also opened the bowling as well and that's something that I think Barbados Pride fell down with when they played here 
versus Guyana. Jason Holden didn't come on probably until second, second change, change yeah. on day number one. A lot less effective with that ball. And we saw what he did when they got that first new ball after those 80 overs with up. You know, you saw that movement. You saw the fact that he, you know, posed that threat. Yeah, it's fair to say they got their tactics wrong. The Barbados Pride. That's a good delivery outside that off stump and well played as well from Kevlan Anderson. Maybe best served to just make sure that bat and glove is out the way. But calmly, calmly played. It's a good delivery that from Springer just on that off stump. A bit of bounce as well. And here's where he mentioned Mali, you know, every instance where they've overpitched, you've seen that intent to either rotate strike or to put the pressure back onto him. And I think you need that, especially in the longer format, because you saw, and I, I go back to the example with Tater, but you saw Ryan John get into a, a fantastic rhythm because of the fact that, you know, he's just allowing him to continuously bolt him. A few of those deliveries actually overpitched. And even if not looking to crash the ball to the boundary, still needed to show that intent to have that rotation of the strike. That's for sure. Always got to look to put the bowlers under pressure as well. Springer probably just a little disappointed with missing his mark there. Just over pitching slightly, but no real damage done. The end of that over. The Windward Islands actually the guy and a happy eagles are 60 for two. Probably going to be the last over before lunch. And it's going to be Ryan John. Mm, they've gone back to him, haven't they? It's probably been their chief wicket taker so far this season, Ryan John. Yeah, him and Shamar Springer. Springer yeah. 17 wickets apiece piece. for yes, them. That one, that wicket today, bringing Springer in line with level with his partner Ryan John. He's just slightly slingy, isn't he? Not the highest arm. Got, it's got quite a hustly, bustly approach to the wicket. Yeah, is that arm action, I think, that just allows that ball to get to you just a little quicker than you maybe expect, Ryan John. Maybe not quite as low as a Fidel Edwards, or not quite as slingy as a Fidel Edwards, but in a similar vein. <laughs> this one, he's just gotten to deliver that from a bit higher, though. Maybe that's something he's actually conscious of. Delivering from different heights. Yeah, if we were able to break it down a little better in terms of seeing delivery after delivery, but I think that when he comes just a touch higher, mm. it's a case of but he's just going to go that back of a length delivery. When he comes a little more wrong arm, so to speak, he's he he looking to go a bit fuller, get that ball to shape away, that's especially from the right handed batter. I think you're right. <laughs> Goes full there again and he's worked away sweetly from Anderson. This pair run very well between the wickets. Only come back for two. And as you said, just slightly offline there and made to pay once again. A yeah, line wrong on that particular occasion. The length, if he was to start there, probably. On that off stump, of course, he's has, he has the protection, but not just that. He's able to just draw it back slightly and induce what maybe that confident stride again. And that's, of course, you know, your ability to set up a batter. Feed them what they're looking for. Provide yourself the protection and adjust the length. Goes full again, honing in on those pads is John. Maybe just at times Kevlin Anderson has that tendency, maybe early in his innings as well, to just plant that front foot. Maybe, f and that forces him to play around the pads. Ryan John sensing that, going full here.
giving maximum effort every delivery is Ryan John. Six down now for Trinidad and Tobago Red Force versus the Barbados Pride. Jason Holder, four for 14. Over time. Over and time call. 25 overs bowl, 62 for two. And we are at lunch on day one, round number five. Uh, this is a encounter between the Ghana Harpy Eagles and the Windwards Volcanoes. Well, it's time to take a break here and fill our stomachs. And in 40 minutes or so, we'll be back with more round five action. his second list day game and he's raced to a 39 ball 50 we saw a really impressive 50 from a left-hander in the first game a young left-hander in Athenais who's already broken through to the West Indies side we've seen another one today I've got Johan Jeremiah alongside of me we're at beautiful college in Antigua and Barbuda getting ready for round number five of the West Indies first class championships Johan let's start on I guess this season for you second season correct <laughs> Yeah. In first class cricket. How would you say it's gone for you so far? Uh, so far, it's, you know, going pretty okay. You know, here and there it has its ups and downs and challenges. But with the game, it comes with challenges and ups and downs. I'm happy that you mentioned challenges because I think that is the question I want to touch on here now. What would you say have been some of the challenges that you've experienced now that you're playing at the first class level? Um, yeah, so so actually in the the, the the first, the list A cricket, you know, I opened the batting for CCC, obviously with the white ball, is a bit different to the red ball. You know that the red ball would t t um, t test your technique a bit more. So that that's one of the challenges, you know, that I had to face, you know, ensure that I'm more compact as a batsman coming into the first class, first class season. No problem. I know, obviously, I mentioned the fact that this is your second season, you know, here at this level. So take me now back to last season. What were some of the lessons that you learned and what do you enjoy most about your first season? Uh, well, last year, first season, I didn't play much games. You know, now that I have the opportunity to, to play more games, I was able to, to, to learn from some of the guys. Um, being in the camp, you know, I was one of the youngest players. So I was able to, you know, look, for, look on from the sidelines, make notes and see where I had to, to go and, you know, work on and to, to improve as a cricketer, to make it, to, to be successful at this level. No problem, but, all right, so I'm not sure if everybody can hear what's going on in the background, but we can hear a couple of guys singing. Who's the best singer down in that dressing room for you guys? Best singer? Good question. 
Yeah, I'll maybe say Ryan John because he's always singing. <laughs> <laughs> is he always singing or is he always singing good? Ah, I wish not to comment. <laughs> <laughs> but he's always singing. <laughs> Repeat dose, up and over the leg side, one bounce this time. He's going to have to change his line, Naeem Young, too straight. You mentioned the fact that, yeah, you're still young in this, and I want to take you back to even younger days for you. Yeah. When did cricket start for you? What got you started in cricket? Good momentum to carry on and get to execute properly. That's a nice shot. It crashes into the boundary for four. So actually, I started cricket at age seven. Mm. You know, um, that's something that I always wanted to do. Uh, but both of my parents are in education, so my dad are. My dad is very big on education, so he told me that I, I had. Although I want to play cricket, although you want to play cricket, you also, you know, have to further your studies. So after doing, you know, my uh, CXC subjects, I moved over to Barbados. I went to Cumbermere. I went to UE, so I did A levels, and I have a bachelor's degree in sports science. So um, I always had a passion for cricket. You know, as every I guess Caribbean child who wants to play cricket um, to play for the West Indies one day, and that's certainly my goal to represent West Indies. Um, I was very close at the under nineteen level because I was in the West Indies under nineteen camp for the twenty eighteen World Cup. Uh, but unfortunately, I didn't get into the final team. But my goal still stands, which is to represent the West Indies team at some point in time in my life. No problem. And for every young cricketer, of course, there are persons who, I guess, act as motivators for them along the way, whether or not it might be a family member, another cricketer, you know, somebody. So who does it have been some of your biggest motivators or motivations along this journey? Um, well, my family first. Uh, and... Um, I had this coach, Mr. Gavel Walker, who's been with me since seven years. Um, He's been my personal coach. You know, there are other coaches who also assisted me, you know, but he particularly, you know, been with me through, the, through that journey so far. And he's still here today alongside other coaches. All right, and I'll finally bring me towards back to the season where we start, you know. What are you hoping to take off for yourself? in this season, whether or not it be runs, whether or not be some form of improvement. What are you hoping to tick off in this year's first class season? Um, well, as a batsman, you know, you always want to do well with the bat. You know, I started off, I had a good list A, uh, Super 50 um, in October. And, you know, I was able to finish in the first 10 with runs with an average of 40, 41 over 41. Um, for first class, I'm I'm just looking to to continue that consistency. You know, I want to be more consistent as a batsman. I also look at my batting average. You know, also finish in the first. If I can finish in the first ten or even the first five runs, you know, that would be a goal that I would want to achieve. You know, I just want to play a consistent brand of cricket and even score big big runs. You know, um, I want to see if I can get at least my first first class hundred. You know this season so that's that's one of the goals that i i want to achieve you know so i'm always looking for ways to, to improve and to be a better cricketer and a better batsman but i want to be more consistent that's something that's you know the one of the top goals for myself the yep. person the task at hand which is you know to do well this season and we started off well we had a bad game uh last game but sometimes you need those games you know to to see where you're at so that you can you know improve in certain areas so um, I'm enjoying the the, 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 the the bonding of the players so far. I'm enjoying how the, 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 the hunger of the guys, you know, to, to do well this season. No problem. The sun getting a little hotter now when we first started. So, <laughs> that's a wrap. But, Johan, it's been a pleasure chatting you. And, you know, hopefully, hey, maybe in this game you could take off that 100. But all the best for the remainder of the season. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity as well. Oh! Stop gone. Straight across it. And wasn't quite sure where the ball was until it was too late. Today I've grabbed Kimal Savory. Kimal, how are you doing today? I'm great. I'm great, brother. All right, good. So I don't want to start on the cricket, and this is because of your teammates now. So I grabbed Kevlon and I said, Kevlon, what was the latest song that Kimal has sung? Oh, on the feeling. Tell me there was something to do with cartoons. What cartoon song you wrote? They're singing Kimo. 
Um, basically, I was just um listening to Kevlon, hmm. but I'm not a cartoon guy, being honest. Um, but for now, I just forgot it. <laughs> he said, it was like, na na na, some na 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 na. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Basically, it was just troubling. Um, like just trying to take away some concentration from Jason because mm. apparently we we thought he was concentrating very well. So just trying to get some jokes in between so you could like you know do some sort of concentration. No problem. So I I can wanna I guess understand like what feeling do you get when you get out there? Because obviously like, your teammates view you as the very fun like person that injects all of the energy onto the field what feeling do you get walking out onto a cricket field um well we all know that as a wiki keeper you know you have to keep the guys going mm. so uh, my job is pretty easy you know i'm i'm a i'm a guy that with energy so as long that i go there and i give the guys that energy you know they they connect with it and we get it on going yeah, so last season, last first class season would have been your first year, you know, at that level. And I was watching back an interview that you did just before you would have, you know, been picked and gotten into the squad. You say, no, the hard work now begins for you. What did you learn during your first class season last year? Um, well, basically, last year was my fourth year, as you said. Um, the cricket is, is very intense, different from club cricket. Um, you don't really get that much bad balls at this level. So I think the main thing at this level is patience. As long as you could have a the crease for a longer period and with picking up your singles and so on, you get much easier. Yeah, you were able to do that last season as well because you also got was your first first class hundred as well. Take me back to that match versus Trinidad, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, what was that what was that feeling out there like for you? Um well the feeling was, was great. Um, and it, it always stay close to my heart because it's my first first class um century. Um, it was a pretty good wicket to bat on, being honest. And um, I think that I capitalized on on that, especially because once it's a good batting wicket and you make good use of it, it will get runs. Yeah. Now take me back to even younger days for you. Let's see. Hmm. Let's go to thirteen year old Savory. Um, yeah. yeah well, playing club cricket at DCC, hmm. which um my coach. Gavinet is from. Um, I was just playing normal club cricket back home, and well, I never expect that playing for a class cricket for me. I was just like playing cricket for fun and for the love of the game. But as years goes by, I get picked for the under seventeen when I went to Tobago. I did pretty well there, and from there going on to under nineteen, it was even better. Yeah, so the fact that you said that you didn't think that you would be here at this level, what do you think like, your 13-year-old self would tell you no? Um, just keep believing in yourself and anything is possible. Alrighty, so let's bring it forward now to this year, your second first class season. How do you say that it's gone for you so far? I think one half century in there. How, how has it gone for you from a personal perspective? Um, not the way I wanted to, but having said that, I still have um, a few games left, but this one for this round coming up against Winward. Um, I want to make the best of this opportunity against Winward coming up, so I don't have to play um, any catch-up cricket in the last two rounds. So I think that this game against Winward will be key for me. Yeah, and then finally, obviously, you're here with the Ghana Harpy Eagles. You know, what is it like just playing cricket with those, you know, those boys? One, two, three, Eagles! Uh, I enjoy it every every moment of spending time with the guys. You know, I enjoy it. They, they, we're, we're like family, man. We're like family, and even off the field is more fun. You know, like for example, we had a few a day, few days rest, so I just went on the beach, do some jet skiing with Kevin Imlock, and it was great, man. I actually, happened to see you guys on the beach. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no problem, yeah, but yeah. yeah. Round number five coming up, as you mentioned, you want to do well in that one. So all the best for that and yeah, all the best you. for me in the season. Yeah, thank you very much. That's a wrap. Fifteen for you.
Johan Jeremiah. Just his second list day game, and he's raced to a 39 ball 50. We saw a really impressive 50 from a left hander in the first game, a young left hander in Athenais who's already broken through to the West Indies side. We've seen another one today. I've got Johan Jeremiah alongside of me. We're at beautiful college in Antigua and Barbuda, getting ready for round number five of the West Indies first class championships. Johan, let's start on, I guess, this season for you, second season, correct? <laughs> Yeah. In first class cricket. How would you say it's gone for you so far? Uh, so far, it's, you know, going pretty okay. You know, here and there it has its ups and downs and challenges. But with the game, it comes with challenges and ups and downs. I'm happy that you mentioned challenges because I think that is the question I want to touch on here now. What would you say have been some of the challenges that you've experienced now that you're playing at the first class level? Um, yeah, so so actually in the the, the the first, the list A cricket, you know, I opened the batting for CCC, obviously with the white ball, is a bit different to the red ball. You know that the red ball would t t um, t test your technique a bit more. So that that's one of the challenges, you know, that I had to face, you know, ensure that I'm more compact as a batsman coming into the first class, first class season. No problem. I know, obviously, I mentioned the fact that this is your second season, you know, here at this level. So take me now back to last season. What were some of the lessons that you learned and what do you enjoy most about your first season? Uh, well, last year, first season, I didn't play much games. You know, now that I have the opportunity to, to play more games, I was able to, to, to learn from some of the guys. Um, being in the camp, you know, I was one of the youngest players. So I was able to, you know, look, for, look on from the sidelines, make notes and see where I had to, to go and, you know, work on and to, to improve as a cricketer, to make it, to, to be successful at this level. No problem, but, all right, so I'm not sure if everybody can hear what's going on in the background, but we can hear a couple of guys singing. Who's the best singer down in that dressing room for you guys? Best singer? Good question. Maybe I'll maybe say Ryan John, because he's always singing. <laughs> <laughs> is he always singing, or is he always singing good? Ah, uh, I wish not to comment. <laughs> <laughs> but he's always singing. Repeat dose. Up and over the leg side, one bounce this time. He's going to have to change his line, Naeem Young, too straight. You mentioned the fact that, yeah, you're still young in this, and I want to take you back to even younger days for you. Yeah. When did cricket start for you? What got you started in cricket? Good momentum to carry on and get to execute properly. That's a nice shot. It crashes into the boundary for four. So actually, I started cricket at age seven. Mm. You know, um, as something that I always wanted to do, uh, but both of my parents are in education, so my dad are. My dad is very big on education, so he told me that I, I had. Although I want to play cricket, although you want to play cricket, you also, you know, have to further your studies. So after doing, you know, my uh, CXC subjects, I moved over to Barbados. I went to Cumbermere, I went to UE, so I did A levels, and I have a bachelor's degree in sports science. So. Um, I always had a passion for cricket, you know, as every, I guess, Caribbean child who wants to play cricket, um, to play for the West Indies one day, and that's certainly my goal to represent West Indies. Um, I was very close at the under-19 level because I was in the West Indies under-19 camp for the 2018 World Cup. Uh, but unfortunately, I didn't get into the final team, but my goal still stands, which is to represent the West Indies team at, at some point in time in my life. No problem. And for every young cricketer, of course, there are persons who, I guess, act as motivators for them along the way, whether or not it might be a family member, another cricketer, you know, somebody. So who does it have been some of your biggest motivators or motivations along this journey? Um, well, my family first. Uh, and um, I had this coach, Mr. Gavel Walker, who has been with me since seven years. Um, He's been my personal coach. You know, there are other coaches who also assisted me. You know, but he particularly, you know, been with me through, the, through that journey so far. And he's still here today alongside other coaches. All right, and I'll finally bring me towards back to the season where we started, you know. What are you hoping to tick off for yourself in this season, whether or not it be runs, whether or not it be some form of improvement? What are you hoping to tick off in this year's first class season? Um, well, as a batsman, you know, you always want to do well with the bat. You know, I started off, I had a good list A 
uh, Super 50 um, in October. And, you know, I was able to finish in the first 10 runs with an average of 40, 41 over 41. Um, for first class, I'm, I'm just looking to, to continue that consistency. You know, I want to be more consistent as a batsman. I also look at my batting average, you know, also finish in the first, if I can finish in the first 10 or even the first five runs, you know, that would be a goal that I would want to achieve. You know, I just want to play a consistent brand of cricket and even score big, big runs, you know. Um, I want to see if I can get at least my first first class 100 you know, this season. So that's that's one of the goals that I, I want to achieve, you know. So I'm always looking for ways to, to improve and to be a better cricketer and a better batsman. But I want to be more consistent. That's something that's, you know, the one of the top goals for myself. Yep. But on the task at hand, which is, you know, to do well this season. And we started off well. We had a bad game uh, last game. But sometimes you need those games, you know, to, to see where you're at so that you can, you know, improve in certain areas. So... Um, I'm enjoying the the, 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 the the bonding of the players so far. I'm enjoying how the the, 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 the the hunger of the guys, you know, to, to do well this season. The problem the sun getting a little hotter now when we first started, so <laughs> that's a wrap. But Johan, it's been a pleasure chatting you and you know, hopefully, hey, maybe in this game you could take off that hundred, but all the best for the remainder of the season. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity as well.
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to sunny Coolidge in beautiful Antigua and Barbuda. We're getting ready for the post-lunch second session, the second session of day number one, round number five of this encounter between Ghana Harpy Eagles and the Windward Islands Volcanoes. Well, in terms of how the toss went this morning, if you missed it, well, it fell in favor of the Ghana Harpy Eagles, and they opted to bat, and they've reached 62 for two. We get to fall the two openers in Shandapal and Nandu. I've got Sean Devers alongside me. Sean, what did you make of the morning session? Well, I figured that the Guyanese would have wanted to bat long, build a solid foundation, but both batters, especially Chandrapal, got um, sucked in and got bogged down. Um, Nandu batted well. Um, as we saw that he didn't edge the ball, but that's cricket. Those things happen. One day for you, one day for me. Um, but it was a, a fair session. The windwards, um, I think, a little in front because they've picked up both openers. But Anderson has looked very good since he's come out. Um, Imlak has looked to play his shots. So this is going to be a, an important session here. If Ghana can build a big partnership, if the windwards can get a a couple of wickets, a few wickets, then they will be back in the game. Well, a very important session indeed coming up this second session. Shamar Springer is going to get things started with the ball from that CIU end. He will be bowling to Kevlon Anderson. Starts full. And with a dot, Anderson and Imlak getting things started after lunch for the Harpy Eagles. Looked quite positive in what was that period coming towards lunch. Of course, still quite a long ways away from what we milestones that they'll be hoping for in this one but you've had a chance to see Tevin across what will be what we saw this morning and also in the last game that they played here I'll get back to it after this oh, yeah. what do you enjoy I guess or what do you like when it comes to Tevin Imlach well uh, Tevin Imlach is a, a, a nice stroke player sweet on the eyes and also the same can be said for Anderson. So these are the two batters, um, Kevin Anderson and uh, Imlak. They are two um, free scorers. That's what I most like about them. Not reckless, but positive. Got 55 and nine. When he played versus Barbados, did Imlak 24 and 29 versus the Academy. Those two games played right here at Coolidge. So the third game that Ghana Harpy Eagles are playing here would almost consider it now to be the home ground for them. Of course, no matches being played in Guyana at the moment. Actually, Imlak took over the captaincy from um, Anderson, who who is there with him right now. And he didn't uh, we could keep in the first match because he's had um, some injury to his right finger. And he's not going to keep again today because of that injury. Bit of additional bunks yeah, on that occasion. Yeah, cut back also. Hit him high up on the tie. Seems to be a bit more in this surface. We're currently playing about four surfaces to the left of where the game versus Barbados Pride played, and it seems to just have a bit more life yeah. in this surface. Because I think the grass wasn't as fluffy as um, in the previous match. The curator just moved off a little bit more. Well, I made an over to get things started after lunch. It's 62 for two.
I, I heard you and Mali discussing um, the, the centuries and the five wicket halls. And this has been a very competitive tournament, especially the last round where we saw big scores, matches going into the fourth day, trilling finishes. And um, of course, the leading run scorer, Mikel Louis. He's got 360 runs before this match began. Um, he's just 23. And the Centurions, I'll tell you who are the 14 Centurions after this delivery. First runs after lunch off the bat of Anderson. Well, the 14 Centurions in no particular order. Sinclair, he's got the highest score, 165 not out. Walton, Kavim Hodge, Craig Braffitt, Wickham, Carter, Mikel Louis, Ambris, Kyron Powell, Gooley, Webster, Jonathan Drakes, and Jason Mohammed. In fact, when Jason Mohammed got 100, that was the only day possible in the first match um, when three days were washed out, Trinidad and Tobago versus Ghana. That was the first round. <coughs> oh my, that was a prodigious movement away from the right-hander and got bounced to good carry also to the keeper. That is a crack. Yeah. I'll tell you that beyond a shadow <laughs> of a doubt. Certainly, yeah, just hitting on the pitch. And then you see Imlat just having a look at it. And this is where you might just see a level of concern. Thankfully, though, in terms of where it is in the surface, it doesn't appear to be anywhere that should truly cause any concerns for a batter. Just in the middle, dead middle of the surface. But yeah, hitting a the crack there and getting quite a bit of movement. And that certainly would play in the mind of Imlat. Hopefully not too much, especially going back to the fact of where um, on the pitch it is. It's not necessarily in an area that should cause too much concern for a right-handed batter. Should it have been a lot fuller, you know, in a case whereby it's a, a delivery that you might be thinking to straight out on to the front foot. That is where you probably will get the considerations in terms of concern for batters. So definitely something that we will monitor as we go throughout the course of this round number five encounter. There he is again going down to have a tap at it. <coughs> Settles in quite nicely uh, behind it. There's a lot of time here now for him. Like I mentioned, the fact he's got just gotten the one half century uh, so far in the tournament. That first innings, a very important first innings. And a, it was a very important partnership as well with the same Kevlon Anderson who's there with him. He played the anchor role in that partnership. Well, Anderson played uh, a bit more fluently. And that shows that he could adjust because he's usually a free-flowing batter. Very elegant, very classy. As is Anderson. Almost like a Carl Hooper. These two. He's my favorite batsman, Carl Hooper. And when he cover drives, I would pay to come back in the ground because my money's all worth. Let's that one go by. Just one running it over. It's 63 for two. Operating in similar fashion to how he did just before lunch, Shamar Springer. 
This is not a good length area just outside of the off stump. Two slips. And what you might consider to be a second gully employed, given how wide he is. There for that slashing drive outside of the off stump. Thickish outside edge. In his ninth over. One for 24 so far. It's been a tidy spell. Edge found. Yeah. Left or right hander. He played with soft hands though, and that's what made it um, bounce before the slip. High up on the back uh, as well. Taking all the energy a little bit before it got to the skipper Athenes at second slip. Honing in on those pads, Springer. He's really looking quite good. As I mentioned, the fact he was into a good spell before lunch and has come out and continued that. And that's what you need as well, just to keep that pressure on. I mentioned the fact that this is the phase of the game that the Windward Islands Volcanoes have done extremely well in, in terms of their ability after removing those openers to keep things relatively quiet for batters 3, 4, 5, you know, get into that middle order. And he's bowling with some lively pace and he's got... Lateral movement both ways. Good stop. Well, successive maidens for Shamar Springer. It remains 63 for two. Despite Ghana having back-to-back -back wins, they're still at the same position they were when they... Fourth run started, sixth. Windwards just ahead of Leewards. Their win and Leewards loss. Meant that the points gap was narrow between the two top teams. Winwards had a good chance of winning their first ever title. Good away movement there as Ryan John starts. Another over. His tent, none for ten. Very frugal spell though. Just around that area, uh, we saw the ball just zip away. I made a little bit of height too. 14 centuries, 18 five wicket halls. How would you judge this tournament in terms of the batting and the bowling? We'll get back to that after this delivery. Sorry. 
a bit wayward on that occasion. I'll reserve judgment and I'll explain why. And uh, I don't really like to speak on innings that I've not been able to see for myself. I mean, naturally, yes, you are happy with the fact that there are batters out there standing up and putting runs on the board. You're happy with the fact that teams are standing up and putting runs on the board. But given the fact that I personally have not been able to view, um, I would say, even half of those innings, uh, I will reserve judgment in terms of, I, I would say, the quality or standard given that I'm unaware of, let's say, the chances that I might have gone down in a couple of those innings and all that kind of stuff. I like to take into perspective when I'm making an assessment. But certainly from, I, I would say, maybe a selector's standpoint, and naturally they would have spent a, just a bit more time or had the ability to spend a bit more time watching the innings, would be happy with the fact that we're seeing these types of numbers at this stage of the tournament. But what I'm even more happy about is the fact that in comparison now with last season, we just had the five rounds. So this would have been the final round of the tournament. These, tour these players now have a chance to play around six and around seven. And yes, you're going to still say that, you know, it is still relatively short in terms of a first class season. But it, it has gotten longer and it's provided a longer stretch for the players. What I would also like to see. Just beating that outside edge. But what I would also like to see is the continuity as well. So we've gotten to the stage whereby we are playing seven rounds. I would also like us to get to the stage whereby we're removing some of the space in between the rounds as well. And of course, I know from a logistics standpoint and a practicality standpoint, that Cricket West Indies has their reasoning behind why we have those gaps in the season. But in having conversations with players and having conversations with the coaches, they're saying, hey, we're building up momentum. You're seeing players get into rhythm, but then, hey, you're going to have to take a break, and the intensity is simply not the same when you head back home. Again, a bit wider wide. there. Yeah. Yeah, but that brings us to the end of 29 overs. It's 63 for two, and certainly this is no blame or anything like that with regards to cricket wrestling, because once again, I do not have an understanding of all that goes into play when it comes to structuring a tournament like this when it comes to the travel elements you know all these different things that have to come into play when we're hosting a tournament like this but at some stage i would love if we can get back to that scenario by week in or week out we're seeing these players on the part because i think that is the best way that we can actually assess them because once again you have a player who's going to come and maybe get into strike get into rhythm in rounds one and two gets a big hundred and then because of that break because of the lack in intensity Wrapped on the pad. Might have been heading down the leg side. Let's see the replay. In fact, height is what umpire Basarat is signaling there on that particular occasion. Yeah, we are seeing quite a bit more bounce off of the surface on this occasion, though. This one pitching just outside that off stump and hitting just above that knee roll. And that's maybe where the question of umpire Basarat is coming in in terms of the possibility of maybe it just going over the top of what might be that middle and leg leg stump yeah well uh, some of the questions from fans also um is that utilize the entire weekend because saturday and especially sunday um less fans have to do, do less work that's a lovely shot short and wide and put away nice square cut there from anderson Yeah, missing the length on this occasion. Line also just a bit wide. And capitalizing, waiting for that moment. Anderson, first boundary after lunch for them. So yeah. you would Yeah, so you would start Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And you probably would get more people. But I don't think that whichever day you start, grounds are no longer like in the past. You, they, they, they don't fall up. Unless it's twenty twenty cricket. Yeah, of course, naturally, you would want to have more spectators in the ground and, you know, all these different considerations. And hence why I, I like to reserve judgment because I am not in a position of knowing everything. So, for example, a quick thought that might come to my head might be a case of maybe with regards to cost of travel. So, naturally, yes, you're going to say that. 
you're looking at a scenario where you play up until the Sunday. But based on travel arrangements, travel costs, Monday might be uh, by far a more expensive day for travel. And maybe that is something that's taken in to the consideration in terms of having to ship the teams around, etc. So, like, hence why I, cause I like to reserve judgment without knowing all of the facts. And like I said, I, I'm not going to get too deep into what needs to change and what isn't right. Cause it's just a case of, you know, hoping some stage in the future, you know, that we're seeing certain things happening. Springer's been on a good length, good line. Two deliveries left, barring a wide or a no ball. In his 10th over, one for 28 so far. Current partnership between these two, 25. First wicket partnership against Barbados, yielded a half century stand. Today, they fell 40. And then Nando was quickly dismissed two runs later. Going after that one, sharp and rising. Brings us to the end of the over in which there were four runs. It's 67 for two. Good afternoon to you in Grenada. Good afternoon to Devon Smith. He is the only batter to have scored two centuries in the same match and done it twice. And he's the last batter to do it before Miguel Lewis scored those 200s against Guyana. So good afternoon to you, Devon, if you're listening. Good afternoon to Junior Murray. bit of a misfield by Springer allows them to get the single that was another flowing drive well timed so the first batter to have scored two centuries in a single match would have been Roy Fredericks from Guyana when he scored a 127 and 115 at border. In that match, Ghana had their highest score, 641 for five. There were two other batters who scored centuries in that game. <coughs> Basil Butcher and Joe Solomon. And then Joey Kuru in 1970 repeated the feat. Stuart Williams from the five. Right. The exaggerated movement. Certainly have to tell yourself that. Some cracks are just around outside the off stump of the right-handed batter. And that, the, the second will fuller than the first one. And it just brings somebody, maybe Larry Edward, into the conversation. I wonder at what stage of this innings he might bowl. Not just from a turn perspective, but an angle perspective. We're seeing Ryan John hit the cracks, go away from the right-handed batter, Larry Edward, bowling left arm. Around the wicket, on that angle, one could easily hit and slide onto the pads, beating the inside edge of the bat. Presents a different conversation, which also then brings the likes of Pramon and Moti into the conversation as well, and whether or not they might enjoy the surface just a bit more than the one that they played on versus Barbados Pride. Again, the ball squeezing off the outer half of the bat. He was looking to drive straight, and it peeled off the outer half and went down towards extra cover. The over is completed. 68 for two. 31 over is gone. Yes, 
We talk about the Guyana bowling. Um, there have been four centuries scored against Guyana so far this season. Jason Mohammed, when the match was washed out for the last three days, he was unbeaten on exactly 100. And there was only one day play, Trinidad were 214 in that game. And um, then Louis, a double both innings and then so 400 being scored against Guyana in this tournament Braffitt scoring over no, Drake's, on that occasion. Drake's scoring the other one Dominic Jonathan Drake's So in almost every match, apart from when Ghana played the um, West Indies Academy, there have been 100 scored. Tate by Tevin Walker. He's really enjoyed his time playing with his franchise. Had a fantastic season in 2023. It was a very important piece to their puzzle. Continues to do just that here in 2024. Short, too short. And he'll be warned. One short ball in the over. Talking about fast bowling, um, I want to say um, my condolences to former Guyana fast bowler Ray Joseph. Played in the 80s and early 90s. His mom, his dad, died in Guyana. And the funeral will be on Saturday. So he came back for the reunion when Ghana first won the double in 1983. There was a big reunion there. And uh, Clive Lloyd was the captain. That one gets through uh, the gloves of Tevin Walker. Just keeps a bit low and runs away for four buys. Just yeah, dying in front, just in front of him. Of him. So movement away off the cracks from one end. So again, condolences to Ray Joseph and his family. Former Guyana fast bowler from Burbies. I think Belladrome. The funeral will be here on Saturday. So those who played with him and knew him. That ball again kicked. Hit the splice of the bat. In the end, well controlled though. By Imlak. 74 for the loss of two. Be Darius Martin now. Replacing Ryan John. So it's been 32 overs and we've yet to see spin introduced. 10 overs. 1 for 28. Darius Martin. Yeah, 
Seamer certainly have bowled well for the Windward Islands thus far. Put in quite a bit of work. And at this stage, I figured maybe you might see the introduction, like I mentioned, of somebody like Larry Edward, especially given the fact that two right-handed batters are at the crease. Probably seeing something out there, Athenaeus, and persisting with his seamers. Had a good start to this season, the Windwards. Again, well, this could be close. Direct hit, and he's gone. Oh, that would have been a disaster for Guyana. Had that hit. Clean pick up and throw. Oh, in fact, uh, yeah, my eyes well have in. well deceived me. Would have been well in. Yeah. Looked a lot closer. Command Emilius doing the fielding. Uh, sharp mid wicket. So the win words four matches, three wins. They lost to Trinidad in their last match. 67.4 points. The Leewards. Similar record, four matches, three wins, one loss, 64.2 points, so 3.2 points separate the two top teams. Jamaica, Barbados, come in that order, then Guyana, then West Indies Cricket Academy, and CCC in the seller position, and not a single, so this has been a Good over for a guy in terms of rotating the strike. Don't want the bowler to bowl to one batsman. And that's what the openers didn't do too well. Rotate the strike. Chandra Paul faced a lot of balls in successive delivery, in successive overs. Lovely shot, just stroked it away. Kept his shape, just caressed it. Didn't get a run, but that's a lovely shot. Easy on the eye. Well, that is gone. Straight and dead. And Martin gets the breakthrough after lunch. Yeah, bang on target. A little inward movement. And uh, struck plumb in front. Yeah, the length was good from Martin on that occasion. Full. And cannoning into the pads of the captain, Imlak. He has to depart. And that's the third wicket dung for Ghana. It's 77 for three. So welcome back to the Coolidge Cricket Ground. The Windward Islands striking early. Darius Martin trapping the Ghana Happy Eagles captain Tevin Imla, who fell over and played around his pads. Got an in-docker and was a judge leg before. As I say good afternoon to my colleague, Mali Richards. Good afternoon, Mali. 77 for three, 33 overs bowl. Ghana Happy Eagles in a spot of trouble. Yeah, they are. In a bit of bother here. Good sustained fast bowling from the Windward Islands here on day one. 
You think of young Martin, he's bowled his 11 overs in three spells, Vern. Started from the CIU road, it was switched to the media center just before lunch. And now he's come back after lunch again, just following Ryan John. And he's made an impact for his team with his two wickets. Shamar Springer to continue. Clipped away. And just every now and again, Kevin Anderson tends to look like he's losing his concentration. Playing around his pads somewhat. Well, I think the Windward Islands have actually targeted uh, that line straight to Kevlon Anderson. Before they this think, they think he possibly just presses a little bit, 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 a bit of an LBW candidate. Yeah, I think maybe there was a close one with Shamar Springer and Anderson a couple of overs ago. Mm. It's maybe. important that he continues to look to play straight up into that V, pre present that full face of the bat as much as possible. There's no Raymond Reefer here today to get into his mind, mm. so I'd hope that he would take that into consideration. We'll come back to Shamar Springer before this game, Mali would have bowled some 79 overs, 13 maidens, 245 runs with 12 wickets. So he's really put his hand up along with Ryan John, and they have been the, the main tormentors along with Kenneth Demba, um, who has bowled some 67 overs, 7 maidens, 152 with 8 wickets. We haven't seen him yet. He's got a 5 for 63, so good options. Here is Anderson driving down the ground, a little suicide. Larry Edwards coming across there, but Good, well worked, judge single. So Anderson just getting off this off strike. Now brings Kevin Sinclair. I think it's a good move to maybe bring in Sinclair at this time. So if we look at the Windward Islands bowling attack, Mali, um, Springer has not got five wickets so far, a fiver for the season. Um, Ryan John has got five for 43, and so too is Kenneth Demba. But Springer looks like he's the, the, the workhorse um, of this team. Again, on driving, here is Kevin Sinclair. Yeah, as you said, 4 for 44, his best. It's bowled, bowled what, some 103.3 overs coming into this match in comparison to Ryan John, who would have bowled 113. So pretty similar in terms of the workloads. And the results, what, 17 wickets apiece. Especially with what we would consider one of their, their, their standout performers over the last few seasons, a Preston McSween not being in the setup at this point in time. That one bounced a lot. One thing what I like about Shamar Springer is that he's mixing up his lengths. I would just like to see a Darius Martin ball across seam and really hit the deck. He's got the height on this track. You've got to be able to make sure you hit the deck and hit the errors consistently. I think what's clear here is that the Windward Islands have worked out how to bowl on the CCG pitch. And that's the fast bowlers in particular. You think back to the Barbados Pride and the guy in our encounter here last week. Barbados Pride almost wasted that new ball. Suicide shot there from Kevin Sinclair. That early in your innings, you want to be looking to punch the ball up in front of you. He survives. He remains a north, and the score is 78 for three. Guyana in a spot of trouble. They've lost Nando, Shandapal, and their captain, Imla. Yeah, it's fair to say the Barbados Pride got their tactics slightly wrong in the previous encounter here. Maybe persisted with that short line bowling for too long. Jaya McAllister, in particular, just continued to hammer the ball in halfway down. And then by time, uh, a Jason Holder was called into the attack. A, a mistake, Second change. Yeah. The damage was almost already yeah, no, no, done. The ball was soft. Right, yes, yes. One that was corrected. Yes. Umpire Yeah, a little by play there with Sonny Lambris and Umpire <laughs> Reefer. It's very loud, is he? Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. Martin not completing his action there. He's a big, tall guy. He's got a hit in the Legend series. And one of the things that really impressed me about Tino's best is was his level of fitness and his pace at this time of his career. Still bowling quick. Yeah, it's the one thing that stood out about Tino best. Maybe you wouldn't say he was uh, a fast bowler blessed with guile or uh, 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 an extraordinary amount of skill, per se. 
But one thing he would do is run in, give his full effort, and look to bowl as quick as possible. And he recognized just how fit he needed to be in which to do so. And it's, it's great to see that that's carried on uh, over the years since his retirement. He's 42 years of age, Mali. And when you look at Filler's record, you know, he would really, just about around about 5 feet 8 inches. Um, if we were to do an analysis of, of Tino. And he's still quite a fiery character. Oh, he is, man. Even he's off the field, you know. He's <laughs> his personality. You, yeah, know, and you, you, you just want to, you just feel like you have to be around him. I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> yeah? yeah. You don't want to be around Tino. No, no, I'm not saying like you <laughs> have to be around him, right? I think he's in a quiet taste. He makes he makes you laugh, man. Yeah, he yeah, yeah, makes you yeah, laugh. Yeah, Played yeah. some 25 test matches, 57 wickets, a best of six for 71. But my main, what I like about Tino is his work ethic. He came to a defense force sports program, Mali, in Barbados. It was a situation where Barbados defense force they've got an organized program where they identify youths both boys and girls mainly boys and tino has been a success story of that sporting program where you you can play sports but they take you up and they work on your fitness and tino has demonstrated that almost all of his life oh and that's through the gap that vacant third slip area there's a gully in that position but he didn't even move it flew past him Chance goes a begging. Martin finding the edge. But wonder if he was something. <laughs> I'm not sure what it was. I wonder if he was maybe saying to John, maybe we should have had a third slip. Um, but the horse has bolted already. Especially for Sinclair. You want to put some pressure on him. They're now going to. No, they They've really made use of this new bar, haven't they? They, they have. The Windward Islanders. More often than not, they put the bars in good areas just on or about that off stump. Want to see him bowl that cross scheme, bowl that heavy length. Right on the money. Darius Martin. It's a big, tall guy. He's about maybe 6'4". I feel that his high release would be very important with a firm wrist. Umpire Reefer is now saying to him, be careful, you're getting up close to, you're getting very, very, very close to the danger area. And it wasn't that long ago where Kevin Sinclair would have walked in for the Guyana Harpy Eagles in what, number, at number eight, number nine, even at times. The improvement he's shown in such a short space of time. This one's hammered with authority. Kevin Sinclair is definitely a man in form. That was a nothing delivery. Mali didn't do anything there. He just sat up. And again, Martin just losing his focus there. He got a ball a fuller length. No, it's no effort in trying to bowl a short ball. You've got to be consistent in bowling a fuller length into that area. 87 for 3. 35 overs bowled in the process. But when we look around, both Springer and, Mar and Martin have had some problems. Mar Martin has bowled some three no balls and Shamar Springer has bowled one no ball. And... In that same over, Reefer was talking to Martin about, you know, getting close, be careful. I think, I think Martin would have probably bowled the majority of those no balls from the CIU. He bowled two from that and he yeah, bowled one, one from one this from end. here. <coughs> Shamar Springer, the workhorse, he's in, he bongs away. It's just slightly downhill from the CIU road. At times a bowler can, if he's not really too cognizant of his pace in his approach to the crease... You can just get there a bit too quickly. Can overcompensate in your run-up yep. as well, too. It just tends or forces you to overstride. Zaid Basarat, Empire from Trinidad and Tobago. Wait. as the big, tall Springer, who is a tall man, goes past him. They may be about the same height. Pushing it. Can't score up to mid-off. And the reason why I mentioned Mali... Tino best is that we got to find a way to have a fast bowling camp around the West Indies. We've got to we gotta begin to identify young talents and get a fast bowling camp going. you got people like Eldine Baptist, you got Tino Bess, you got Courtney Walsh, you have 
Kurt Lee Ambrose. You have all these guys who are here with all this knowledge. They're coaching. We've got to get them into a system. We need a factory. He's driving down the ground. Don't think it will go all the way. Just hold up. Almost like a golf chip there from Anderson. He's now looking at his bat. And maybe saying, oh, I should have really connected a lot better with that shot. Yeah, he hit a bit high up on the bat. The ball was already on the way up when Anderson attempted that stroke. Wasn't a bad offer. Slightly full in length. There was still a bit of moisture in this pitch here, um, Vernon, as well. That's almost like a two-pace track. Mm. And that's why the lengths are going to be very important in terms of how you ball here. Here's an on-drive. It's gone all the way for four, past Larry Edwards. Beautiful balance there from Kevin Anderson. He was in the arc. It was between middle and leg. And he was comfortable in that area. Springer maybe trying to get him to fall over. Um, but sort of drifted away. And he was able to just keep his balance, keep his composure. Leading with his head and his shoulders. Didn't try to overhit it. But timed it beautifully for four. Very, very strong area that for Kevlin Anderson. How many times we've seen that shot over the past couple of seasons or so here at yeah. the CCG. Absolutely loves it in that area. That ball was actually on about middle and off. But that head position again, as we see him set up there, that head just over that middle stump, always looking to go forward into the deliveries. That forward defensive was a very good illustration of that. Something I think that Tate Chandler Paul can take a book, a copy book from, and looking at, at Anderson, even Nando. Very still as well. Yeah. Leads with his head and his shoulders. You got to get there, you got to keep peeping because the ball is going to be coming down. Very, very important that you keep your composure. Even though Nandu probably would find himself a little unlucky to be given out. Oh, oh there's a bit of glove on that one. There was a sound. Came off the tie pad. Tie pad. Yeah, luckily enough for that one. Didn't bounce as much as Anderson was looking for, no, really. Didn't. Shamar Springer was half interested in that one. I'm not sure. It was outside. It was a bit of a sound. Yeah. yeah. On so that one. He's checking his bat, so I'm wondering if he's having a problem with that. Maybe I might have to send to Raviet Waro in New York and get him an E4 bat so he can get himself organized. But this maybe might be his favorite bat because you know, he's not giving it up. Sometimes the handles just start to creak a little bit as well. Right, and he starts to play with your mind. Yes, the illusion <laughs> at times of an edge. <laughs> Here is Sinclair whipping that into the square leg area. And you'll get two runs quite easily. So, Darius Martin, he's got to be back on the money. Maybe pull Spring out of the attack. And wonder if they ever thought about trying John from that end, Mali. Yeah, all these options are available to the Windward Islands. John seems to be very comfortable in bowling from this the uh, media center end. Might just get the ball to dart around more. We know that at this on this on this end well the seamers get wickets from both ends it tends so to bounce a bit more yeah, actually yeah. have a little bit more inconsistent bounce from this end yeah. but early with that harder new ball it tends to just bounce a bit more from this media center i was looking just a while ago the way that martin delivered that livery and as maybe i have to just in my mind recap of ian allen let me just look at it again. A little bit of Ricky Christopher as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. In the gather and release. release. But 28 years old now. Just playing, what, his seventh first class match? Yeah. Or sixth first class match? He's got to hit the deck. Cross him. Good afternoon, Rommel Currency. Too short. And lucky to get away with that one there from Kevin Sinclair. His eyes lit up, but he didn't really bounce as he would have liked it. Interesting that you mentioned the name Rommel Currency. Yeah, he's now the CEO of the Windward Islands Cricket mm. Board. One of the stalwarts of Windward Islands cricket oh. over the years. It's a beautiful player. It's good to see him still giving back to the game that has helped him, like so many other players. 
the good thing about it is that you have to love this game. A lot of people sometimes, Mali, they pretend they love cricket. You've got to be committed to this game. Just to touch back on Sinclair, he's come into this match. Over 300 runs. Over 300 runs. He's actually third in the run scoring list. 238. Yeah, with a best of 165 not out. The average of 67.6. But so he got outfoxed in the game against Barbados, twice by Warricon. So I'm sure Alex Atenez maybe might have that in the back of his mind to be able to bring Larry Edwards on mm. at some point in time. Martin, short, and cracked away. Lucky to get away with that one. And I thought just a while ago that Sinclair really, his right foot didn't get deep enough into the crease because you get a short ball like that, you got to be Luther Kelly style, breaking down backward point. He was more moving like leg side of the ball, just walking across. Uh, didn't get the full extension of his, his arms. He just got on top of it, really. He hit it quite well, but some good, sharp feeling there in the gully region. The windwards feel that they're in with a chance to pick up at least a wicket or two before T. 95 for three. They've really put the pressure on this batting team. Driven down the ground. Big save by Ryan John. He's put his body on the line. Over. In fact, I think Martin would have done quite a fair bit in saving a boundary there. Getting the boot down to that one. End of the over though. 37 gone. The Happy Eagles are 95 for three. Anderson is on 25. Machunanda scored 25. And Kevin Sinclair is already raced to 10 so far. So somebody's listening to Smiley. It's going to be Ryan John. He has no <laughs> other choice. Yeah, I like, I like the, 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 the tactics being shown here by the Windward Islands. Not afraid to really mix it up, switch their bowlers around. They're making use, as much use of this hard new ball as possible. Well, it's 37 overs old now. Ninety-five for three. Ryan John switch from the CIA road end starts to Anderson. Ooh, this is going to be interesting. I think he's going to get the ball talk from that end, Mali. Yeah, and he's been in the business area more often than not as Ryan John. He's probably been the most threatening of the fast bowlers on show. Not to say the other two haven't been threatening, but Ryan John. He's just asked some different questions of the batters so far here on day one. Trinidad and Tobago, Mali 112 for 7. Django is on 57, not out. And the man himself, Jason Holder, 4 for 26. Cumberbatch, 2 for 38. And Shem Holder, who didn't play here, 1 for 8. He's in the conversation. Some 36.4 overs bold. So Trinidad and Tobago Red Force being put under pressure by the West Indies. Former test captain, the Barbados Pride. And over at the Sir Frank Warrell Memorial Ground, the West Indies Academy, they are tottering now. They're 119 for five. Colin Boyne Tuckett is not out on 12. And Joshua James not out on north. So they would need a partnership there. We could take us there. Otley three for five. Hope he doesn't get 99 in this game as well. We go over to Sabina Park in Jamaica. Let you know that the Second place team, the Leeward Islands. They are pressing the advantage and putting the Jamaica Scorpions under a bit of a pressure. And as we speak, that game is 64 for 5. 64 for 5. Jamaica Scorpions, 64 for 5. And not out batsman is Morris. And uh, let's go to the bowling figures. Louis 3 for 19. Archibald 2 for 6. And when we're talking about Jeremiah Louis, so far before this game... As we break for a while, dot ball again by Ryan John. Before this game, 114.3 overs, 21 maidens, 371 runs with 23 wickets. So he's certainly making a claim. And to complement that, he's got 194 runs. Yeah, good all-round performances from the young man. He's really improved, especially in the wicket take, not only the wicket taking area, but just in his overall game. Bowling with the new ball, coming back with the older ball as well. He's really worked out his plans. He seems really tactically astute.
to every battle that he faces. He's got his plan, and more often than not, he's executing. He just seems like a bowler at the absolute top of his game, Vern. Think about it. I think he's the only young bowler in the Caribbean, Mali, that swings the ball both ways. And he's very, very, very dangerous, and that, that's what makes him so surprising. And he's an excellent fielder as well. So I think it's an investment. He's very competitive as well. Oh, he is. He is. competitive fire every time he hits the ground. But he also holds up the lower half of the Leeward Islands batting. He might not make many hundreds, a time. but many he a he's, time. He's, he's been there. He's batted. He's saved the Leeward yes, Islands. many a time he has. Jeremiah Louis. Ooh, Once again. Didn't carry out a half of the bat from Ryan John. Yeah, I think the slips can afford to. Athens and company can step up some more based on Ryan John's pace on this track. Over completed, made an over. Every now and again, though, he just produces something with a little extra. Yeah, he gets a jaffa. Mm. Nice. Sort of, you know, in, in English conditions, you, you know what's happening. You'll be there, he's pegging away, pegging away, pegging away, and then you get one that just kick on you, hit your glove. Yeah, and he seems to be a very clever bowler indeed. Very conscious of his, the heights in which he's delivering the ball from. More often than not, it's quite slingy. Has a very slingy action that aids in that out swing, especially to the right-handed batters. Yes. But then sometimes he just finishes a bit more over the top. Then he just gets the ball to bounce a little more. Gets a bit closer to the stumps as well. Martin to continue into his 14th over now. I think probably just an over too much here. Maybe just starting to flag physically. As we said, he's bowled his 13.1 now in three spells. So he's been rotated. I think, I think the captain wants one more from him. He wants to get a breakthrough. Mm. He would like to. He'd like to pick off one of these. Boy, would he love that breakthrough! Yeah, I think he wants to. He, they're, they're perking up Martin to get Anderson or Sinclair, and they feel that he can produce that wicket-taking delivery. Can he? Ooh, that cut back, Mali. Yeah, big, big inward movement there off the pitch. Big C movement from. Martin seems to be his stock delivery, but he's also got that ability at times to get that ball to just hold outside that off stump. That's why it's important for him to bowl that cross C Mali and bowl that hard length and land it just anywhere in the four meter, six meter area, making Anderson either think because Anderson likes to come on his front foot, so you really want to have him thinking. Yeah, he has to be accurate. Has to be accurate here, as you said, just on or about that off stump. That one's shot, shot wide. Cut Lovely away. shot. Anything with wit. Anderson is going to pounce on it. The 100 up for the guy in the Happy Eagles. Just look at the rehearsal. He's batting maybe about off stump, Mali. Anything offline. And he just spanked that. Down to the backward point boundary for four. Yeah, a little trigger back and across from Kevlon Anderson. As he said, got on top of that one. Spanked it to that point boundary for four. So he moves to 30 now. Once again, another good start from the young man. <laughs> He's got a start here. He's got to go on from a Harpy Eagles perspective. A lot of cricket taking place, Mali, right around the region. Good batting conditions still. Yeah. No, 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 no. Where he's going. And I don't think he was backing up Kevin Sinclair. He was caught ball watching there. In fact, the bat was in his right hand. <laughs> I'm not sure that was a single, though. That would well, And Anderson is saying it was a single because he's saying, I played it to the left of John. Got there quite quickly as it, well. It did. 100 and up for Ghana Happy Eagles, 100 for three. And to be run out in a situation such as this, that would be a real unforced error, wouldn't it? And then it would be almost like comical. Yeah, similar to Anandu and Shander Paul last week. Martin, two for 45 from his 14. Ooh. That one, just holding his own line, going through to the keeper. Trying to get an update in terms of what's happening with the CG Women's T20 Blaze Women's Tournament in St. Kitts. The points table is, is out. Jamaica on top with nine points. The Leeward Islands don't, with five. So too is Trinidad and Tobago with five points. Guyana with four. Barbados with four. And the Windward Islands in seller position. Leeward Islands actually picking up their first win. Against Barbados. Yes. Um, winning by some 
12 runs over Barbados. Defended 16 of the final over. Jazara Claxton, 17-year-old. Mm. Bang on the money. And to be fair, Barbados looks a totally different proposition, especially without a Haley Matthews or a Leandro yeah, Dutton in well, that lineup. Well, that's that's always an issue. Second round matches results Mali. As the over comes to an end here, water break is being taken. 100 for three, 39 overs bowl, 11 extras. Jamaica, they won by five wickets over Guyana. Trinidad and Tobago won by nine wickets over the Leeward Islands women. And Barbados won by 19 runs over the Windward Islands. That's in second round. In the first round, Jamaica defeated the Windward Islands by seven wickets. Ghana defeated Trinidad and Tobago by seven wickets. And the Leeward Islands, they won over Barbados by some 12 runs. So we will take a, a snap water break here. Give Jason a chance to just walk his legs around. And Mali Richards and Vernon Springer will continue. 39 overs bowl, 100 for three. Anderson, 30. Kevin Sinclair is on 10 not out. And that's the latest score here the coolest cricket ground, the home of Cricket West Indies. Welcome back to the Coolidge Cricket Ground, the home of Cricket West Indies. And just to give you an idea, Ghana Happy Eagles are 100 for three of 39 overs. And just after the drinks break, getting ourselves organized. Remember the ICC Men's T20 World Cup right here in the Uni West Indies and the United States of America. The biggest ever, the ninth edition of the World Cup. Out of this world, Springs. Out of this world. 55 matches, 20 teams, and the world boss, two-time World Cup winning champion, is moving around with the trophy. 
Yeah, he missed his run there, did Ryan John. Yeah, he did. You could tell. Just started to chip up. Didn't abort, though. Decided to run through. Lost his rhythm completely on that one. The World Tour will be continuing Nassau County International Stadium. So the World Boss and Ali Khan will be moving around. They'll end up in Brazil. A couple of places, at least four continents that the trophy will be seen around. And you know the final is going to be at the Kensington Oval in Barbados, June 29, 2024. Bang on target. Good delivery. Good single. Yeah, good cricket all around. And that's what we was talking about uh, when, uh, Mali, when we were on with Chanda Paul and Nando Batin, especially early in his rotation of the strike. I just think that Chanda Paul just occupies the crease, just face balls, just face. You've got to get off strike. You've got to get onto the non strikers and then see what is going on. Yeah, Sean harps on about that rotation of strike, especially between that opening pair of Nando and Chanda Paul. Definitely an area in which they can look to improve. Low risk scoring, not necessarily just waiting for rank bad balls in which to score. Anderson clipping that coming around is Darius Martin. And and you see, yeah. the point that you were talking about, Mali. Mm. If you look at the style of play of the Australians, they almost turn a test match into a 50 over contest where they're looking to run singles, they turn ones into twos. West Indians just operate that we're playing a four the game and so we, we, we're just batting rather than looking to score. The name of the game in a cricket game is to get runs. Well, well I think what we would have seen from that last round of cricket, though, is an improvement in that, especially in fourth innings chases, over 300. 102 for three. And you would have to give some credit to the Leeward Islands Hurricanes for chasing down that that. That score and also Barbados, even yes, though they're for getting shot. as close as they did. They, yes, at one point in that partnership between Warwick and, and uh, Jason Holder, they actually threatened to take the game away from the Harpy Eagles if it wasn't for Niall Smith producing those two absolute jaffers to remove Holder. Well, first Holder, oh, first Holder, yeah, I think that was a big wicket, huge wicket. He was batting absolutely serenely. He really looked in good touch. 70, 78. 78. Got two in the end. Sinclair. He wants to continue his good form. Back and across. The, you could see intent and urgency. That's what we didn't see in the Nandu Shandapal partnership. Just putting some pressure on the Windward Island feelers. Not only that, positive footwork. Even in defense, you can tell Kevin Sinclair, defense is the second option. It's not yes. the first option. Yes. And I think that's the difference we're seeing in the partnerships. Maybe just seeing players who are at different stages of confidence. Nandu and Shandapal not really having the runs or scoring the runs that their talent suggests just yet. It's been a torrid time for the batters, with the exception of someone like Sinclair and Pomal getting a 90. Anderson, driven. Oh! Did he get a hand to that full length dive to his left? Kevin Hodge. And he created the opportunity. Jason will pick that one up. Did he go through? Here is it. And that's, that's another opportunity created by Ryan John once again. Wider the crease. Not quite drivable, but drew Kevin Sinclair into the shot. At least he went hard in the end, got four runs. Yeah. Goes to 15. And the score at the end of 40. 106 for three. Anderson, 31. But once Sinclair's at the crease, Mali, he's going to be positive. And he's going to run hard. He's going to turn one into two. And he's, he's going to look to score. Yeah, he's been averaging almost 70 so far in this 2023-2024 edition of the West Indies 4-Day Championship. But just to touch quickly on the global game, you were speaking about the developments, especially with the ICC T20 World Cup coming up. I saw in the news the other day, in Japan, cricket is actually growing at a faster rate than baseball is in Japan. And that really stood out to me, Vern. 
considering baseball is the national game in Japan. You ever been following what's happening in Brazil with the women's game? No, I haven't. It's crazy over enlighten there. Enlighten us, enlighten us. It's crazy over there, Mali. What's happening? They have a lot of action taking place in the women's game in Brazil. An abundance of women have been playing the game. It's, it's really taking off in a very big way from the school level right up even into the, com into the community level. Uh, they've been really pumping some money in, in, in the America's able, and maybe that's one of the areas why the trophy is also going to Brazil. Larry Edwards? Well, we've seen the Thailand women's team as well. Mm, well, oh, Mali, they look, they, they're on a roll when it comes mm. to feeling. And yeah. <laughs> okay. So enthusiastic. <laughs> yeah, man, they put their bodies on the line. <laughs> we they've, saw them. They've really made an impact on the women's game globally as well. The thing about those, those, those countries, Mali, is that they're going to see a way out. Um, it's just like when you're in the Caribbean and you see a Haiti football team playing at all levels. Those guys are looking to be able to get out of poverty. So when you see them, they've got so many persons. So to represent Haiti, um, you're looking to get an opportunity to, you know, to better your, your, your life, your career. It's just like football is coming from Africa. Sometimes we take things for granted around here. Definitely. Larry Edwards. Mm, left arm orthodox. First time we've seen spin. Yeah. No Demba yet. Demba's out. Yes, Demba, yeah, Demba got... Yeah. Is he injured? Yeah, got five got injured. Hence, Larry yeah, Edwards yeah, in. Yeah. Well, with his orthodox lefties. That's a big miss yeah, for, for the windwards. I think Karen... Oh, a little round arm, what do you think? A little bit. Not the natural... The loop. At least to start with, just looking to hit the right lines and lengths here, it's Larry Edward. 29 years of age. I think we've been spoiled, Mali, when you, ha when you have the likes of uh, Willett, Warrington, yeah. Phillip and company. You know, we're always trying to draw comparisons when it comes to left arm spinners. Virgil Newton comes to mind. Virgil Brown, a whole lot of Scotland. There's so many left arm spinners um, that came out of the Caribbean. 41 over the ball, 107 for three. This is only who was the best of those left arm spinners that you well, would I, th say? I, th I think Willett was El Camino. In, a, in a class by himself. I said that with as out of the, this man automatically in those days, Mali. He used to put a penny down and just land the ball on that penny. But you don't understand. And if almost most of the folks that you talk to told you that you know Willett was just exceptional. It's just unfortunate that we don't have as much footage as you know, the University of South Africa does. Yeah, but, but we I don't mean, have. Yeah, uh, of all El Camino's, <laughs> all El Camino's um, performances. I, I, I learned that from the late Tim Hector. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> but I'd love to see some of that, to be honest. Because you hear about him. I played, grew up uh, with Tonito, son of El Camino. You played with Akito as well, too, And right? Akito. Yeah. And he still got a daughter, Sonelda. Yep. Somebody's going off. Well, I wonder what happened. And those boys are having a good laugh about it. I think he was hit. <laughs> in, in his box? Yes. <laughs> While fielding. Ambrose and Athenes are having a... That's, that's not a laughing having matter, a guys. Chuckle. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is? Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> 107 for three. Here comes John. To and Back and across is Anderson. And John would love a wicket in this circumstance. Yeah, he's oh, been. Yes. He's been absolutely brilliant in his 13.1. Just conceded 18 runs. And you can tell the guy in the Harpy Eagles are slightly weary of a Ryan John. Maybe almost just looking to see him off more often than not. He's hit. Tapping that bat very hard. Sinclair is coming through our microphones. Back and just turns it into the square area. Gets a single. John is holding his head. And he's saying he was just offline there. Very, very clever bowler. He's Ryan John. Not express pace, but as we said, slingy. Has that ability to swing the new ball. Last time, Mali, that Larry Edwards played first class cricket for the Windward Islands was in 2023 versus Barbados. Yeah. So this is his first game for the season. So 
Been on the bench, as they would say, a bench warmer. 108 for three. John, 74. He's really trying. He's a big, strong guy. I think the Sherman Lewis has gone off the ball somewhat. He was somebody who was almost close to getting into a it's very close. Uh, uh, the West Indies team. You know, every now and again, Mali, the Windward Islands have always produced some some fast bowlers. Somebody's always come to Max Sween is somebody that comes to mind straight away. Coach Kenroy Peters. Peters, yeah. Left arm. 108 for three. He's huh? back and cracking that big save, save from four, Kevin yeah. Hodge. Definitely save four runs. And this is important to note. Kevin Hodge, Kevin Sinclair, uh, young Athenes, all a part of that team that drew that series in Australia. Australia. Yes. And it was clear to see from the inclusion of Sinclair, Hodge, Athenes, these young players. The attitude that the they brought. The attitude was. And the mindset. Yep. Completely different to what we had seen in the not too yeah. distant past. And unknown to that, Mali, the unknown, the deliverer, Joseph, came to and spoiled the whole party. There was an, an enthusiasm, a passion. Even though we went down in that first uh, test, there was a lot of positives to take from that. Really just had one bad day of cricket. And despite, you know, folks in the media who had written off the team before they went to Australia said, you know, well, where are you going with nine debutants and... You know, it's, it's somebody's got to start somewhere, Mali. There was a difference in the attitude, and it was clear as day. The fielding really improved. The catching as well oh was yeah. tip-top. The slip catching. You think of Justin Graves in oh the I slip. He took some Kevin excellent Kevin Sinclair runs. as well. Yeah. They brought, a, they brought a different energy. And I think Shamar Joseph, he really was the deliverer. Driving to cover for four. Yeah, this time, just a bit too full from Ryan John. Every now and again, he overcompensates by trying something. He has to keep it consistent. That one was just a bit floaty, actually. He didn't hit the deck. You can tell he's really disappointed with himself with that one. Come, boys. Come on, man. Doesn't like to see himself driven, especially through the covers in that manner. But end of that over. Still yet to pick up a wicket is John. But that economy rate of under two. 1.6 to be exact. So I don't think they can feel let down, Mali. 42 overs ball, 204 dot balls. We know the Islands can consider themselves and feel that they are still large and in control. They've put, really put the pressure up. They might not have got five wickets, might not have got six wickets. But when you win the toss and you 112 for three, the game is still wide open. And Especially in, in, in the first innings, they're scoring at 2.67, so it's still moderate. I'm just looking at John, since he's been switched to the CIU road end, he just seems to have lost his rhythm slightly. As he said, just slightly downhill. So you predicting maybe that he's going to maybe have to call back on Springer sooner rather than later? This one's slog swept into that cold corner region from kevlan anderson so he's looking to press on larry edward here for that powerful runs to the onside from the young man and i think that was a more or less just flight of delivery there was no variations nothing at all in that he just rolled his hand over and kevin sinclair knowing that no one is out into the mid wicket area just dispatched it quite easily i think that was anderson actually sorry anderson yeah. Yes, Anderson, who goes to 37. Similar in stature. Yeah, very similar looking players, especially at we, the crease. We don't want to say AI model. <laughs> Shots, they play shot, they shot slightly differently, but just looking at them there. What I like about Anderson when he's playing spin Malian, because he's grown up in Guyana, is that he stays low to the ball. Doesn't go at the ball, lets the ball come to him. And nice soft hands. Yeah, he tends to favor the short sleeve, whereas Sinclair loves the long sleeve. When you're coming out of Ghana, the place is always <laughs> hot. You certainly, yeah. 
I'm glad that we are in the box here and not out in the cricket field because it's been pretty hot in Antigua and Barbuda the last couple of days. It has been today in particular. It's quite a sweltering day out there. Easy single to Anderson, down to Medon. Score in the meantime rolls over to 117 for three. Anderson goes to 38. And it's important that Larry Edward plays that holding role here, buys a bit of time for his seam bowlers. In terms of being economical, allowing his bowlers that time to rest, to come back for another burst a little later on, the end of that. Edward over, five runs coming from it. 43 overs gone. The Harpy Eagles are 117 for three. Well, I think Alex Atenez will also certainly have to start thinking about either getting Kevin Hodge in the conversation as well on this track here, just to give the seamers a little chance because they have bowled a lot of overs and you're going to need them after tea. Is that an option which I think that he's going to have to think about? Maybe. Seriously? Yeah, this attack may be just lacking a match winning spinner, but I do like the balance of the attack, to be fair. The three fast bowlers. Athens might have to bowl something, Mali. Definitely. We've seen him bowl in international cricket, haven't we? Yeah. So he maybe might have to fancy himself to come and roll his arm over scenario of his game if I was him I'd definitely be looking to improve on a la, a la Glenn Phillips yeah you see Glenn Phillips developing more and more into an all-rounder genuine right. all-rounder he's a wicket keeper batsman before but yeah. now with the off spinners it's an excellent feeler too yes he's just took a, a blinder a backward point is he f is he a four-dimensional cricketer? I think he is I think he is we the first time I saw Glenn Phillips was in the Caribbean Premier League. He yep. lit up the Caribbean Premier League. Yep. He was just this big, stocky guy, sort of looked like a David Boone. For the Jamaica Tallowers. Yes, he just came and just smacked the ball. You know, it was just like rootless. I actually wonder if we'll see him here for the Antigua Falcons as this one's just lapped away by Kevlon Anderson. So, a rear shot here from Anderson. He came right across. Always in control of it. It was, it was no danger because it was outside the line of the off stump. And he just paddled it nicely away for four. He goes to 42 and the score goes up to 121 for three. That's his second boundary in three deliveries. Not happy with that. Uh, I think he got cramped for room and he thought he could have got deep into his crease and maybe just punched that down the ground. He was staying leg side of the ball. Apologies for the language. <laughs> but you gotta, you've got to understand. He's going for the heave and he's hit it over mid-wicket for six. It was in his area and he decided that he was going to go for it. Quick, fast. And just used the pace, cut down on one knee, on his right knee. And hoisted it over mid-wicket for six. Yeah, he's picking length really quickly here. It's Kevlon Anderson. Anything just slightly outside that off stump, giving him the range in which to free his arms. He's looking to take them downtown. 50-run partnership of 64 balls. He's 48, Anderson. His Hot. first six. Yeah. Comes quietly forward. And folks, if you don't know, Anderson loves the Coolidge Cricket Ground. Loves it. Would love to take this pitch everywhere around the world with him 200s 250s in first class cricket all coming here at the ccg Come on. he's just two away from a third yeah he lost his shape there he was getting anxious again he was coming leg side of the ball over completed kevin hodge first over cost some 10 runs in the process is joel manning and and Sean around? Yeah, they're here. Well, they're here. <laughs> so we'll make some way for them. 44 overs board, 127 for three. And these two stalwarts will take us through until tea. Middle, Pinky. Middle and leg.
Larry Edward has been replaced. It's going to be Daryl Cyrus. This leg breaks. So a few spin options for the windwards. Backing on to that one. Won't find its way to the boundary, but they do get two. Got a five wicket haul when they played versus the combined campuses and colleges. Ceres. Eleven wickets in total so far for the season. So it'll be more than handy for the Windwards, and they'll be hoping that he can pick up a wicket here as we head towards what will be T on day number one. Hello everyone. Leg spin, maybe. He's bowled him. Oh my. That's the breakthrough that they were looking for, and it's come by the hand of Daryl Cyrus. Yeah, short ball. Look to open up, and then play across the line. Look for a vicious pull, and missed. That's a bad shot, though. Playing across the line, first over from the leg spinner. And he's gone. 130 for four. It was also, it's also interesting to note is the height of that delivery. Obviously, not expecting Cyrus to get much bunks on that one, but looking at where he went to pull it, yeah, certainly in terms of the height of that one and how much it bounced. Yeah, a lot lower probably than he was expecting on that particular occasion. Got himself into the angle though, and that's the fourth wicket down now for the Harpy Eagles. They yeah, hit the middle of the leg stump. It stayed, it stayed low. And there you hear it through the stump mics again there. It stayed low. It's certainly yeah, not hitting quite high on that stump at all. Expected a bit more bunks on that occasion. And it's brought about his undoing. Well, it's brought Kimal Savory now to the crease. That's middle stuck. What is my time over? Come on, you pop. Come on, you pop. Want to come? Come on, you guys. Watch this pop with your men. One left. One delivery to contend with here. For Savory. And he survives it. Yeah, that A successful be. over uh, for uh, the Windwards. It's 130 for four. So it's going to be a change of ends for Edward. Operating from this media center end, no. He's going to head up towards that CIU road end here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground. We'll see if he makes an adjustment in the pace at which he's bowling. Started quite flat and fast has Larry Edward. And you would see that more so that very holding limited over style of bowling at the moment from him. No, it's an all spin attack. Fast bowlers did their job and did it fairly well, well more than fairly well. So all spin, 
we expect uh, all spin on tilty unless something happens. Persist with being relatively flat at the moment, Eli Edward. You don't see many left arm Chinaman googly bowlers in regional cricket these days. Seems to be a dying art in the Caribbean. Fast and quick and flat. Spin a bounce it, Lars. Spin a bounce it, Lars. Hey. Any fast for the rough, boy. I will limit the wicket. Spin a bounce, Lars. Spin a bounce, Lars. Come on, use the rough, man. Use it. Just ask him to use that rough. That's out there at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give that one just a bit more. Here, Larry Edward, but still on the flatter side of uh, things and still too full easy drive the important thing is that he got a single to bring the left hander into strike so he'll have yeah. to change his line and also his length because Savory is a shorter batter than Sinclair Sinclair a right hander Savory a left hander the four runs in the over. It's 134 for four. Easy single towards that long arm region. We'll be hoping uh, that he can spend some time out there, Savory. He had a chance to do a feature with him yesterday, and he spoke about the fact that it's not necessarily gone the way he's hoped for just yet this season. And he's hoping not to have to play catch up in the last two rounds in terms of putting runs on the board for himself. So looking at this match as being one that he could put his name on and put his hand up for his team and a great time opportune time for him to do that is now with Gan in some bit of trouble no, no. they've lost four wickets compact left hander good wicket keeper also this is yes. slashed away out towards the boundary for four. Too wide, but this is the hardest art form to bowl. Leg spin, wrist spin. Yeah, fantastic shot by Sinclair. Wasn't necessarily as wide as we probably thought on the first impression. But opened the face quite nicely. Got it to run behind square and collects a boundary for himself. Good 
top ball to finish it. It's 139 for four. Conversation at the moment between Larry Edward, and the captain Athenes, and Sunil Ambris. First game of the season that we're seeing Larry Edward in operation. Final game of last season. He was part of the reason why they were able to defeat the Barbados Pride. Picked up nine wickets in that one, Larry Edward. He's here because to my mind of that injury to Kenneth Denver who actually picked up five in the match before this so a fantastic opportunity to get back into the whites for Edward here you ought to take those opportunity with both hands lots of left arm spinners around the region there are three for the Ghana team one didn't even play a match and was sent back after two rungs. That's Anthony Adams. Looking to play a cut. He favours that cut and the sweep. Savory. Opting to bowl around the wicket to Savory. And it's quite an open field behind square on the offside. Hoping that he settles into a nice rhythm, that delivery. You saw that. It's a bit more flight on that one. Pace slightly slower as well. And there we go. This is the Larry Edward that picked up nine in that game versus Barbados. So it took him a little while, I guess, to find his strap, so to speak. It's just a weather. He, he persists with that. But certainly a much better pace the last two deliveries. Well, this one's lapped around the corner. Probably won't have the legs to get to the boundary. They get two as Ryan John does the work. He's put some hard yards into those legs already for the day, Ryan John. Wouldn't want to be doing too much running now. Yeah, leg buys. Um, pull that one down a little bit. After the previous delivery was nice, deflated. It's just all about finding that correct pace, you would say, for the surface. Started, as, as I said, you know, probably in that limited overs fashion, did Larry Edward. Uh, this is where his team would want him to be more often than not. A couple more questions will be asked, especially of the technique of Savory. Yeah, when you usually flight the ball, it dips at the end, giving the batsman the illusion that it's further towards him. So much better over for Edward. It's 141 for four. Hot day for the umpires. That's the reefer. And uh, Basarat from Trinidad and Tobago. Reefer, of course, from the island of Barbados. Cyrus bowling right arm leg spin and has produced a lot of quality leg spinners. Devendra Bishu, one of only four Guyanese bowlers to take a hundred test wickets. And before him, Mahindra Nagamutu, who played five test matches in five different continents. A good hand on that one by Athenes. Yeah, good stop. Good afternoon to Mahindra Nagamutu, known by his friends as Yanko, and his brother Vishal Nagamutu. They're both in the United States. 
Again looking to cut balls that are too close to him. Get him himself into problems. Hitting the under edge there. We right. got a single. Yeah, I think the question here is regards to just the, the, the lack of bounce, so to speak, that Cyrus is getting out of the surface. And it, it raises that question with regards to playing shots off the back, but especially shots now that you're looking to get behind square as well. Might, based on what we've seen so far, pose somewhat of a challenge. Oh, this one's hit him full. And it's hit him dead in front, says Empire Reefer. Wicket number five. And both batters, Anderson and Slavery, being dismissed playing horizontal bat shots. Yeah, this one on this occasion. Just a bit too full to sweep uh, for Savory. Pitching on leg stump. And judged to go straight on to crash in to leg as well. So 142 for five. Kimo Savory. He's got to take that long walk back to the pavilion. Definitely not a ball that you want to be sweeping there, Savory. He will have a chance to look back on that a little later tonight and tell himself probably should have been looking towards maybe long on, get himself a single. Especially when you saw the, the way that Anderson got bowled. Well, the new batter is Ronaldo Ali Mohamed. More a batting all rounder than anything else. Got a 50 in this tournament already, but then tapered off. Also got a five wicket haul. Gets off the mark. He immediately plays that one out towards the man sweeping on the cover boundary. And I mentioned that this is what the Windwards have done well. As long as they've been able to break that opening partnership, they've found their way through the batting lineups of teams. Raul Lewis has been maybe the most accomplished of the Windward Islands leg spinners. Well, another successful over for Cyrus comes to an end. It's 144 for five. So lots of cricket coming up, regional cricket and then the ICC World Cup from June 1 to 29th, final on the 29th in Barbados at the Kensington Oval. Ghana will host one of the final, the semi-finals, and also Trinidad and Tobago will host the other. Edwards getting some bunks there, and again too close to cut. Sinclair in the end in control as it goes down towards the man at short point. Nice flight on that occasion brings Sinclair forward. Yeah, I go back to the fact that 
you saw signs of it in the over before this in terms of the rhythm that he was selling into. Looks a lot looks a lot more comfortable now. There's his approach, releasing the ball nicely. The pace is fantastic from him. Again, a cross-batted shot. And just in this phase here, they're really building that pressure. The windwards. And he goes between the umpire and the stumps. You, you don't see that in modern day cricket. Well, work for Springer. Out on the boundary. And they're coming back for two. Good run in in the end. Had the width there. And just slapped it out towards the <coughs> sweeper position. So Sinclair. 52 balls he's faced now. It's been a long time in the middle. It's gone to 32. Second leading run scorer coming into this round. You just need something at the moment. Sinclair. Opts to hand it to umpire Les Weaver. Opting to save time. You know, 13 minutes or so towards what will be T on day number one. A dot ball to finish the over. It's 146 for five. IPL 2024 to start in another two days. Goes up to May 26. That's Ghana's Independence Day. Just placing a bit more pressure on the moment, at the moment, on Ali Mohammed. Cover was on the boundary, but then they asked him to come in. Looking to ensure. Just can't get that easy single into the offside. You would say it's been fantastic captaincy uh, thus far. By Athenes. And it's good bowling also from Cyrus. Because usually, a leg like spinner bowls, a couple of bad balls, full tosses, long hops. He's been bang on target, most of his deliveries. And he also looks like he's got a good googly. Definitely not the effort. That they were hoping for. Sunil Ambris just guilty of allowing him to get that single. The pressure was building up with those three deliveries. Now he's bowling to St. Clair and the field just slightly spreads a bit, covering our heads back onto the boundary. Also, one of the top three batters in terms of aggregate in this tournament, Ambris. Nicely played, straight bat. Yeah, just slightly flatter though, you would probably say, to St. Clair. Just getting that ball pushed through. Of course, you know, St. Clair is very strong, especially going down the ground and towards that cover area. That's pulled down, Lovely. long hop. And given the full treatment, down towards the mid-wicket boundary for four. Nice, crisp pull there from St. Clair. But that was a bad ball, asked to be hit, and St. Clair obliged. The 150 comes up with that shot. 
and the over is completed 151 for five. Edwards continues from the airport end. <coughs> Start stop situation, but in the end, they go through for what was eventually an easy single. We feel that cover had to do a little sliding and again good rotation in the strike. Gano won the toss and elected to bat. They lost Chandra Paul for 13, soft dismissal. Nandu caught behind of Martin, well, but seemed to miss the edge. He made 25, Imlak 11, and Anderson, who tried to pull a short ball and was bold, that kept a bit low, hit halfway up the stumps. He made 48, and the last wicket to go down was Savory, LBW to Cyrus. So he's picked up two wickets so far. Martin has picked up two. And Springer has the other one. Just short of his third 50, in addition to his two centuries. Anderson. Just one run coming in that over. It's 152 for five. Good afternoon once again, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, across the 83,000 square miles of beautiful Guyana. And of course, if you're listening in the Windward Islands, in St. Lucia, Dominica, Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, or wherever else you're watching and listening to the CWI, YouTube, live streaming, good afternoon to you. He's really been threatening, as uh, Daryl Cyrus. Yeah, had nice bunks there. Just five minutes left before that tea break. We'll be hunting for one more. And most red spinners would get more purchase from the track and bunks too. But this one is too much full, too, too full. And hiked away over long on for six by Sinclair. In fact, Ali Mohammed. Oh, Al yes, Ali Mohammed. Facing at the moment. Yeah, just going a bit too full on that occasion, Cyrus. But certainly should not be disappointed with that one. Especially given the fact that Ali Mohammed is still willing to play shots as we head towards that tea break a good connection though uh, for Ali Mohammed Mohammed plays for GCC in Guyana Ali Mohammed this is what I love now with the response most bowlers might have opted to be a lot flatter be a lot quicker because of it still gave that ball some air still inviting Ali Mohammed to have a question of whether or not to go over the top again He's 
He's got protection in the form of a long off. There's also a man behind square on the leg side on the boundary. Might only come into play with an absolutely horrible delivery. Goes extremely flat on that occasion. Uh, but cover and Kevin Hodge is able to clean things up. Six runs in the over. It's 158 for five. Tried to pull that ball down, bowl it quicker, and ended up um, bowling it short and flat. Well, it appears it's going to be the end of this spell for Larry Edward. And it's going to be Sunil Ambrose now. It's a ball. Looking to see if they can sneak out one more maybe here. The windwards. It's interesting to see the warm-up arm. He's just outside of our camera frame at the moment. But it looks more like a javelin through at the moment for that warm-up. For Sunil Ambrose. He's bowling around the wicket. Starts well. Almost like a Craig Braffitt. He's a spin. Yeah, he's been used a couple times so far in the tournament for the windwards. Just picked up that one wicket versus the CCC. We certainly expect that he'll be favouring himself just a bit more when he comes with bat in hand. But yeah, I've been asked to do a job here with this team in terms of probably just looking to maybe see if a batter or two lets their guard down relaxes a bit forces a false shot would happily take one more into the break and he's now just a little frustrated with Ali Mohammed. one of the openers who can be pressing for a West Indies opening spot Ambrose Steered away, down towards the backward point position. They get an easy single. Looks to give himself room, Sinclair. An element of danger in that shot, especially so close to T. He's on 37. Sinclair, this time he drives with a full face of the bat on drives down towards long on. And that is going to be T on day number one. Ghana Harvey Eagles, they're 161 for five. We're going to take a break here. And when we come back in roughly 20 minutes or so, we'll have the final session of play on day number one, round number five of the West Indies Championships.
Good afternoon and welcome back after the tea interval on day one of the Cricket West Indies four-day championship. We're live from the Coolidge Cricket Ground. And if you're just tuned into the Cricket West Indies YouTube channel, we welcome you and we say thanks to you very much for joining us. At lunch, the Ghana Happy Eagles who would have won the toss. They were 62 for two of 25 overs. And at T, 161 for five of 54 overs with some 18 boundaries and two sixes. It's been a more or less very disciplined performance so far by the Windward Island Volcanoes. Extras 13, four buys, four wides, and five no balls. In terms of the pace attack, Darius Martin would have bowled some 14 overs, no maidens, 45 runs, two wickets. Ryan John, 14 overs, five maidens, 23 runs, no wicket. And Shamar Springer, 13 overs, three maidens, 37 runs, one wicket. Between them, they bowled some 41 overs. Eight maidens, 105 runs with three wickets. The spinners so far have been Larry Edwards, Kevin Hodge, Dalton Cyrus, and Sonny Lambris. 13 overs between them, one maiden, 48 runs, and two wickets. It's a long haul because we're talking about another 38 overs to go. Um, 54 have been bowled. Should be 36, 36 to go because 90 in the day, so 36 to go. Cyrus starting as a good afternoon to Mali Richards. Good afternoon, Vernon. Good afternoon to everyone. What a fantastic cricketing wicket we've got here at the CCG. Cyrus, you were talking, Mali, off screen about how important it is to have a wrist spinner in your lineup, and the Windward Islands have a, a trump card in Cyrus here. Yeah, I do like the balance of this attack. You know, the three seamers, the leg spinner. Got left arm orthodox as well. Good balance attack from the Windward Islands. And also just this wicket, I said it's a fantastic cricketing wicket. We've seen Pacers take wickets. Here is a ball which is stared down to the third man boundary going downhill from Ronaldo Ali Mohammed. He's quietly gone about his business, including a, a maximum. Yeah, there was something in it with the new ball for the fast bowlers. Ryan John in particular, he was threatening. Springer took a, a wicket. Martin took two. There was always just enough in this pitch to keep them interested. But also the leg spinners come into the attack right, here. And, he, and he's picked up two for 25 in his 5.2. Important point that you made. Mali is that the three seamers before them bowl 41 overs. Mm. If you think back to Martin in particular, he would have bowled his, uh, what, 13 overs, 14 overs. Looks in as three if different spells. Mali, Ali Mohammed is down, Mali, for the count. Wow. Out Maybe comes the physio. Seems to be struggling with his back there, lower back. Yeah. Not sure if. If, if he's having a few back spasms. Well, everybody's concerned. Everybody, everybody's wondering, like, they're not sure what happened. Especially coming out after T. <laughs> First over after T. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Joel, mm -hmm. uh, not Joel. Um, Jason, flick up that. Let me see what happened. Because, boy, I know that he was beginning to go and face. And then all of a sudden, I saw him on the ground. Not exactly sure what would have taken place there. Or he would have just twinged his back. Playing a shot. Oh, he looks he looks serious, Mally. Mm. It can happen. These spasms tend to come out of nowhere. All it takes is just one awkward movement. Just to throw that alignment off. And he's in trouble. So 164 for 5, 54.2. Umpire Reefer coming down maybe to just try and find out what's going to be happening. Yeah, let's I go back to the... I wonder if it's his hamstring, Mally, because she is... I was just trying to peep through to see where she was stretching. Could be the lower back, maybe, more or less. I can't really see, to be fair. Yeah, just right between there, she's got his right leg up. And Sinclair does an yeah. even better blocking I, I, job. I think, I think it is the lower back. <laughs> now that she's moving into yeah, the next position. Yeah, it looks position. like the lower back. Yes. You could tell when he got onto uh, all fours. That's a position I've been in before. Yeah, it's On a cricket field. Yeah. On team, a <laughs> team spirit has been high between these teams, Mali, as Windward Islands and Guyana. We saw that with the Barbados, but I guess all of them... It's been like that throughout this season, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it has. 
but it's still been Let, keenly let's look at him contested, Mali. highly competitive stuff. He went down Mali. He's, he's just trying to stretch that back area, yeah. I think. Yeah, 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 yeah that yeah. lower back. Yeah, he's, he's, he's down for the count, Mali. Mm. It hit him there. But yeah, as you were saying, the fast bowlers would have bowled what? Some 41 overs between 41 them. Overs. They would yeah. have gotten through quite a bit of work. Yeah. Martin in particular, he would have bowled yeah, three and spells for and 14 overs. And he overs. looked like he was winded after the third spell. At the end of his yeah, third spell, he seemed to be out of gas. But I think Springer's going to have to come back and bowl. You know, because somewhere along the line, Athenes is going to have to bring back one of the seamers. Because in, in, in a way, but which end is going to be critical? But just to highlight also the balanced nature of this pitch, Vern, quickly, is the fact that we've seen some very good cricket shots being played as well. Oh, yes. You Sinclair. Like, yeah, and Anderson. Anderson. I mean, we haven't seen a half century yet. He fell just too short. He'll probably be ruining. And I think he lost his shape, Mali, for just the first before, time. Before, before he got out. For the first time. He yeah, the second time? No, for the first time in the innings, he actually took oh, his it, eye off, off the, the ball. I was talking about when he got outside by Raymond Weaver in the yeah, Barbados yeah, yeah, game. Yeah. No, in this game. In this game. Yeah, he, he, that head was still throughout his innings. And if you look back to his dismissal, he did see it short. It probably didn't bounce as much as he expected. That's for sure. But he just took his eye off it at the last second. Looks and as if everything is... Good. The magic pill came out. Hmm. Let's see if that would work. I think he's just been stretched out a little bit. And he yeah. it's but important that he gets warm here, Ali Mohammed. Yeah, but this physio for the guy in the Happy Eagles team has done a wonderful job, Mali. She has been busy. Yeah, she has been. Every time she's been called upon. And she keeps sprinting out like a like a like a sprinter. So Hope that he can make it. I would have add, add, added some pressure on him now, Mali. I would have got a silly point in front of his bat because it means now that he will be still thinking about that. He, he's, he's going down there on his hunches. Put a silly point right in front of him just to give him something to think about. So tough to concentrate as well. I'm not sure if, it's, if he's actually having spasms or he just twinged the muscle in his lower back. But if it is spasms every now and again, the body just tenses. Yeah, it's going to choke you. Yeah, you can't afford. <laughs> it just doesn't allow you to relax <coughs> or to be as relaxed as possible. And it's all in, it's all in your mind as well, mm. too. Cyrus, he looks different. He, he looks a, a, a good prospect, investment that they got to work on. And you can see his movements just hampered. Is Ali Mohammed yeah. not moving freely? I don't know if he lasts long out there, Mali. In fact, I would get a silly point in front of him early. Because I think this is going to restrict his movement more or less. But even that shot he just played, it was a very controlled punch, wasn't it? Well, sometimes when players, you see the best out of players when they go through pain. So even how he played that, Mali, he wasn't really comfortable. So I get that silly point in front of him early. He's making good contact, though, Ali Mohammed. Yeah. He's up to, what, 15 now? Of 16 deliveries? Darryl Cyrus Mali has just started his career, uh, more or less. He's already raced to 11 wickets so far before this encounter. 27 years of age, so good flight to delivery. He's got a little hop, skip, and a jump yeah. in his... Maybe that might have been coming from a short McGill. Mm, his little run-up. Partnership is already 25, and Ali Mohammed has got 16 out of it. Sinclair down on his crunches and just swinging this one out, but he now has to understand that Ali Mohammed is not running, so he can't get two there. Yeah, he's struggling physically. Yeah. Should have been an easy two. Yeah, but it maybe might be easy if, if he's not going to, then he's going to put, it's going to change your mindset for Sinclair, because Sinclair is now going to force be forced to go and be looking to hit boundaries. Sorry, we're losing you. Not hearing you, mate. Not hearing you. 168 for 5. 55 overs ball. It's a bit of deliberation going on between the umpires. Yeah, standby umpire. Aki Mogis. The physio. I think they're going to make a decision, Mari. I, think, I don't think he can... I don't think he can make it. Yeah, he's struggling. Yeah, he can't make it. So he's finally coming off. I, did we, I think we did call that right. It's going to be Vesami Pomalo stepping to the crease. Mm. In good form as well. 
coming off 90 not out in the first innings. And who's coming back? In the first innings versus the Barbados Pride last week. And it looks like it's going to be Darius Martin. Yeah. I'd have gone for a Shamar Springer from that end. Don't know. I mean, he's gotten through his 14. He's been picked a ball. They're probably asking him to get through 20 overs or so <laughs> per day, Vern. He's had a little rest. He's now from the CIU road, and I like this move. I do like this move. Ask him for a short, short burst. Two, three over spell? Two, three, four overs, depending on how he goes. Okay, gotcha. You're a skipper, and you were really one of the, the better skippers at an early age. Yeah. That's a Wide tight, stiff delivery, though, wasn't it? Yeah. That's what I was saying to you. Springer would have been my money. 28 years of age, um, Darius Martin, so he's no spring chicken. And he's only played some six first-class games. This will be his seventh first-class game, Mali. So okay, he's still finding his feet in the first-class arena. Exactly. We did mention that earlier this morning. It's my first time actually seeing him in person, Darius Martin. Would you have seen him before? Ben? No, this is my first time as well, too. But he's a big, tall guy that I think can develop. He looks good. He, yeah, looks, he looks good. He looks he just like needs he's got the raw materials, yeah, yeah. doesn't he? Just it? needs to complete his action. Yeah, maybe, you know, get that hand right up there. It's got the height. Left hand doesn't do anything at all. To be because fair, of that, he just stands up. To be fair, it just looks like he can really improve on that fitness more than anything. Well, that endurance, if, that if you, stamina. If, if you have not played for a long time, Mali, you're just practicing in the nets. Hundred percent. Practicing. Where and do game you get time the match two. practice? Yes, it's a mm. whole complete different ball game. This is what he needs. This is what the sun baking down on him. He's got to be able to survive for that period of time. Yeah, he needs a real, some a real workload in the legs. Build up that. Put workload. some miles on his legs. Yes. Yeah. Here goes Pomal. He's off and running, punching it to cover. If he wants, he can get three. Is he interested? Hey! Yes, they get three runs quite easily. Now, the Winwood Islands are going to have to be very, very, very careful because Pomal is the sort of player that can take the game away from you. He can get a quick 30-40, and all of a sudden the score is 200-220 for five. Especially with Kevin Sinclair in the kind of form that he's been in this edition of the four-day championship. Sean was just saying to me off here that Darius Martin reminds him a bit of Cameron Coffey, and I think I have to agree. In At first, I, I, mm. I did, yes, I saw him. But Coffey would have been bustling in a lot more. He was a lot more, he's a bigger and stronger boy. Punched onto the offside, getting an easy single. He was, but yeah. he didn't bowl as quick as you would as, think as, as someone he, he, of his, his size would. Yes. Well, I think he was, because he was so big, he mm. thought that his size could intimidate everybody. <laughs> Good afternoon. Cameron, he must be laughing. So him and John Maynard must be having a serious conversation. Good evening, big Johnny Maynard, the dentist. He tell me he has like four or five screens, Mali. He's managing keen. and looking at almost all of the games. Keen, keen, keen follower of the game. Can't wait to have somebody like him around or set up, especially the Leeward Islands. We need a technical coach. One going down the onside. Every now and again, Mali falls away and pushes the ball. Needs to keep his hand and wrist firm right behind the ball. George Ferris, how are you? Good afternoon, son. 173 for five. Can remember those days, Mali? You cricket days. George Ferris and Anthony Merrick. But George Ferris is a name I grew up hearing. Never saw him. Never saw him personally. Oh, yeah. I would have seen Anthony Merrick, though. Merrick. Mali, he was quick. Mm. You tournament days, St. Kitts and Antigua. And, oh, my gosh. First, George Ferris bowled with pace. Oh, gosh. He was lightning quick. Yeah. So a bit of a tired comeback almost from Darius Martin just so far. Yeah, that's his 15th over, Mali. Two yeah. for 50. He's gone for five runs. 56 overs in the books, 174 for five. In fact, it's two for 51, that single day from the busy for Sammy Pomal. And sometimes you have to look at the context of, of a Sammy Pomal's body language to figure out how he's going to operate. If he's going to dig in or if he's going to back away, he's maybe up for the challenge here. 174 for five, got a 90 against Barbados Pride. Cyrus will continue. 
came agonizingly close to what would have been a pretty special maiden first class hundred. And you know what happened today, right? What happened today? Amir Django was left on 93 not Wow, all. we had Otley last week on 99. No, he, got, he, he was bold for 99. Yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> so we've had quite a few players uh, either dismissed or not out in the 90s. Here's another success story again. Amir Django, who came to the Leeward Islands Hurricanes yes, yes. for some period of time and then went back to Trinidad and Tobago. I remember so he was a hot topic of debate for yes, quite a while here in the Leeward Islands. Yes. For a long, long time, time, we were wondering when this return on the investment would come but he started to show signs he did he did and then i think he took that on into the cpl yes and he really made an impact for the talawas in the cpl and so sometimes we can't judge. he hasn't looked back since sometimes mali we can't judge by one two years it's over development time some folks are develop late and some folks develop early so it's almost like a progress rate really depends on the attitude of the player as well. And Coming the environment. Yes, the environment created for him. Another easy single here. Comfortable enough for Vasami Pomol. I think we could just squeeze the mid-wicket, Mali. I, I, I think Athenes has to get that sorted out. It's just a little bit too wide. You want him to come to his left and force Pomol to be looking to hit the ball into the mid-wicket area. Right, right where he is, you can get an easy single. So Martin needs to come to his left and cut that off. The angles are going to be important. Good delivery. That had some bongs on it. Surprised Sinclair too. He was like, where did he get that from? He's got a good googly. Doesn't bowl it often, but every time now and again, when he does, he just needs to relax. Cyrus, just allow the ball. Just bowl a little slower. He's trying to hustle through. Oh, that was a good one. Took his time and bowled that one. That was a perfect length there, Vern. Yes, yes. Just luring Kevin Sinclair into that loose stroke. Let's see if there's any turn on that. Oh, he's just done by length. No, he's actually done on the inside edge from Kevin Sinclair. So probably just looking to hit the ball a bit too square, is Sinclair, to Cyrus on that occasion. Don't think he's picked him up completely as yet. He's still having a look. He's gone back into his hut now and says, well, let me just respect him. Because he looks like he's a tricky customer. He's 42 from 71. Coming into this game with over 300 runs. 338 runs. And his season so far, 29, 23, 24, 165, 72 and 25. It's been a real impressive season. Except that he was outfoxed by Jamal Warwick and against the Barbados Bride twice. But that's cricket. 175 for 5. He'll be looking for a half century here. Another one short and pulled away into the deep square leg boundary for four badly lined delivery from cyrus and every now and again mali he just floats up one and spanked away for the 19th boundary look at how low kevin sinclair got on that one got down on one knee short delivery watched it all the way that's the difference there in between those strokes in between the shot played by Kevin Sinclair and the one played by Kevlon Anderson. Kept his eye on the ball all the way, did Kevin Sinclair. Timed it sweetly for yet another boundary. So just four away now from another half century. Really, really stamping his authority on this four-day championship, isn't he? He's looked good. He's really looked good. Somebody's begging Daria. Martin to step up. He's got to find that gas. He's got to dig deep. Get down into that stomach. And really produce for his team. Get a fiver here. Back of a length. That's good. Now he's hitting the deck there. He's got a ball cross seam to Pomal. And force him. Force him back. And you could tell just by his follow through as well. There was just a bit more on that delivery. Maybe just took him an over or so. To just warm back up. Into his work. I think the feel at deep back of square is wasted, Mali. Well, he's don't got two men down on the boundary on the leg side. Yeah, I don't see him. This track doesn't offer that sort of assistance to have two. Well, they know Perma is going to take it on. If he can just get one right here. I think it would be better to serve to bowl poor Mal, Mali more on that, that, that line, that back of the line link. Because if you keep forcing poor Mal back and bowling that hard link, he's likely to maybe nick one to the first or the second slip. The short ball to me. No, I think that's a wasted one. It's on the this track. threat of the short ball. That's the thing. It's the threat 
of the sharp ball. It doesn't have to be the sharp ball that gets him out. The threat of the sharp ball. You might then pitch it a bit fuller. He's anticipating a short delivery. You catch him on the crease. Edge taken. Got two slips on a gully there. Goes fuller and he's hammered. No feet though from Permal. But makes good contact on that one. Let's see that again, Vern. Pull out your coaching hat on this. Look at that. It was wide. <laughs> and he was off the stumps too. And you know he's going to throw his hands. A look where his front foot went. And straight it, down it, 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 the, the pitch, the pitch though. Yeah. But he's got good eyes, this Vesami Permal. And good bat speed too. Mm. His hands, really. Cyrus got to hit those links. He's got to be consistent. He's got to be patient, but he's got to hit those links. The skipper can't afford to be bowling, uh, setting fields for you for bad bowling. Those are half volleys. The half volleys got to be put away. It's got to hit the link. It's got that. Uh, cross him and force him. Force him back. Force him back. That's it. There, there you go. There you go. That's what he has to do. He's got to bowl that hard length. And then just look to pitch it up fuller to a Veer Sami Pramal. He's got the man down. Well, two men, one in front of Square on the leg side. And a deep, fine leg, but very wide. I don't know much time, Mali. We must talk about patience. And it's easy for us to sit in here and talk about patience. But the bowlers have to be patient. You've got to keep working. You've got to keep working. And too many times I just find that folks are trying things. It's not a one-day game. It's a four-day game. So you've got to keep building the pressure. That's a lot better from the young man. He's moving a lot smoother into the crease now. So it's maybe just a little stiff after that T interval. He's got two for 55. And he has to sense within his mind to say, I can get a fiver here. If I get a fiver here, then Sherman Lewis will not get the next game. If I just get two, Sherman Lewis can come back in, put some pressure on Sherman Lewis to understand I'm here to stay. That's what you want, competition competition for places. Pomal is nine. Difficult customer to bowl to. Uh, there you go. Man should have been there, Mali. That would have been no runs, a single. Um, you got to cut it off. Just, just too easy. Got to keep his head up, Martin. He's got his head down as if, like, he's not in his right with him. He's learning. But he has to learn on the job and learn fast. 58 overs bowl. The latest score here, the Coolidge Cricket Ground. Ghana Happy Eagles batting first, 184 for five. Seemed like a long time ago when Imla won the toss. It was. <laughs> <laughs> at lunch, they were 62 for two. They lost um, at that time Shanda Paul and Nandu and a T161 for five. Anderson, Imla, and Savory. Savory played a nothing shot. Ali Mohammed, I kind of feel for Ronaldo Ali Mohammed in this context. He looked quite good when he came out, was making good contact. The scoring quite was finding run scoring very easy. Cyrus Wayne, a very big number, Mali, number 10. Hope he can live up to that. So far, he has. Two for 34. Here on day one, he'll be happy. Now, you see, Mali, why would you give Vasami Pomal that easy single? Got to pressure him. Got to pressure him. I can understand Sinclair. Right. But Vasami Pomal, you, I'm with you, you. you. I'm you, with you. You, you got to close him down. I'm with you on that one. Keep him on strike. Keep him on strike. Too easy. I think they're just trying to protect their young leg spinner here. But so far, he doesn't look like he needs all this protection. He, d he doesn't, Mali. And if he does drag one down, you've got protection on either side. So that's okay. And if he does drag one down, that's the nature of the sport. You get punished. 185 for five. Drag down again. Yeah. Every now and again, that one comes. And if you're your leg spinner, that is going to happen. Well, I'll tell you what. With a little inconsistent bounce that tends to happen here at the CCG, those short deliveries, especially a good pace. We saw what happened with Kevlon Anderson. At times, those deliveries that seem like rank bad balls end up taking the wickets. I think the understanding here, Mal, is that a lot of folks don't understand the art of wrist spin. Oh. That's what we're talking about, Mal. It's coming. Now they brought Springer right up. It's yep. Right, right there. Keep him under pressure. If he wants to go, let him go. Yeah, it's a hell of a shot if he wants to take him on. 
He said, fair play to Vasami Pamal if he gets away with it, but yeah. it's the risk you're after. Just land it into the right area. Just slow it up. Good yeah. delivery. Beautiful. Beautiful. He's moving into his own now. They've got to give him that encouragement. They've got to back him. And he's quite an engaging watch, isn't he? He is. Young Cyrus with that little quirk in his action as well. Showing quite good control here. They've got to give him. They give him that support. Almost looked like the Google. It's yeah. a bit too full. Worked away. Athens has to get this one right. Why would he have Martin in the short midwicket area? Maybe it would be an advice to have Ryan John in there and have Martin out because Martin, um, in that area, you've got to be able to use your quads, get down, use your legs. Just find an area for him where he can almost just get a bit of a rest. Yes, yes, yes. Not in that fiery land, fiery hot spot area. Say so good afternoon to Sir Douglas in Bermuda, all the guys. We're listening to us in Canada, United Kingdom. Basil Morgan sent his greetings, Mali, to you and Sean. Good afternoon to Mr. Morgan, everyone down there in Montserrat. I'm sure you enjoyed your St. Patrick's Festival. Yeah, they had a big one, Luciano. Mm. It's going to push for two. Should yeah. get it quite comfortably. Very easy as well. But again, that shot, even though Sinclair tugged it, the, the, the pace, man, it didn't bounce as much. Sort of hit the lower part of the bat, really. What he's doing, though, is watching the ball, though. He's not just seeing it in an area and thinking, oh, I can play the shot. He's watching the ball all the way. He's so 49. Even, so even if it doesn't bounce, he's able to make that adjustment. Stays quite low. And I think the, uh, that small tour to Australia certainly has helped him in terms of his attitude and what is required of him. Kevin yeah. Sinclair. Half 50. century. And four. No one in that fine leg region. Actually, fine leg. Very wide, that ball going quite fine. And it's the second 50 of the season for Kevin Sinclair. He's got 100, 165 not out. And two half centuries and here today. Out. 53 of 79 deliveries. And eight spanking boundaries. So he's looked good. He's looked dangerous. And that's why Alex Atenez has to pay attention to this partnership. Because the game can run away from you. And Sinclair can take that game away from you. And get 120, 130. And all of a sudden, all of the good work that he would have done early before T would have just been wasted. But you never know. Martin has been asked to produce the goods. He's two for 62. Six so far from the over. He's into his 17th over. I think this is his 11th first class half century. Kevin Sinclair. That one was wide. Yeah, but he fell away again and got frustrated. Went off script. Martin got away with that one. He did. Wayward delivery down the leg side. Almost a free hit for Kevin Sinclair, but couldn't quite catch up to that one down the leg side. Sinclair 53, Pomol 13, Darius Martin looking to come up with something special. He's two for 62. Two slips, a gully, a deep backward point, cover, mid on, mid off, very close, and two men behind square. No ball, the sixth of the day. His fourth. Darius Martin. So his third, if I'm not mistaken, from that CIU road end. Extras now. Mounding up to 14. Maybe just striving for a bit of extra pace there was Martin. Six no balls so far for the day for the Winwood Island Volcanoes. And I was just saying previously, I feel for Ronaldo Ali Mohamed. As he said, since that five for and a half cent, he's probably been a bit of a passenger in the games. Down the onside, he's pushing it again. And all of a sudden, Mali just lost his action slightly. Yeah, the run rate has been pushed up to 3.28. Yeah, the pressure being applied back onto the Windward Islands. But so far today, every time pressure has been applied back on, they've managed to take a wicket. You're so right. There's somewhere. 
if somewhere along the line come up with the goods either mm. one or two mm. and then just slowed it and right back down slowed it right back down so this partnership is absolutely key and it could be that they're trying just too hard mali sometimes you have to just be patient just be patient keep working bowl some balls in the right areas keep sinclair and pomal quiet take away the boundary ball yeah They'd be hoping for at least 350 in the first innings here to have some modicum of control. But if you're bat first, you'd, you, sh you have to be thinking about mm. 350, or you should. At least. Still quite good batting conditions here. Partnership is 27, and every now and again, Athenas has got to be mindful of that, to know that Sinclair is there and Permal is in good touch. At the regional level, Permal will get runs. And still got Ali Mohammed in the hut, so hopefully he can sort those back issues out not much after Ali Mohammed so I think when you look at the the lineup of the Ghana Happy Eagles this is going to be a crucial partnership Moti you know has a first class hundred but sometimes lately Moti has just not been even in Australia in the Test Series, he didn't look like he wanted to hang around. And you know, you see, go, manager, he always asks me something and he always says to me, he says, who like pace, Mr. Springer? Don't worry about everybody who's talking. A lot of people don't like pace. In fact, I, I, I think the guy in the Happy Eagles actually back quite deep, to be fair, with Moti coming in at number nine. Yeah, but it depends on which Moti turns up. Mm. Discussions taking place. 95 for 5. Count run rate is now 3.25. And they're just looking for some action in terms of what's happening. 195 for 5. 60 overs bowled. Sinclair 53. Permal 13. Coming up next will be the voice of Sean Devers and Joel Manning, a Cyrus starts. He's hitting that one inside out, down to the boundary. For f it's gone all the way for six. That's what? a magnificent cricket shot. Yeah, hell of a shot that from Ves Sammy Pomal. Woo! What, what timing. Got the length and act just through the hands, through that delivery, flew the hands through that delivery. 200 comes up. And it went well in front of Square as well. So power through the offside but we saw happy eagles 201 for five scoreboard looks a lot better right now for imla it does just a little too full from cyrus he will learn he will learn two for 44 is into his ninth over he'd love a wicket now though oh yes bang on the money again he's come right back very quickly good comeback from the young man yeah he just has to land it in, tho in, in those right areas that's the that's the area that he wants to be consistent on. Just give it some time. Just a little slow. Just above the eye line. That's what Cyrus has to be working on. There. Now he can't get the single before. He would have got that easy single. Would just like to see Sonny Lambrus just come to his right. Leave that gap open. Force him to just chip drive. We're bold. And we were speaking about Budakesh Moti, Bert. He's actually got something that Pei Sami Pamal doesn't. A first class. A first class hundred. I did say that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so there's still quite a bit of batting to come, I as far as I'm concerned. I did say that. Mm. <laughs> Bang on target. <laughs> Don't want Moti to feel like, oh, is Mr. Springer talking? Yeah, he doesn't know I have a first what? class hundred. I did mention that. He may have a word with you a bit later on. Yeah. He's like, you're really downplaying my batting, Mr. Springer. Yeah. Check my record, Mr. Springer. Goes hard. Big Handsome shot. Handsome down the ground once again from some Permal. The second six of the over. So Cyrus just coming in for a bit of rough treatment No. Goes to 25 is Vasame Permal. 207 for five. And we have a double change, Mali, as the Sean Divas and Joel Manning takes over.
It's going to be right arm over now with Shamar Springer into the attack. He's picked up one wicket so far for the day. Catches the cry, uh, but it won't be caught today or tomorrow. This is fantastic batting at the moment by this pair. Good afternoon, everybody. That was far too short on a pitch like this. There was no problems for the right-handed Sinclair. 24-year-old just dumping that over the square leg bungee for six. As easy as you like. Yeah, there's protection back there, and for a moment, they thought you know, that he would have been in the conversation. Uh, the connection was too good from Sinclair. He's really shown with the bat in this tournament. Yeah, started this game with 338 runs, third in the aggregate. And closing in on what would be his second hundred. Got a long way to go though. One would hope from a Guyana point of view that he gets there. Pomal, who's got a high score of 90, yet to get a first class 100. That 90 was made in the last game when he was left not out. Bring a short again and uh, down towards the long leg position this time. And they get single. So both batters willing, willing to take him on. The 60 from Sinclair at the moment means that uh, he's the leading scorer, in fact, in the West Indies Championship at the moment. And that in itself is a very interesting stat to have. Yeah, started as a, a bowling all-rounder. Oh. And now has become more of a batting all-rounder. I'm not too sure about becoming more of a batting all-rounder, Sinclair. But what you can see is that his batting has come on leaps and bounds. And he's provided additional value to the size that he's been playing in, especially in the longer format of the game. Well, I believe um, his batting will keep him in the West Indies team. Also, he's a good enough off spinner. And that's one bounce down towards the long on position. Some of the feelers, especially Springer, getting a bit excited there. That was well short of the man on the long leg boundary. 216 for five. He's just asking his feelers to be a lot more alert, especially given that this seems to be the plan of attack to these two batters at the moment. Looking to get either of them with that short ball. They know that this is a partnership that they want to break very quickly. 216 for five at the moment. Not looking to find themselves still out there. At, let's say maybe 270 to 80 without having broken this partnership. The end of that Springer over. It's 216 for five. Sinclair actually opens the batting for Burbies at the senior inter-county level. That's the three counties we've got a tournament yeah. called the inter-county. And that's the highest level of cricket in Guyana below first class. He also opens the batting for his club, Rose Haltong, in Burbies first division cricket. So everyone knows that uh, Sinclair is a, a batsman. It's only um, recently, just before um, he made the Guyana on the 19 team that he transitioned into bowling off spin. He was a medium pacer. Inside edge onto the pad on that occasion. I, I'm very impressed though with um, this leg spinner. He, he will bowl bad balls because that's what leg spinners usually do but he seems to be more often than not 
on the on target. Yeah, this will be runs a bit too wide on that occasion uh, from Cyrus and in the form that he's in at the moment. Sinclair he capitalizes on it. Got quite deep into the crease to play that one. Brings up the 50 partnership for these two as well. Takes the partnership to 52 from 45 deliveries. But Sinclair has got to be careful. The short ball doesn't scuttle through or keep low. Got to be careful. Don't get too ambitious, too greedy. Play each ball and its merit. Finds that gap behind square. Again, it's been a productive area for Sinclair. The line was not all that bad, but the length. So Sinclair could have backed away. And hit that almost off of the stumps. Consecutive boundaries now in this over. Two boundaries in the over, in fact. Mm. And now they'll get some protection there at the backward point and where they're gonna put the man who is just there so they've got a square cover a backward point and a slip and Sinclair's forward much better delivery much better shot there by Sinclair and the overs come to an end 63 overs gone 224 for the loss of five So at lunch, Guyana was 62 for 2 after losing both of their openers. Chandra Paul for 13 and Nandu for 25. And then at T, they were 161 for 5. With Sinclair on 38 and Ali Mohammed on 10. Well, Ali Mohammed got to 16 before he played a, a shot and uh, injured his back or maybe and he had to retire and then there was Pomal and Sinclair joining forces and they're building a useful partnership now in the match against Barbados no one got a hundred Partnerships. They had a lot of meaningful partnerships, including a hundred partnership, and so they got up past the 400 mark. They will want something similar to that on this occasion. Sun out in all its glory here in Antigua, lovely island in the Caribbean, with 365 beaches, and I'm hearing that there's going to be a 366 when the ICC World Cup comes here because the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium they'll add a beach there yeah, one, that one. short and uh, this time pulled it down turning his rolling his wrist over and Sinclair now goes to 69 he's faced 95 balls so he's well set For his second hundred of this tournament, he's got the highest individual score so far, 165 not out. And if he'd gotten that hundred, that double century, if Ghana hadn't declared, then he would have joined Roger Harper. The ball kept a bit low as the only off spinner in regional cricket at the first class level to make a double century and take six wickets in the same match. 
because Sinclair had already taken six wickets. But he said that the, the interest of the team came before him and his landmark. Pomal again turns it into the onside and gets another single. What's interesting to note is that they've left the man that's in front of Square on the leg side on the boundary. But the man behind Square on the leg side at deep backwards square leg. It's probably taking maybe about six steps off the boundary. And it goes back to that conversation. Just that alertness, placement, awareness. Hoping that at some stage he could come into play. Uh, several deliveries dropped short of him in the previous over. Yeah, maybe the end that was influenced by that. Yeah. Uh, the end of that Springer over. It's 229 for five. Yeah, I was saying maybe um, the shot that fell short of him in the previous over might have influenced his position now. Because he's like about 10, 15 meters off the boundary while the backward square is right back on the ropes. This is a relatively small ground. Not the biggest ground in the world. But it's lush green and well manicured. It's going to be another spell from Larry Edward. This time he returns to the end from which he started. The media centre end here at Coolidge Cricket Ground. Operated here for a couple overs. Was relatively flat. Got a chance to head up to the CIU road end. And then from there... Varied his pace, bowled a little more consistently in terms of the lengths that he might want to bowl. We'll see whether or not he operates in similar fashion or opts to go flatter. Operating left arm thrown around is Larry Edward. Quick flat delivery. On the line of the leg stump, clicked away easily for two. And usually the modern day left arm spinner or off spinner, when they go around the wicket, they run at the side of the umpire. Many of them don't go between the umpire and the stumps, as Larry Williams, Larry, Larry Lou in Larry Edwards is doing. Well, they're asking a question. <laughs> <laughs> to which I'm paralyzed with you for. How's a slick giggle? That's it. Did Larry Edward get anything onto that one? And uh, this is why I believe <laughs> that I'm paralyzed for having that laugh because he got nothing onto it and still opted to have the appeal. Needed to get at least a hand on that one. This is a nice flight. There he goes, Ariel. And yeah, produces the wicket. Oh, a full toss. That was the flight beating him. Charged on the track. And uh, got it on the full. But couldn't put it away. Put it straight into the hands of Midon. So almost throwing his wicket away. Um, where Sami Pomol after that brilliant on beaten 90 in the previous game. It's now 231 for the loss of six. Picks up his first wicket uh, this season. Eli Edward playing in his first game. Of the 2024 season. Would I consider that to be his best delivery? A full toss to which for Sami Pomal attempted to come down the tractor and offered the simplest of catches to Ryan John. A new batter for the Harpy Eagles, it's Gudakesh Moti.
arm over. We'll be operating left arm Here over now. Uh, to Moti. Moti, a long line of Barbicians in this Ghana side. And is off the mark with a boundary right away. Short and wide and cut away. And into the boundary it goes. No. It just trickled. And the fielder pulled it back. And he's off the mark with two. Thought that would have been four. It wasn't hit as well enough as I thought. So he's gotten three. But that was a good shot though. F total control. Got the width <coughs> and spanked it away. Successful over uh, for Edward and the Windwards. It's 234 for six. Good afternoon to Mr. Veeman Walter, if you're listening. He's from Albion, one of the executives. I think he's still the president of Albion. That's where Pomal and Moti come from. That's a club in Burbies on the quarantine Burbies. Rose Hall Tongue where Sinclair comes from. It's another club on in the quarantine Burbies area. Good afternoon to Mr. Hilbert Foster. He's the president of the Rose Hall Newton Sports Club. And they've produced a number of players in the recent years in both female and male cricket for Guyana. Short again, but there's protection out there, and just a single. So rotation in the strike brings the left-handed Moti back into strike. A Sinclair goes 26 away from his second first-class hundred. One of the most improved cricketers, all run cricketers, for the last season or two for Guyana, Sinclair. <coughs> Even with his bowling, which is still not what he would want it to be, needs to turn the ball a little bit more and beat batsmen more with flight. But even that aspect of his cricket, that department yeah, yeah, yeah. has improved. Good running between the two. Stabbed into the offside by Moti. A quick call. Sinclair responded. Still the sun shining in all its glory here in Antigua and primarily at the CCG cricket ground here, which once was owned by Stanford. It was known as the Stanford Cricket Ground, just close to the airport. And he's gone through the defences of Kevin Sinclair. The big wicket goes to Shamar Springer. He really didn't play anywhere there. He didn't go back. He didn't go forward. He just stood there. Back or anything, Springer? Just a bit of movement. Great run back. In between bat and pad for Sinclair. So, good innings has come to an end. Well bowled though by Springer. 
and this could be the difference with Ghana getting 350 and less or less than 350 because it doesn't look as if Ali Mohammed will be coming back anytime soon you look at Shamar Springer you understand why he's taken the, the amount of wickets that he's taken so far in the season came into this game with 17 wickets and I mentioned the fact earlier that he's that wicket to wicket a tight bowler, very tight, especially many, many overs. on an off stump. Um, Pearl Leslie, we've allowed him to know that we're very short in terms of overs at the moment and hoping that, you know, the boys can speed things up. But certainly is a very handy and medium pacer, Shamar Springer, and an important part of why the you know, Windward Islands have been able to accumulate the amount of points that have done thus far for this season. Goes now to 19 wickets in the tournament yeah this has been a brilliant tournament so far for the Windwards despite the loss to Trinidad in their last match they've still been able to maintain the lead even though it's just by 3.2 points ahead of the Leewards Guyana winning back-to-back -back matches, but still in sixth position. Smith, the new batter, he's also from Burbies, and he plays a big shot outside the line of the off stump and beaten for a delivery. We'll be hoping that they can wrap things up and have themselves a bat this evening the Windward Islands the bowling combination has bowled pretty well for the Windwards just a bit more attacking now operating with the first oh, well actually maybe considered to be a one and a half and a third goes for that searching Yorker gets that back down in time though does Nell Smith and he's off the mark with a boundary and he'll be pleased with that as the over <laughs> comes to an end it's two four to one for the loss of seven you can certainly understand the expression of Shamar Springer on that occasion. He, he couldn't believe that he got bat onto that one because had that bat missed, oh, that was going to cannon into that left boot. And dare I say, it would have spelled the end of Nell Smith. Lots of cricket globally. The IPL starts in two days' time and it goes up to May 26. And also the ICC 2020 World Cup from June 1 to 29. 20 teams involved played in the West Indies and at three venues in the US of A. Long Island, the venue where the first match will be played, West um, Pakistan versus India, is soon to be completed it's not yet fully completed i was looking at the construction yesterday on youtube edwards continue Not a hot day, no real breeze, flags in the distant, limp, rest in these cricket board flag. Maybe fluttering more than the others. There is the Antigua and Barbuda flag. There's the Ghana Golden Arrowhead, and there's the Leeward Islands Cricket Board flag. 
and the West Indies flag. The Windward Islands flag. That kept low. Dangerous shot though, Jewel. Yeah, just narrowly missing the off stump on that occasion. A maiden over for Edward. It's 241 for seven. Just a bit of turn on that one as well from Larry Edward. He was never going to be able to create the room required on that particular occasion. Gudakesh Modi. Good afternoon to Mr. Lockhart Sebastian in Dominica. His son here with the Windwards team, Liam Sebastian. Shivnarain Chandrapal, an honorary citizen of Dominica. After he scored the first hundred there. In 2011, I think, when the first test match was played there. Kirk Edwards also scored 100. But he scored 100 just after Chandra Paul. So Chandra Paul was afforded an honorary citizenship and a Dominican passport. Short ball, and Moti gets easily under it. His team is going to need him to spend some time out there. Go to Kesh Modi, quite some distance away from what will be the target that they hoped for av after having won the toss and opting to bat first here on day number one of round number five. Changing his approach now. He's going to operate around the wicket to go to Keshe Modi. Yes, he's driven, but can't find the gap. Most of the, well, not most, many of the Windward Islands fast bowlers come from St. Vincent. That was Winston Davis, who I think still holds the record for best bowling figures in a World Cup. Nixon Alexi McNamara McLean, I also remember that name. Yeah, 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 no. And he's got eight <laughs> brothers. <laughs> and you go to St. Vincent, you see all of them in the ground. You better not say a bad word about Nixon, Alexi, McNamara, and McLean. There was also Dighton Butler, the left arm fast bowler. Keswick Williams, the man with the notebook. And Ian Allen, who played two test matches. And of course, the man who shares my birthday. He was born on the same day, the same year, the same month, the same day, 10 minutes after me. So Cameron Coffey, I'm older than you <laughs> by 10 minutes. Yeah, driven nicely yeah, by Niall shot. Smith. And he's got two boundaries now. So both of his shots have been fours, got a single in between. 
So he's gone now to nine. No, he's gone to eleven into double figures. Say thanks to Sean Devers and Joel Manning. And the score continues to pile on here. And as Mali was just saying to me off script, that every time the Ghana Happy Eagles look like they're forging a partnership, the Windward Island Volcanoes find a way to just hold them back, hold them back by picking up two wickets. And they're just being consistent. 247 for 7, 68 overs bowled. Yeah, we actually mentioned it on air as well. Good afternoon to everyone once again in our previous stint, Vern. In terms of the Windward Islands, every time it seems like the game's just being taken away slightly or a partnership just threatens to take the game away, they go bang, bang. And that double strike, first by Larry Edward, and then Shamar Springer removing the form player one of the form players of this championship in Kevin Sinclair. Excellent catch by Ryan John, who's put his body on the line here. Here's him diving away. Would have saved two runs there with that off drive from Moti. It was an excellent catch by him because he's a big guy and he had to get down real athletic ability. You're always impressed when you see that. Niall Smith pulled off a screamer against the Barbados Pride. Yeah, Shane Dorich as well. Massive wicket in the context of things. He was looking absolutely dominant in complete control. 248 for seven. Couldn't help but listen Sean talk about the left arm spinner coming between the umpire and the stump. Really, that to me, Mali, sort of give you that rhythm where you can be able to get revolutions on the ball and you know get your body, your hips, everything turned into what how you want to deliver the ball. It's, a, it's a game of angles, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. And with him taking that approach, as you said, going betwe in between the umpire, going around the wicket, forces more hip rotation. Get more revs on the ball, revolutions, as you would say. Just want to see him believe in himself. He's got a wicket now. He has to feel like he belongs here. Put your hand up. Splicing that one there. That's okay. That's okay. That's all right. That's what's going to happen because they're going to charge you. You're not quite there. And leg spinners always tend to behave like that, be it a leg spinner or off spinner. He's looking to go hard downtown. Was good to catch Moti, but no real control on that one. Just took his eyes off that delivery. The end of that Edward over. If I could get Jason Malley while we're on script to just pull up that Kevin Sinclair dismissal. Um, just to kind of recap on that, I thought he was caught on the crease, had this big double-decker bus. Because for him to get bowled through the gate, 250 up for the Ghana Happy Eagles, 251 for seven. Springer in the last couple of overs will be very disappointed, Mali. Um, gave away two boundaries to, to Smith. Saw Ali Mohammed with the physio just doing some running on the side. So he's maybe expected to come out. If a wicket falls now. Well, they'll be hoping he can come back out. He was looking quite good, was Ronaldo Ali Mohammed. Shamar Springer. Short delivery. Helped out to the deep backward square. I think it's obvious from Springer. He's got to set, set up Smith. Well, Smith, some back of the length deliveries. Making him look comfortable. Yeah, I think that hard length outside that off stump is, is good enough for the top order batters. It should be good enough for the lower order as well. Of course. It's important you just you don't veer too far away from what you know. And your stock deliveries. Moti's eight. Smith is eleven. Too easy. I think that's well played in the end. Just open the face slightly. Especially with that man back on that point boundary. Just like to see Alex Athenes now. Just saying to the team, let's, let's lift ourselves up. 21 overs to go. Uh, we most likely will be batting maybe 10 overs tonight. 10, 12 overs. 
Let's try and grab the sunlight. We don't want to get too late. Let's finish off the Ghana Happy Eagles. 253 for seven. Two slips and a gully go down. Drop chance. What was that bomb ball? Looks bump to me. Jay said Jay said dropped dropped, but I think instantly. Let's have a look and see if he's right. I think I'm with him. Absolute drop. Yeah, it's a drop. Easy chance. Put down that bat just the bat face just turning in the hand of Niall Smith. Taking the inner half. Probably expected it to come back a bit quicker to him, Shaman Springer, but that's no excuse nonetheless. First catch. First drop catch for the day. Yeah, they've been immaculate up until then. Flicked away. They get one run quite easily. That's what I was just talking to you about, Mali. Athenes has got to say to this group, come on, let's go, let's live ourselves up. That could have been 253 for eight. And you're looking to be able to make sure that you're bad under the sunlight. You don't want to get it too late. But to be fair, Athenes could say that as much as he, as he wants. Players need to execute, don't they, Vern? They do. And the opportunity was provided. Mm. First drop catch for the day by the Windward Island Volcanoes. So they would want to clinically finish well. And as you said, Ronaldo Ali Mohammed just loosening up. So he'll probably come back out to bat if necessary. Well, he's up for the challenge and he Very knows required. that he knows how important it is for him to be fit so that he can come out and bat. He also knows how important it is for him to put in a performance. You know? He's playing for his place in the team as well. He's I'm got sure a it was a tight call coming into this match. He's got a fiver. He's got a half century. That would be enough to keep him. Here's Moti going leg side of the ball, hitting it over mid off and down to the boundary for four. Big six, Vern. In fact, it's gone all the way for yeah, six. Yeah, it's gone high and handsome. Got the length that he wanted, a bit of width as well. A bit awkward in the way that he played that stroke, but made good contact nonetheless. Sailed over that long off region for six. So Moti in ultra aggressive mode here. But Vern, just to remind you, wasn't it you this morning that was saying sometimes we need to pick horses for courses? I did. Mm. I did say that. Especially in the case of a Ronaldo Ali Mohammed. I'm sure it was a tight call coming into this match. But as you said, that five for and the half, half century. century yeah, and the fact that Guyana have won back to back games. They're not gonna want to drop anyone out of the team. Mm. But also, tough calls need to be made, especially when conditions suit. Well, I don't know if you I know on the world stage, you've been following what has been happening. The ICC has just com completed their, their meeting. The board has also confirmed that the stop clock will become a permanent fixture in all ODIs and T20s. So, CPL started the red card. Now, the International Cricket Council has decided that the stop clock... Meaning what exactly? So the results of the, top of the stop clock trial were presented. I'll give you a, a, an indication as to what's going to happen, Mali. Mm. Let's explain to the viewers. Yeah, they, what they're talking about is they want to see a clear improvement to the flow of the game. So the stop clock, Mali, more or less, has been introduced as a mandatory playing condition in all men's and T20s. When do they start it and when do they stop it? So the ICC Men's T20 World Cup, hold on, uh, I think it starts just with you, with, yeah, just before the over. Okay. Yeah, so if the over is completed here, then it, it begins to start. So you have like a minute. In, okay, yeah, to get the, everything yeah, going, yeah, yeah. Fields, field set, yeah, bowler so, in position, yeah, ready so, to go. So I think they're trying to speed up the game more or less because they found that a lot of teams tactically have trained. You know, and you sometimes, I think you, you need to slow the game down, Mali, but at the same time, they're also looking at um, television time. Is that in addition? Oh, as he goes hard again down the ground. He's going to pick up another boundary. Yeah. So boundaries coming regularly now for the Guyana Harpy Eagles. Yet another one to Niall Smith. His third so far. And, and he looks comfortable, don't he? Yeah, he does. He's shown a bit of, of ability with the bat in the past. Niall Smith. He's not a complete bunny, as they would say. 
You don't tend to find too many in modern cricket, to be honest. That's one area of the game that's really improved is the lower to... Not many teams have a tail anymore. I love that. Mm. Everybody's considered a big batsman now, right? Half decent. If you think uh, pa Paddy Cummins coming in at what? Number nine for Australia. Just needs to bowl a little slower. Just bowling a little, just too quick, Mali. And using the pace there is Niall Smith. I think he just want to get it above his eye line. Over completed. 71 overs to 64 for 7. The Windward Island Volcanoes, they've got to lift themselves up. We've got a little small water break here taking place. There's one big final effort to go for them. They've done well. One drop cut so far. But they would really want to at least dismiss Guyana on day one. On the 350. But I still think Guyana would be the more disappointed of the two teams, Vern, especially to lose Permal and Kevin Sinclair in quick succession. That partnership of 62 for the sixth wicket was just threatening to really be imposing and to, to, to help the Guyana Harpy Eagles post an imposing total, first innings total at least. But that double strike has just pegged them back once again. But Smith... Alongside, who's his partner? Moti. Yeah, Gudikesh Moti. They've come out with a bit of a counter attack. They've put back to ball. Certainly and have. And they've scored runs at a brisk rate. And over at the Queen's Park Oval in Port of Spain, Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago dismissed for 172. Amir Django scoring 93, not out. Barbados Pride, they're 55 without loss. I know you have a lot of statisticians who like to put their figures together. Um, just to let you know that Jason Holder finished with 4 for 47. Um, so he was the leading bowler in that contest. Then we go off into Jamaica. No, we still stay at the Sir Frank Warrior Memorial Ground in Barbados. When West Indies Academy, they are 225 for 9. Colin Boyne Tuckett, his second back-to-back -back half century, is not out on 55 from 100 balls, 7 fours. Um, Lane is on 9 not out, so that game is not over by a long shot yet. Blades, 3 for 59 in that game, 225 for 9 or 69 overs. Can I stop you there for a quick second? Sure. I think what's happening there, especially with the Colin Bowen Tuckett, is he's responded to the competition that's been provided in a Rivaldo Clark. He's been brought into the West Indies Academy and they've basically had an open competition for this place. He's won out in the end and he knows he has to keep performing because a young Rivaldo Clark is breathing down his neck and so far it's worked in his, in his favor. At Sabina Park in Jamaica, the Jamaica Scorpions are 169 for 6. With Jeremiah Louis bowling some 11 overs, 2 maidens, 34 runs, 3 wickets. He's now taking his tally for the season to 26. Oshane Thomas was very expensive in his first game for the Leavers. 8 overs, no maidens, not for 46. Justin Graves only bowled 4 overs. Colin Archibald, 10 overs, 6 maidens, 23 runs, 2 wickets. Rakim Cornwall, 12 overs, 1 maiden, 45 runs. One wicket. No Nathan Edwards. He's in the squad. Daniel Durham, 3.2 <laughs> overs, two maidens, five runs, no wickets. So a winning team, Vern. A winning team. No, but folks got dropped out of the winning team. Who? O'Shea and Thomas didn't play the last game. Did, did he? You didn't so realize who, that? So who got dropped? It looks like Hayden Walsh. Is not, I, I've not seen Hayden Walsh's name unless he's, yeah, he's, unless he's injured. Yeah, well, I mean, O'Shea Thomas is a former West Indies international. We are talking about an under-19 player here, but he will get in. Just take so your you, time. Do you think O'Shea Thomas will play test cricket? You think Nathan Edward will play test cricket? Mm, well, he's only 19. I know, but I'm just saying, is he, <laughs> is he pushing to be a test player right he, now? He, he, he's, he's maybe under on, on the, on the verge. I don't think it's even a, cha a, a decision of O'Shane or Nathan Edward. Mm. You think so? Well, I guess O'Shane with the World Cup, the T20 World Cup looking around, they maybe want to put some cricket under his belt. But he's going to be also under some pressure, Mali, to make that final 100%. T20 squad. 
I mean, he's under pressure to perform here in the yeah, four-day yeah, matches yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to even retain a, a, a spot in the franchises for next season. So yeah. he's got to put in performances now. He certainly has to. But we're back with the action here. They have pulled Springer. And they've gone for Ryan John. Not for 23 from his 14. Moti comes quietly forward and steers it out into the offside and gets a single. Score goes up to 265 for seven. But I like the, the competition, Mali, that you talked about with uh, Carl and Boeing Tuckett. You still got a young Joel Andrew in the Leeward Islands Hurricanes, who's Western is under 19 keeper. And that conversation is going to take place also. Uh, yes, yeah, it's going to happen pretty soon as well. <laughs> <laughs> All these guys roughly around the same age, same in terms age. of just youngsters. Andrew is 17. Mm, he's a Tuckett. little younger than the rest. Tuckett is 19, turning 20. So a lot of options. Rivaldo Clark as well. It's, it's kind of a little hard breaking sometimes for a Rivaldo Clark sort of situation. Uh, because when you look at the, the Doris situation, you know, I was listening this morning, Joel Manning was saying that, you know, he, he thought that Doris was supposed to be going to England. So if he's going to England, then that's a, another spot available. But we've been hearing talk about some young Morrison who's 20 years old. But Rivaldo Clark, in fact, I don't see him in this team, Malid. No, nah, Carl and Bowen yeah. Tuckett is keeping him out. Yeah, but he could have played as a batsman, Malid. He could have. Yeah, I think he's good enough. Yeah. All of a sudden, Nas Smith feels very comfortable. Malid is looking for a big drive. So maybe they've been given the license to go ahead. He's, all, he's on 16. He'll feel that way. I'm a big boy today. He probably thinks he should have put that one away, to be fair. Well, he should have. It was, it, was, it was in his arc. Mm. He missed but out. I think he sort of tugged it. He looked to hit it a bit too hard. Yes. That bottom hand came into play, as he said. Just ended up tugging that one across the line. Oh, he's stylishly across and turning this into the square leg era. Shamar Springer comes around and picks that up very quickly. Ball, so you mentioned Nathan Edward. Another left arm seamer batter, almost low order batter in the Leeward Island setup. Colin, a, Colin, Colin Archibald. Colin Archibald yeah. Yes. You know, he's someone with a first class 100. 100 as well, yeah. And he's just responded probably to that little competition nudge, yeah. per se, with his two for 23. It also puts some pressure on somebody like a Karima Gore who has come into the local cricket semi-final and cracked 240. Got a big final coming up this weekend at the Pickett Sports Complex. Yeah, it's put massive pressure on not only Kareem Agua, but also a Kofi James. Mm -hmm. Both find themselves outside of the Leeward Islands. That's not something you would, you would have thought two months ago, three Look, months ago. Looking in. Yeah. So it just... And Andrew has made a statement, Mali. Just goes to show you how quickly things change as well. It, it has. The nature of professional sport has hammered. But Hodge does well. He came round quite quickly there on the mid-wicket boundary. No pace at all there from Ryan John. It was a tired delivery. Bang down. Never got up. Smith had so much time that he could roll his wrist on it and pose for the camera. Yeah, this pitch now probably just settling down as this ball has gotten older. Maybe what we're seeing is here on day one, the best time for batting. It's just a shame that it's Gudakesh Moti and now Smith at the crease from a Harpy Eagles perspective. You'd have thought Permal and more so Kevin Sinclair would have done all that hard work in which to earn a period such as this. 18 overs remaining in the day. Eight away from the new ball. The partnership 29 runs so far. And the count run rate has been the highest so far for the day. 3.69. So it's just built as the day has gone on. But as we said, pegged back ever so often by the Windward Islands' regular take of wickets. Put some pressure on. On Smith, they need to be working. It's just too easy. He's just playing so comfortably as if, you know, he's at, he's at sea. Give him something to think about. I'll bring a silly point in front of his bat. Just above the eyeliner. Larry Edwards just has to get it there. Oh, 
know, he's comfortable. Anything on the back foot, he's comfortable. Make him look up. Make him come forward. Even if it's a full toss. <laughs> he bowled to Vasami Pumal. He got a wicket with it. Very lucky indeed. Yeah, he was. Paramount must be kicking himself in the dressing room now. I think Sinclair is kicking himself. <laughs> he missed out on 100. There he goes. The too easy. He's got to cut that off, Larry Edwards. Even if it's a... A shadow. Yeah, that's just too easy. Nobody else is on the field with you. That was the greatness of people like Roger Harper and Noel Gishard and those guys feeling to their bowling. They would run you out. Partnership is now 30. 267 for 7. As Moti would say, this bowling is easy like Sunday morning. Like he's just having a, a afternoon knock here with Larry Edwards. When you got wickets, Mali, especially big players, you, did you record them in your mind that you got a big wicket? Well, you always know who you're bowling to, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely stored in the computer. I think Larry Edwards would love to pick up Moti here. So I've got this test player. Short. Especially left arm orthodox to left arm orthodox as yeah. well. The competition is always keen with that one. Over comes to an end. When are they thinking about the second new ball, Mali? What do you think is going to Alex Adonis's head? Oh, well, yeah, I think it's def they'd love to, to, to wrap this up before the need for the second new ball, that's for sure. You said it's seven overs or so before it's available. You'd have gone back for Cyrus. Not quite. Okay. Still got my Ryan John has just come back. Trusted him. He's been my chief destroyer mainly this season. Alongside the Shamar Springer. Yeah, but he, he doesn't look on the money today. Especially the day being that hot, really. I thought he's, he's been absolutely brilliant for the day, to be honest. I Is think this his third spell for the day? Yeah, he's just... Just needs to find something now, Vern. But to put in the wicket corner. Yeah, but he's created chances. He's gone past the outside edge on numerous occasions. If you look at his figures, he's bowled 15 overs, only conceded 25 runs. Maybe just not his day. Just hasn't been his day so far, especially with that newer ball. He was a constant threat. To be fair, he seems more comfortable from the media center end. It's actually quite surprising to me that he's come back from the CIU road end. I think it was before lunch he was switched to the CIU road end. And he just struggled for a bit of rhythm. Lost his run up a couple of times. Found the effort ball there to get that one. Pass a Niall Smith. And that's... And that's an area in which I think he can really improve is in that approach to the crease. Maybe just to help build a bit more momentum in that delivery stride. Just seems to coast in and then explodes at the last second. Sort to use his shoulder. Mm, he's, a he's a burly, strong guy, guy. isn't he? Yes. This one's inside edged. Now Smith didn't know too much about that one. Gets a run nonetheless. He's got a first class best of 28 not out now, Smith. Fast approaching that in the context. And he's only played, I think this is his 20th first class match, Vern. So he's been around. The, the name has been around. It's maybe just not registered how you would really maybe like it consistently enough. And I think he's been kept out because of injury as well, and too. 28 years old. Yeah. He's missed a lot of matches because of injury over the years as well. Looking back at him and his comeback game against the Barbados Pride, eh? he was the man who really flipped the switch. Oh. That's what I mean, Ryan John. Just needs to find something. Almost did on that occasion. He switched his line of attack to round the wicket to Gudikesh Moti. 
Naughty shot from Moti. Just looking to run one down, but you've got second slip, gully position, no first slip. I'd love to dismiss this Harpy Eagles team below that 300. Steered. Yeah, more control this time from Gudekesh Moti. Talking about the Ryan John Mali. One for 71, one for 23 against Trinidad and Tobago. Not for 58, two for 61 against the combined campuses and colleges against Barbados, 4 for 47 and 3 for 28 against Jamaica, 5 for 43, 1 for 21. Um, so he has been busy. Thanks. I think he's contributed some valuable runs he's down got the order as well. He's got 17 wickets mm. so far for the, the, the championship. When we go through his stats for batting, he's got a half century against Jamaica, 57. Um, really, so he's just about there or thereabout. As you can tell, maybe just struggling physically now. Got 107 runs in the, in the, in the championship. It's taking a toll on him. I don't know if he maybe came in to this game with a, a small niggle. Maybe just struggling with conditions. As you said, it was a hot, hot, hot. It's been a hot, hot day here in Antigua. This is where you've got to be strong. Your, your team is depending on you in a situation such as this. He's the vice captain of this team, too, mm. which, which Leader which, as well. Yeah, which, which is, you know, you've got to stand up. He's only 26 years of age, right now, medium pace ball. He's got 15 first class matches. He's got eh, more or less 43 wickets. So I like him. Young, young in his career, Edwards. <laughs> Driven, oh, put his body on the line there, but couldn't stop it. Hit the the, the, the the patch here, more or less. This sand pit, as you would say, it was almost so, caught in no man's land there. Yeah, as we yeah. see that one again, wasn't sure whether to go for the catch or to just try and save that one. In the end, did neither. Ryan John did put his body on the line once again. Went away for four. 273 for seven. Partnership growing. Alex Atenez got to be mindful. They have to put a, a brakes on it. He's down the wicket again. Dropped. You have to take those. That's a tough chance though, but you, you, you hope those just stick in the palm. I was hit powerfully by Gudikesh Moti and Edward. I don't want to say grass is the chance, but chance goes a begging. I used to talk to your dad, and that was <laughs> something he said. If you're a good spinner, and they wanted to know how good you can catch, right, but the ball is very hard to you. If you took it, they would say, all right, you're not a bad fielder at all. That's what Moti said to Edwards just a while ago. I remember at the Antigua Recreation Ground seeing a quite gruesome injury. Uh, I think it was the Leeward Islands in Trinidad and Tobago playing four day four day stuff and Ridley Jacobs hit one back to Rahindra Danraj mm. snapped his finger in half yeah don't think he was ever the same same thing with things Lloyd also had the same approach too they would always hit back the ball to you to your left or to your right another boundary again so Ghana Happy Eagles Growing in confidence. Remember that they are the defending champions. And they are seizing the initiative here. After winning the toss. They want to get 300, 325. This is almost like their home ground, Mali. Well, it's been their adopted home <laughs> ground for the last two weeks, hasn't it? <laughs> it has. <laughs> With the venue changes. And they are enjoying batting conditions here. Sinclair, Anderson, and now Moti has come to the party. 27 from 30. Niles Smith, 19 from 26. Back, pretty shot. Through the fielder at point. Yeah. So just a bit of sloppiness all around, creeping into the Windward Islands volcanoes here late on day one. From the drop catch from Shamar Springer to the misfield to, yeah, they've, they just need, they've got to pull themselves up. 
Got to finish strong. After being immaculate for most of this day. 10 it, runs away, 12 runs away, they're out of the over. Yeah, here in this final session. The just partnership is 44 from 55. They've just let a few chances go begging. Moti's down the wicket, and when he gets there, it's gone, gone, on the roof. That six brings up that 50 run partnership between Gudikesh Moti and Niall Smith. This partnership now just pushing the guy in the Harpy Eagles towards that 300 score. A score which would make for a pretty decent first inning score if it was to end at 300. They'll be hoping for a few more than that. 50 or 56 balls, Mali. And the entire game has changed. I wouldn't say it's changed completely, but they've just given the Windward Islands Volcano something to think about here. It's going to be John again. 75 overs bowled. Still 15 overs to go. And St. John's and Tegan Barbuda, 436 in the afternoon here. So this game can go right down to at least 530. And what a shot to bring up that 50-run partnership. Got to the pitch of that one. Used his feet, Gudakesh Moti, in control. Straight back, just through the line of that delivery. No real turn, no revolutions on these deliveries from Larry Edward. 23 boundaries and five sixes so far in the innings. That last one, a massive, massive six. Maybe the biggest one we've had here today. Over number 76 starts. Ryan John from the CIU Road End. Bongs away. As you see him just miss that run once again. Ryan John. So he's just struggled for a bit of rhythm from the CIU road end. Not for 27 from 16. Athen is a young captain. As he said, quite quiet in his demeanor. But I think leadership, leadership comes in all forms and styles. I don't think he has to be necessarily be a rah rah guy to be a good leader. John starting his 17th over. 16.1, 5 maidens, 27 runs, no wicket. Darius Martin, 17 overs, no maidens, 63 runs, 2 wickets. Shamar Springer. 18 3 72 2 is a break for Mali. Tugging that one with his right hand. Didn't go right through. Looks tired now, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Larry Edwards, 12 overs, two maidens, 46 runs, one wicket. Kevin Hodge, the lone over. Not for 10. And the young man, Darian Cyrus. 10 overs, no maidens, 58 runs, 2 wickets. And Sonny Lambris, who's asking the umpire if he turned 1. <laughs> 1 over, no maidens, 3 runs, no wicket. <laughs> don't think I've ever seen him turn 1 in his life. 7 bowlers used so far by the Windward Island Volcanoes. Ken circumspect in the approach. Showing, it, showing a good defence as well as now, Smith. Yeah, well, he's grown in confidence, yeah, Mali. so he's got a good yeah, ability yeah, yeah. to keep out good deliveries. Don't know how good yet. Let's see, let's see if he... In this situation, in this situation it's a 50-run partnership. It's, of it's of doing the world of good to oh, the guy in the Harpy Eagles. It's taking them to 287 <laughs> for seven. They were 237 for seven. Ali Mohammed still to come. Yeah, they can, so they can get up to 350 still or more. Missed his run once again did Ryan John ended up following through not far past the stumps which tells you about the momentum that he's getting into these deliveries at this point in time which might be a headache for Alex Athenes if he's thinking about taking the second new ball mm, who's gonna take it well Shamar Springer and somebody well Darius Martin he's been rested he's gonna have to come back for what a fifth spell here this <laughs> afternoon it's the nature of the game it's tough that's what's required. That's what your team asks of you. He's bowled 17 for the day. Mm. Not 2 for 63, Darius Martin. And to be fair, to be honest, I think as a first-class fast bowler, you've got to be prepared and you've got to have at least 20 to 25 overs in you per day. That's just my take on it. 
Well, between the two se between the three seamers, Mali, they would have at least bowled 52 overs between them. Yeah, they would have done a pretty good job, and yeah. I, I like the way in which Athens has used them. Maybe not so much since T. In the air, mm. but safe enough. And Ryan John, he will need an ice bath at the end of day one, Mali. Yeah, end of 17 now for him. 76 overs gone. Harvey Eagles just inching up to that 300 score. 288 for seven. All right, so where do we go from here? 288 for seven. 76 overs ball. Ryan John has bowled 17. Guyana will just be hoping to bat for the rest of the day, to be fair. I think so. Darius Martin has bowled 17. Shamar Springer has bowled 18 between them. Uh, they have taken four wickets. That's, that's a good thing. So they have, they have done their job. It's now left to somebody to put their hand up. And they've gone for Cyrus. Been brought back. Yeah, he's, he's going to start his, he's his probably 11th been, over. Yeah, he's probably been the more threatening of the two spinners on the show. Both picked up wickets. Still would like to see him. In fact, Ryan John is going off the field, Mali, so he, he is... He's struggling. Yeah. He's got to get himself organized. He's replaced by Sherman Lewis. I would just like to see Athens bring the mid-on and the mid-off up for Niall Smith. Just don't give him the single. Bring yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's bringing Lewis up for yeah, sure. Yeah, bring, bring, bring them up. Let yeah, it, he's keeping... Keep the pressure on. Martin on the boundary, though. Oh, he's okay. bowled him! So he starts with a ripper. He's been the more threatening of the two spinners, that's for sure. He picks up his third. What a bowling change by Alec Athenes. Have a look at this, Vern. His little hop, skip and jump. Wheels away, a bit of turn. Pitched on, leg stomp, hitting off. Niall Smith knew nothing about that one. So young Cyrus, Daryl Cyrus, picking up his third wicket. It's been a little expensive, but he'll, he'll be happy with the fact that he's picked up three wickets here today. And what a change, as we said before. It brings Ronaldo Ali Mohamed back to the crease. Retired heard a bit earlier. 15 of 16. He walks to the crease. Cyrus producing the goods. And in the context, Mali, of a, a wrist spinner, that's what happens. A wrist spinner is going to get wickets. It's going to be expensive. But at the end of the day, for Alex Atenez, he can end up getting 5 for 58, 5 for 65 right here. He's a match winner. And once again, another partnership threatening to just take it away from the Windward Islands. Wicket. And that's what wickets do. Wickets at regular intervals. Brings Ronaldo Ali Mohamed back to the crease. He faced 16 deliveries before. Got to his 15 relatively easily. Alex Atenez. Almost looking like Jason Holder practicing not his golf shots, but his <laughs> cricket shots. Retired hurt a bit earlier with a lower back issue. Big effort. That's a big save. He looks stiff, though. Yeah, he does. Sure, he wouldn't be really... I think it's just a matter of determination to go back out there and, and fight for Guyana, where he stepped out. Yeah, this wicket has played absolutely beautifully today. Kudos to the ground staff here. Mm. Kadeem Phillip and the crew. I right. think they've produced a belter. And I think as this game progresses, spin will just come more and more into it. Can't wait to see Detri here. The only problem is that Guyana's got Sinclair, Moti, Pamal. The Windward Islands will bat last. That's the trick. Cramped him for room. Couldn't get, can't get to extend himself. And he seems a little bit uncomfortable and gainly there, Mali. I don't think he's going to hang around, Mali. I, I, I don't see. I mean, he doesn't hang around at the best of times, so. <laughs> don't see him hanging around. He's carrying an injury now. I expect him to be ultra aggressive. Just a little slow. Oh, that's a beautiful ball. That's well played, though. Actually, yeah. he's moving quite well in comparison to the way we saw him running before he went off. 
And he's gone for four, Mali. He's gone for four once again. So he's La finding run scoring relatively easy on this pitch. Another boundary to Ronaldo Ali Mohamed. Yeah, that was a quick, fast delivery. He just played with nice soft hands, opened the face. Alex Atenes was diving away at first slip. But on the golf course of the greens here at the Coolidge Cricket Ground, that hit the rope for another boundary. Larry Edwards, all he could do is retrieve the ball. It just seems a little fine there to me. Alex yeah, I think, he, uh, uh, I think so too. Defending, defending nicely. So, four runs coming off the over, but he picked up the all-important wicket of Niall Smith to break that partnership, which was threatening well over 50. And as Mali said, every now and again, the Windward Island Volcanoes bowlers come through to take something away. It was Permal and Sinclair earlier threatening to take things away uh, with that 62-run partnership for the sixth wicket. Double strike. Even if we think back earlier to the opening partnership of 40. Yeah, it was a double strike because you had Tej and the ball first again, and then Machinando. Every time today that the guy in the Heart Eagles have a settled partnership. But guess who's coming on to ball? It's going to be Sonny Lambris. Interesting. Well, Ryan John has gone off. I think they're just trying to buy a bit of time here. But I, was, I would have brought Larry Edwards from that end. Just to, you know, shift up and keep the pressure on. That would be my option. But maybe Sonny Lambris, he's maybe got a, or a golden arm. Or Athenes could have brought himself on, to be fair. But let's see. Lambris will start. Big save. Well, big save. Farmer still looking sharp there. Farmer still looking sharp there. Farmer. Didn't see who it was. Is it Melius? Melius, yes. Yeah, he's a good fielder. Substitute fielder on. No, he's playing. Oh, he's playing I today. think he's in the 11, Ali. I think I saw his name on the team sheet. Having a quick brain fade there, then. No, that's okay, my buddy. Coming up next will be Joel Manning and Sean Devers. Big drive. Inside out. Over cover. It's gone all the way for six. That's a proper cricket shot by Modi. Yeah, allowed to free the arms once again for Gudikesh Modi. It's almost like a throwdown. Yeah, makes good contact. And he loves to free those arms. Doesn't quite follow with follow through with that extravagant finish. Tends to check it almost, but makes good contact nonetheless he's got a good cricket bat for that sure his second six that's his second six moves to 41 in now. fact his second or his third, or his third. Uh, it might be his third mm. i think he hit back to back wait, wait. yeah he's got to bowl the ball into the surface sonny lambris no, no sense in trying to buy a wicket moti is a moti's got a first class hundred so you have to treat him like a batsman no free runs. No free runs. Back and finding the gap out to the sweeper. I would have maybe gone for a Larry Edwards from the CIU road end. He, well, he was just taken off. I would have probably, if I was Athenes, I would have given myself a ball. 292 for eight. But Ambrose, can Ambrose produce something though? Already Moti has gone to 42, man. Yeah, it'd be a real bonus in this situation. He's got two deliveries in which to, to do so. Goes a bit wider. Actually, one delivery. So, over completed. 299 for eight. And Sean and Joel Manning. Where it looks like as the score moves, maybe about 12 overs to go. They'll take us through to stumps. Yeah, most likely. Yeah, well, welcome back to a sunlit Coolidge Cricket Club. 
ground here in Antigua, where we greet you the new if you've just joined us. That Guyana are two ninety nine for eight with Moti on forty two. And he's in strike. And he plays it into the offside. He's hit a four and, and three sixes in his inning so far. So he's on thirty-five, four to one. So this is slashed away, out towards the cover position and down towards the boundary for four. So Morty and before him, Nile Smith dealing in boundaries. Hello. Ali Mohammed has come back after he retired hurt on 15 and he has joined Moti after Moti and Smith featured in a half century partnership. Good afternoon to you, Joel. Uh, good afternoon, Sean. So Guyana has gone past the 300, which is a psychological boost for them. 303 now for eight. We're in the center ninth over, and that's brilliant caught. What a catch. He stuck his right hand out, and it stuck at slip. And that's the end of Gorakesh Moti. Wouldn't get another half century here, but that was a stupendous catch. Yeah, absolutely fantastic reflex grab there by Alec Athenes, the captain of this windward side. Didn't have much time there in terms of reaction time. Certainly less than a second in terms of that reaction time, but certainly a fantastic grab by him to bring about the end of Morty. It was wide, and he actually started Whoa. to make an adjustment to his left as well. Had to stick that palm back out to the right. It stuck in the hand, and that is Morty gone. The knife wicket down now for Guyana is 303 for nine. And of course, um, Cyrus has picked up another wicket. So he, he's also um, putting in a good effort with his right arm leg spin. Oh boys battering. So a good bowling performance overall from the Windward Islands. Of course, um, John having to go off the field, put in a lot of work and he had some problems with his um, energy level and his run up from the far end. But all in all, it's been a, a good bowling performance, even though the total now is above 300 and by the Windward Islands. Yeah, at some stage you have to accept that it's still a very good batting track here at college. You expect batters as long as they play themselves to score runs. What Morty was able to do though was accelerate they scored quite quickly for the Ghana Harpy Eagles. And it was an innings that they needed. But the Wainwards will know that as long as they stand up and bat well on this surface, they too should find themselves in the region of 300, 300 plus. So 303 for nine. Can these two prolong the Ghana innings? Or can Cyrus pick up a five wicket haul? Good delivery again. And uh, Isaiah Thorne, the 19 year old, played in two under 19 World Cups. One of the fastest bowlers in this tournament. Just this, this is the sixth first class match. Isaiah Thorne. <laughs> Gets a googly there or a skidder, slider. And, but he kept it out. And uh, there's no run. He survives. So at the end of 79 overs, it's 303 for 9. Hey, hey. 
Well, the pace of Shamar Springer will return and be cut of that. Ali Mohammed, no calls for his helmet. So Springer will be hoping to wrap things up. Here, just about five minutes away from five on D number one. Significantly behind where we should be at this stage in terms of the over rate. Still some 10, 11 overs left in the day's play. He'll probably use the stop clock for, for first class cricket soon. <laughs> CPL introduced a red card, similar to what they do in football. All innovations and the game has evolved. Bring her back. Uh, Swish and a mist here. Very interesting from Ali Mohammed. Especially given the fact that he's a middle order batter who's now found himself coming back to bat with the tail. Two for 72 so far from 18.1 overs, Springer. And Ali Mohammed is looking to press for two. Can he get back there? No. And, uh, <laughs> oh my dear. Isaiah Torn was confused. He called them back initially, and then he said no. And Isaiah Torn had to scramble. In the end, all is well that ends well for Guyana. You had the right thinking on that particular occasion, Isaiah Thorne. You yeah, know that he needed to attempt to get Ali Mohammed back on the strike, especially given how early in the over it is. And this is where I go now to the point I was attempting to make before in terms of Ali Mohammed and the role that he has to play. Now, flashing at one outside of the off stump, I would have expected that probably might have been the role of Isaiah Thorne in terms of maybe the possibility of squeezing out a couple quicker runs. However, uh, to my mind, Ali, Maham Ali Mohammed has to be the one to come not out in this innings. Yes. He's back here now and you might tell yourself, well, for somebody watching on, that he came to bat quite late in the innings. No, it's because he retired her, came back, but naturally a middle order batter. Reti retired hurt when the score was 169 for four. He was then on 15. He's now added five runs to that score since he came back turn who's in strike he's first three balls he's yet to score and Ali Mohammed calls him down we'll have a little conversation with him so Springer urged on by the slip cordon and this is forward comes turn batsman like shot open the face and gets a single he's off the mark and then he rehearses a big booming cover drive. Fast bowlers, especially number 11s, love to think they're great batters. <laughs> and they enjoy their batting. <coughs> Unless it's high quality fast bowlers bowling. <laughs> so he did what was required. Ali Mohammed is back in strike. Gets a short ball, too short and too wide. I wouldn't say he did what's required, and I expect a second short delivery from Shamar Springer, given his two, that he's allowed uh, for the over because it's really about keeping Ali Mohammed on strike at the end of this over, allowing him to bowl at Isaiah Thorne. He gave away that, or rather, gave away the strike early. In the over, thought it could be two, wasn't two. I reckon you might have looked to have trusted maybe Isaiah Thorne to bat out the remainder of the over. So one delivery left, bar no wide or no ball, and a single. I suspected he went short, but didn't get up in the manner that the previous delivery did, allowing him to get that single. Closing out 80 overs, it's 306 for nine. So 
was we wind down to the last lap of the first day of this fifth round match between Guyana, the defending champions, and Windward Islands, the tournament leaders. Guyana opt into bat first. They're 306 for nine. Do you think Guyana would be happy with this total, a total above 300 on the first day? Yeah. Oh, one box out towards Kamani. Emilius on the boundary. In terms of the score on the board, 307 at the moment, they will certainly take that on a day number one. What they won't take is the, the wicket wickets, column yeah. at the moment. They were known that to one or two batters could have done a lot better than they did today. So Torn settles the slip and the gully. And the leg spinner Cyrus looking for his fifth wicket. Can he get a five wicket haul? Well played by Torn. Long forward, bat and pad close together, elbows clock, cocked, head over the ball. Textbook shot from Torn. Yeah, just very interesting that he's exposed Thorn so early in the over to Daryl Cyrus. Cyrus should bowl the ball slow, flight it above the eye line. Bowling quicker would make it easier for Torn to play. But if he's bowling it above the eye line and Torn loves hitting the ball, he'll be tempted. And he could play in two minds. Leg by. Ghana wouldn't mind how they come, as long as they come. And uh, Ali Mohammed is back in strike. <laughs> Turn is one. He's on 22. This is part two of his innings, so to speak. Because he retired on 15. Well, this could be the chance. It could be the end of the innings. Catch taken by Martin on the boundary. Cyrus picks up five. His second five wicket haul of the season. Yeah, wonderful bowling performance there from the leg spinner. Um, so he's got five for 67. And uh, again, all out for 308. A great bowling performance in the end for Daryl Cyrus. Picks up another five at Wicket Hall in this season. And with it, uh, brings about the end of the Ghana Harpy Eagles inning. Still some overs left in today's play. Uh, so we do expect uh, that we'll have maybe three, maybe four overs for the Windward Islands Volcanoes to contend with. We'll take a quick break. And when we come back, uh, more action from day number one of this match between the Guyana Harpy Eagles and the Windward Islands Volcanoes.
Well, welcome back to the Coolidge Cricket Ground here in Antigua, where the sun is still shining. The Ghana side has been bowled out for 308, and the Windward Islands now need 309, first of all, for a first innings lead. And the innings yeah. about to start. The seven minutes um, catered for the rolling is currently uh, just about completed. Yeah. And the guy with the roller, a light roller, the wind was requesting a light roller, has gone off the field. So umpire Basarat and umpire Rifa are already on the field. So are the batters and so are the fielders. And Isaiah Turn will start the attack from the airport end with uh, the yeah, windwards Kimani Melias and German Jeremy Solizano, the Trindadian at the crease. Good afternoon to you once again, Joel. Hey, good afternoon, Sean. A couple overs uh, for this opening pair to navigate. Kimani Melias back at the top of the order. So first delivery in the, <laughs> it's certainly not the first delivery because Torn loses his rhythm, aborts the run. So the windward's innings yet to start. Milius in strike. So Lozano at the non-striker's end. Two slips and a gully. And that's down the leg side. And no ball. Four stop. So, technically, no ball has been bowled. And the total is one without loss. Down the leg side again. Good take though by Savory. Tumbling across his left. So bad start by the 19 year old. Turn. Two balls down the leg side. And one a no ball. Loud appeal, that was close, but umpire Basarat says no. Yeah, this was always going to be the challenge for Milius, that ball coming back into him. He struggled quite a bit with the ball coming back into his pads. I think back to last season as well in the first class championships, and it was a delivery that he was struggling with. I think back to the game that they played versus Barbados Pride, Akeem Jordan was the bowler, and Akeem Jordan naturally gets that ball to come back in to the right-handed batters and he had a very horrid time versus Akeem Jordan and to other bowlers that were able to successfully bring the ball back into him. So turn. Oh. And again this one comes back and it keeps a little bit low and he managed to get pat on it. Little bend of the knees. Almost a reflex action as he got the bat Dung and the ball was kept out. Con conversation now between Solozano and Milas. Milias, what, what, what would Solozano be telling him now? I absolutely have no idea. <laughs> um, but no, he just needs to stay compact here. Milias probably just looking to break a bit uh, of the rhythm that's being built up at the moment by Thorne. Nice shot, great shot in fact, that's four runs. Hit through the backward point position, lovely square drive. Got his innings going, that must do the world of good for his confidence. The windwards now five without loss. Swing full and wide there on that occasion, Isaiah Thorne. 
probably getting the line wrong. Probably wanted to be a touch straighter. Looking more so if that ball was coming back in in terms of that. I, I would say just shy of Yorker length outside that off stump. Goes a bit too wide and an easy way for Milius to get off the mark. Oh, perfect Yorker. And he, when he had the back down, the ball had already almost reached the gloves of Savory. Good quick Yorker from Torn. And that's what I was attempting to describe with the previous delivery in terms of what I expected or thought he was going for. Isaiah Thorne just going for that Yorker delivery that comes back in with that swing, comes back in with the angle, bowling from over the wicket. As well, I mentioned the fact that Medias has struggled with that ball coming back to him. Also struggling now in terms of the pace factor that Isaiah Thorne possesses as well. Thorne, one of the quicker bowlers in this tournament. Just a six for us class match. And this is bang on target, but well played by Milius. He goes forward and plays it into the offside. So the first over is completed. Windward Islands needing 309 to take a first innings lead. They're five without loss. Good afternoon to you, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, wherever in the world you are, watching and listening this live streaming. Windward's five without loss, replying to Guyana's 308. Smith is in, and that's pushed into the offside. May be exploring the possibility of a single. Quickly sent back. Solizano by Milius. If you're going home on the East Bank, going over the Harbour Bridge in Guyana or going across the busy Regent Street. Good afternoon to you. If you're across the Windward Islands in Dominica, Grenada, St. Vincent, St. Lucia. Good afternoon to you. Three slips and a gully for Smith. And this is steered into the offside down towards point, And there's no run. Do you think that um, there should have been three slips for Torn, who is slightly quicker than Smith? Not necessarily. And I'll explain why. Because it's not necessarily about the pace factor on this occasion, but in terms of what he's looking to bowl. So with Isaiah Thorne, he's looking to angle that ball back into Kamani Melius. It kind of takes... The, the slip cord and yeah. out of mm -hmm. the consideration, so to speak, um, for majority of the deliveries that he's looking to bowl. So in terms of commanding medias, he's looking to get him whether or not it's just that off stump bowled onto those pads. That's his mode of the um, dismissal that he's looking for to Milius. So Smith, who most likely looking to take the ball away from the left hand to bring the slips into play. And that's why there are three slips and the gully. There's a man at the short mid-off there's a man at square cover and on the onside in the shadow of the scoreboard is that the scoreboard there um the electronic scoreboard that yeah. no longer operates yeah well, yeah yeah well, but also looking at the three slips in operation it takes you also back to the mode of dismissal for solizano in that game versus trinidad and tobago red force was caught behind with one that just was wide of the off stump pushing forward at it Bad line down the leg side on the line of the pads and stroked it away for a single between the mid wicket and the mid on. So early rotation in the strike and the total going up now to six. And Solizano is off the mark with one. 
in that first innings where he was dismissed for eight. Solizano. Anderson Phillip came around the wicket to him. And it was a case of just a couple of deliveries back of a length. And then just forced one just a bit wide of the off stump. Pitched up a bit more. And he was caught in that in-between area pushing at it. Solizano. Ghana 308. All out. Forward he comes. Smith pitches up. And plays it quietly towards Chandra Paul. In that 308, Sinclair, Ghana's leading run scorer and the tournament's leading run scorer because he's gone past Michael Lewis. He made 74, Anderson made 48, and Moti made 46. Cyrus, the next winner, 5 for 67, his second five wicket haul for the season, and Martin and Springer. The two pacers used had two wickets each. Smith. Oh. Bows a ball that comes back in towards Over. the right hand. He plays it out towards mid on. The over is completed to six without loss. Yeah, you're able to see a clear plan here by the Ghana Harpy Eagles, and it goes back to what you were asking, Sean, in terms of the use of three slips. By the time Kamani Milius came on to strike, one of those slips was removed and you saw that the line which Nell Smith was looking to bowl was just a bit tighter because you understand that Kamani does enjoy that that width outside of the off stump will crash through the covers very often. However, as I mentioned, struggles when that ball is about a lot closer and a lot tighter to those pads. And that's certainly going to be the line that they persist with when it comes to the seamers to Kamani Melius. Especially if the ball is being... Uh, off cutter coming back into Milas. Well, there is spin now being employed. I think they want to get in as much overs as possible. I think they've got seven overs, but in terms of the light fading. So they want to bowl all their seven overs. So Sinclair, right. who's had a tremendous tournament with the bat especially, <laughs> will bowl the third over. Oh, yes, yeah, Sinky. As he usually does. Sleeves buttoned down Keep to the wrist. Boys. Keep boys. Just a solitary slip. A forward short leg also in place. Bowling with the brand oh, new oh, ball. Oh, yes, yeah, Sinky. Keep going, keep and going. And the forward comes the left-handed Salazano. He's kept Keep on going, boys. one. Keep going, boys. Milius on four. They Fine. now need yes, 302 more runs, but that's immaterial for now because they've got all night to think about oh. that. What they wa don't want to do is lose a wicket and no ball bowl there by Sinclair. Might have been the back leg going across keep going, keep and going, mashing the sideline. <laughs> Sinclair, seven without loss. Wrong the wicket. Okay, and okay. bowls. And that's the difference with right, Larry Carlos, Edwards and Sinclair. When he's bowling wrong the wicket, he bowls from the right of the umpire. And maybe the ability to, to ring his body and spin the ball bigger is because of that. He's not got an anger. So he's running straight up and he's coming to the bowling crease, chest on. Not necessarily the most fair comparisons in terms of looking at the right arm off spinner and the left arm spinner in terms of Larry Edward because you saw when Larry Edward was bowling uh, to the right arm batters. Oh, yes, His approach was exactly what we're seeing at the moment from St. Clair. The end of three overs, it's seven without loss. So, Morty now will come into the attack. The left arm spinner. Left 
as the shadows from the building on the left of our commentary box begin to come onto the field. Still good conditions, bright sunshine. And forward comes Milius, plays it into the onside and there's no run. What we can get here is definitely that comparison though between the two left arm spinners in terms of Moti and one the approach and then two the pace, the ops, the bowl as well. Because we think about the fact that Edward was relatively quick through the air when he started. Moti starting quite similar, relatively flat as well. And with the new ball, the ball will pitch on the shine side because both sides are shine and would skid on. But as he gets into a spell, maybe sometime tomorrow. Well, that one turned a little bit, but not much. And maybe the pace beat the bat batsman's outside edge. And tomorrow, as the ball gets older and he bowls slower, the ball will turn a bit more. Oh, Nandu was in a spot of bother there for some time, and in fact, it will be overthrows as it finds its way into the boundary. But the guy at backward point should have been backing up. That's who? That's Ali Mohammed. Five runs to the total there because of it. Looks like Ali Mohammed. I would have put um, Perez on the field. And, and rest because the umpire would know that you retired because of an injury. And that would have never, well, most likely not passed Perez if he was backing up. So attack, a slip, a gully, a backward short leg and a forward short leg. Moti, both to the left-hander. Silizan is forward and there's no run. So, four overs completed. It's 12 without loss. It's also the end of play here on day number one at Coolidge. So, Ghana Harpy Eagles, they won the toss. And they were bowled out for 308 in replay at Stumps on day one. Windward Islands Volcanoes, 12 without loss. Thank you for joining us here on day one at Coolidge. We look forward to your company tomorrow bright and early at 10 a.m. Unless, of course, we are going to have an earlier start because of the fact that we are probably maybe two or three overs short of what we needed to be at. But day number one is completed and we look forward to your company, as I said, on day number two here, round number five of the West Indies Championships.